All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to my January 2018 update video for, you guessed it, January 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So with that said guys, let's get right into it. And let's start off with the youtube -y stuff. For those who don't know, I am the main editor for my good old buddy, Tikio Sam on his channel. Uh, I've been editing the vast majority of his stuff for going on a year now. Got a whole bunch of stuff that I'm working on, backlog, as well as other fun projects. I've also been taking video editing gigs from other clients as well, and most notably one Eric Surf 6. So I'll be editing some of his videos in the future as well. In addition to that, I've also been talking with a couple other clients about uh, future projects, but those aren't really set up just yet, so I don't really want to talk about them at the moment. But point being is that 2018 is gonna be a very good year for me on the video editing front. You know, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to do this and to dedicate some real time to uh, doing what I love to do, which is making videos. Video editing may not be the sexiest part of the process, but it's definitely something that I really enjoy. I've started learning more about the video editing process, more about video flow and things like that. And I think you're really gonna like my future work, what I put out in 2018. Consequently, as a result of devoting all this uh, extra time into other people's projects, I haven't really had a whole lot of time for my own projects. So that's kind of the, the drawback for doing all this awesome video editing for others. And I really do feel bad about that because I know I've been getting a lot of new subs thanks to uh, the shout outs from Tikio Sam and from others. I definitely want to thank you guys for, uh, for joining. And uh, I will put in some effort to make some content on this channel for you guys. So let's move on to more personal life stuff because you know they kind of intermingle a little bit here. So with doing all this video editing and stuff, if I really want to take it a bit more seriously and to continue to grow, as a freelance video editor, then I should devote as much time to it as possible. I've decided to, for the time being, take a short break from school, at least for this semester, to work on doing more videos and stuff like that, as well as to finish out the lease here in this apartment, which is up in April of this year. So once my lease is up in April, um, I talked with my folks and I'm gonna be moving uh, in with them for a little bit until um, I find my own place and get a job and stuff down there as well. So uh, the reason for that is with school, you know, I, it just never really clicked for me. And I think most of it also has to do with the environment as well. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, of the friends that I have made up here in, uh, in Michigan, I'm definitely very thankful and grateful uh, for them. But I think in order for me to get to that next level that I wanna get to, I need to get out of this area. It's just, it's not really that conducive to what I wanna do moving forward. I just thought it was best to take a break from school for the time being. You know, I just felt like I was largely wasting my time there. You know, in addition to the anxiety depressive episodes that I've been having for the past couple months. But, you know, thankfully things have been going pretty good for me, uh, mental health wise, for a little bit. I think, you know, seeing my folks definitely helps with that. So that's another big reason why I'm moving in with them for a little bit and then later on getting my own place in the area just so I can be closer to them, you know, just so I can pop in during the weekend or something like that whenever I get a free moment and just say, hey, um, I can't really do that uh, living up here in Michigan. I have to like make a whole day or even a weekend of it and uh, doing all these different projects and stuff. I don't really have the time to do something like that and to travel all that time. And you know, with inclement weather and stuff, I'm always worried that I'm either gonna get stuck in the snow or slip and crash into somebody or have somebody else crash into me. I feel very confident moving forward in 2018. Uh, 2017 was a pretty rough year for me. I think 2016 was even worse. You know, I really wanted to make it work out here. And you know, I did what I could to, to do that, but I just, I couldn't really, find my place here you know I found some groups of people I liked but eh, it wasn't really 
quite the same as when I was in the service or overseas or anything like that. It just it didn't feel wholly my own, I guess. It's hard to explain. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say uh, for this video update. Uh, if I got any more going on, I'll be giving you updates throughout the month. With that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and today I want to talk to you guys about YouTube's new monetization policies. No doubt you guys have heard about the recent changes to the policy, effective February 20th, 2018, so it's going to be dating this video a little bit, but uh, it's current now, so it works. So basically, after the whole fallout with, uh, with the Logan Paul situation that happened um, earlier this year, I'm not going to belabor that particular situation. Um, it's already been talked about by like every YouTuber on the platform and they've weighed in on their opinions. So no need to belabor that situation. But the uh, results of that situation were that he was taken off of uh, the Google preferred ads, basically halving his AdSense income and his YouTube Red series were put on hiatus. How this relates to the rest of YouTube is that YouTube in their infinite wisdom decided instead of just punishing the big creators when they act out to lash out at all the smaller creators as well and making it harder for them to monetize their videos. I'll just go over uh, some of the ad changes and then we'll get into my own thoughts about it. It used to be um, a, while, a long while ago that anybody with uh, an AdSense account and a YouTube account, as long as they didn't have any like strikes or anything like that, could apply for partnership and they got it. So everybody could be a partner. And of course, way back in the day, you had to go through all these different hoops and had to be with a network and all this other stuff. But that, that's like old, old YouTube. You know, I've been around since 2006 before Google even bought AdSense or even before Google bought YouTube. I've seen a lot when it comes to changes in the YouTube platform. This is by no means nothing new. It's just a reaction to something big that shook up the platform. The new, new ad program states that if you want to be eligible for monetization, you have to have at least a thousand subscribers and over 4,000 hours of watch time for the year, so 12 months. As it relates to my situation, as you guys know, I'm a little under the uh, subscriber mark, but view count wise, I'm doing just fine as far as meeting their standards. So um, I know that my vlogs and stuff as of late haven't really been bringing in a whole lot of views, but I still get a good consistent amount of views from a lot of my tutorials and a couple of my older videos that have caught on, like uh, my video of watching my little brother Raj graduate from Army Basic. So it's those videos that have been doing very well for me. The only thing that's really going to be barring me from entering monetization now is the subscribers. How this relates to other creators, I know I've been hearing a lot of thoughts from them, mostly just outrage because this pretty much happened yesterday. And I wanted to take a little bit of time myself to reflect on it because I was just so angry at uh, the changes that YouTube was doing. I wanted to make a video, but I knew that I wouldn't do it the way I really wanted to do it, I would just speak out of anger rather than out of logic. I took the night to think about it, looked over some bigger creators' thoughts on the situation. Overall, I think that, you know, it's going to be a lot harder for smaller YouTubers to quote unquote make it. I know a lot of big creators, their thoughts are, well, if you're only making like a buck a month, then who cares? You're not really losing out on a whole lot of money. You could find that just scrounging around your couch. But money's not really the point. I mean, it is, but it's not. Now, hear me out on this one. So when I was starting out on YouTube, as far as being able to make money and stuff like that, I used money as a metric, um, just to kind of show how I'm doing, what videos are connecting with people, which aren't. And if you take that metric away from me, I might get a video that gets a lot of views, but is it really marketable? And especially with uh, YouTube's family-friendly content that they're trying to portray themselves as. The reason that I'm mad isn't because I'm losing out on money, and then, you know, in my case, it's definitely more than just a couple bucks a month, but it's more than just about the money itself. Uh, to me, money is a metric, and if you're taking away a metric, then you're taking away the ability for smaller creators who are just learning the platform or even more experienced creators that are 
either building up a secondary channel or are just getting onto the YouTube platform from another platform, you're taking away a metric for them to analyze what works on that platform and what doesn't. And that's the part that really pisses me off, to be quite frank about the situation. As far as, you know, how it involves me and what's the future of the Andy San channel, you know, as with any big change that rocks the platform, I'm still gonna weather on. Um, I know I haven't been posting as much content on here as I used to, uh, mostly because I've been uh, doing a lot of freelance video editing work. Um, if I'm not working at my normal job, it's kind of hard for me to make content while I'm either making somebody else's content or doing a normal ass uh, job at something else. I've decided to take up live streaming here on YouTube a bit more. Now I know I mentioned this in at least one of my other previous update videos that I was gonna be doing some more live streaming this year. And I didn't really have like a set schedule and I was still hammering out the details about what I could live stream with the people that I work with. Um, but I have talked with them and we've set up an agreement as far as what I can and can't live stream as far as like content and stuff like that goes. Once I set up a, uh, a proper schedule, then we'll be able to uh, roll out a whole, hey, catch me live streaming at this time on this day. I really love doing YouTube. I wouldn't have stuck with this platform for as long as I have if I didn't love it. Um, and I'm not doing it just for the money. Um, money to me is just another metric of success. I want to do what I can to continue to make good content for you guys, whether it's on this channel or uh, for the channels that I work with. Hope to catch you guys uh, when I'm out live streaming. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, for now, guys, this is the Andy San signing off. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, we're alive, pal. <laughs> Hey gang, Andy here. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to do a uh, little something different, do kind of a vlog, like a live vlog, I guess. So uh, if you guys don't catch this um, while I'm streaming, it's okay. Um, just enjoy the post stream. That's kind of the point of all this, but name it. <coughs> this is gonna be kind of a little bit of a rambly vlog because uh, I'm sick and my mind is just kind of uh, all over the place right now. So I just wanted to put something together to uh, put out there because you know I ain't got the you know the time or the energy to really sit down and edit it, edit like a proper vlog. So uh, it's all good because if you couldn't tell from the sound of my voice, I'm uh, a little sick today. Uh, still got to go to work because you know fucking America, right? <laughs> you know healthcare system. What's that? Hey Becky. Um, so in any event, guys, I just wanted to come on here and just kind of shoot the shit a little bit and uh, just kind of talk about um, where I've been, what's going on, things like that. Um, probably get into it a little bit more in like a February 2018 update video, but I just wanted to put something up here live, um, just talk to y'all for a little bit. Um, so as you guys know, I've been working for uh, a lot of good people putting some uh, good content together. That's one of the main reasons why I haven't been making my own stuff for a while. Um, so I've been working for uh, from a good old buddy, TKO Sam. I've been working for Eric Sir Six. In fact, one of my videos that I put together for him was released this morning, so be sure to check that out. It's the, uh, the Burger Joe's Juicy Lucy uh, video. Uh, should be like his most recent video. At least at the time of this recording, so <laughs> or this live stream, whatever. Um, really proud of how that turned out. Really loving the, uh, the positive response in the comments. Uh, no, I ain't, I ain't got a PS4. Sorry, DPG. Um, PC Master Race. Woo! <laughs> so that's not to discredit the console. The consoles. It's just uh, you know I ain't got time for that shit. So <laughs> you know. But any event, guys, um, i just been feeling, uh, you know, not so good. Not just because I'm sick, because friggin' flu season. Uh, which, you know, even then, you know, it's not, uh, it's not as bad as what I've seen others practically friggin' dying, you know, from all this flu sickness. Um, just like a stuffy nose, some sneezing, coughing, you know, the usual 
uh, February, March flu season sort of shtick that we all go through, um, at least in the States anyway. Uh, so, yeah, man, lately I've just been feeling uh, just really burnt out, as the title of this vlog says, um, just with working, both doing my freelance stuff as well as, uh, you know, doing uh, my real life job elsewhere. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's getting harder and harder for me to sit down and work on videos and put out some good stuff for you guys. You know, it's just kind of in like a, I guess you'd call it like an apathetic mood. Um, you know, I'm not really sad, I'm not angry, you know, I'm not even depressed. Or at least I don't feel that way. I just, just completely feel nothing, pretty much. You know, it's just a, <laughs> you know. Oh, you're up to 445. Congrats. That's good. Um, but anyway, man, um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, doing this for as long as I have. You know, even that hasn't really been, like, super long. But, you know, at the pace I've been going, basically, you know, I'm running the risk of burnout. And, uh, you know, I started doing little things to kind of help slow myself down a little bit. Um, you know, obviously waking up earlier in the morning so I can be more productive. That's definitely helped my overall mental state. Um, eating fruit in the morning, that's really helped me out tremendously, in fact. Um, there were some weeks where I wouldn't do that just because I wouldn't either wouldn't have the money or I'd forget or I wouldn't want to go outside because it's friggin' you know, all the snow and stuff. I don't want to risk crashing into somebody or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm doing a lot of things. Um, take care of myself and whatnot. So, you know, <laughs> but, you know, with, with doing all this work as a, you know, freelance video editor, where you get this, this syndrome and uh, I, I read an article about it called, uh, they called it you should be working syndrome because, you know, with freelance or any kind of like online based job, you know, the whole fact is, you know, you can be working at any moment, at any time, for any amount of hours, you know, you're never really truly off the clock. Um, you get into this, this habit of, you know, the syndrome of you should be working. You know, so any any time I kind of sit down on the couch, you know, watching some stuff on Crunchyroll or, you know, watching some YouTube. Like right now, I'm actually rewatching some old uh, Tokyo Kuni Life in Tokyo. Uh, just kind of remembering the good old days. Um, so anytime I, you know, catch myself doing that in video games, Jesus Christ, <laughs> you know, um, I always catch myself doing that and just be like, yeah, I should be working, you know you got time to sit down and watch some anime or whatever, play some video games, you know, that's time that could be spent either streaming yourself, you know, playing those video games, or uh, working on a project for Sam or Eric or whoever else I'm working for, uh, Radley, you know. So, you know, eventually it's just getting to the point where, you know, I'm reaching reaching my uh, my limits with, with doing that stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, who don't really understand the whole uh, freelance, you know, how freelance works, you know, the whole, you should be working 24 seven unless you're sleeping or eating or something like that. Um, you know, they think, oh, poor you, you know, there's factory workers in Uganda working, you know, 24 hour shifts. You know, what about the brave men and women overseas? And, you know, I was one of those brave men overseas, so I know how it is. So, you know, it's nothing quite like to that extent, especially because, you know, not because the workload is easier. I mean, it is on my side, um, but because I'm definitely taking care of myself a lot better now than I was back then, because Jesus Christ, I, <laughs> you know, rode myself hard and put myself away wet, basically. Um, and that resulted in a lot of shit going wrong, you know, a lot of weight gain and a lot of shit going wrong upstairs. And, you know, it's 
something I got to deal with, you know. And, uh, you know, just starting to change up the diet a little bit. And, you know, I know, I know, everybody's like, oh, you should be exercising, you know, get on, lift some weights, fatty. But, you know, ugh, again, rambly. But, uh, you know, the point being is that, uh, you know, I've just been feeling really burnt out with life in general. Um, just, you know, it's getting harder and harder for me to sit down and, <clears throat> you know, put together videos, podcasts, whatever else I'm doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been taking a little bit of extra time away from work, you know, again, with the idea of focusing more on my freelancing stuff, but... You know, I've also been focusing a little bit more on just staying away from work. You know, it's kind of the, you know, re trying to reestablish a better uh, work-life balance. And I know if some of my clients are listening to this, they may not want to hear that, you know, because they want me to be working all the time. Um, some of them do, anyway. Not all, but, you know. Um, so it just kind of is what it is right now, basically. Um and I just, I just gotta take care of me, man. So, um, I'll still continue to make videos and stuff for him, but, uh, you know, just gotta learn to keep a good pace and not try to burn myself out as much. And, you know, try to go outside and do something fun, but it's kind of hard to do that with, like, all the snow outside. And there's not really a whole lot of stuff to do out here in Kalamazoo. You know, unless you got, like, a lot of money and want to go out drinking and stuff. But, you know, it's basically, yeah, it's, it's a college town, you know. It's just a, you know, if you're not in college or anything like that, you know, you basically work in the factories and, you know, that's all your life is, man. And it's just, you know, fucking sad, you know. I think if, uh, I, think if I were a little bit younger and, you know, the proper traditional college age, quote-unquote, um... I'd probably have a much better time out here, but, you know, now I'm in my 30s, you know, I don't really want to go out drinking and stuff as much, because it's, you know, it's a little bit harder to do in America versus uh, back in Japan. I mean, maybe certain parts of America, like New York, where you got, like, the subway line and shit like that, but, you know, out here in America, everything's, like, so far away from everything, and it's just... You know, it's such a pain in the ass to get from one point to another because you got to worry about traffic and fucking Michigan drivers don't know how to drive and it's just, you know, fucking stressful and all that kind of shit. Whereas with Japan, as long as I can get to a train station, you know, I could navigate my way around it, you know, even drunk. <laughs> I've done it before and I can do it again. Um, but, you know, can't really do that out here, you know, because the... I mean, they do have a metro system out here, but it's just, it's not, it's not nearly as effective, you know, like, you know, I'd hear people, you know, stories of a lot of people I work with take the bus and stuff like that, and it's just, you know, they gotta leave, like, you know, four or five hours before their shift, so they can, you know, hit the bus at the right time, so, you know, they can come to work, like, maybe five or ten minutes early, and I'm like, <clears throat> fuck that, man. You know, I ain't got time for that shit. You know, thankfully I got a car, so I can just leave whenever, pretty much. But, uh, yeah, just fuck that, man. You know? <laughs> you know, even in Japan, <clears throat> I mean, unless you lived, like, way out in the fucking boonies, you know, out in the, uh, the Anaka part of Japan, and your commute would be super long, um, may only be, like, an hour or two. And, you know, the train would get there right on time and stuff like that. And, you know, it's just, ugh, just one of them things. Just, I, I feel like I don't really have, you know, a reason to be here in America, much less fucking Michigan. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of reasons why I'm going to be moving back to Ohio. Uh, again, sorry, I'm sick, so I sound like shit. Um, <clears throat> fuck me. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm going to be moving back to Ohio soon. Um, just, you know, stay with the folks for a little bit so I can 
find my own place, get a job lined up and everything. Uh, just go through temp agency to give me some kind of work, you know, stuff like that. Um, that way I can be a little closer to them while I start building myself back up again. Um, and, you know, I can build the, the freelance gigs and stuff to a point to where, you know, A, I'm not overworking myself, and B, I'm actually able to earn, you know, a substantial amount of money enough to at least fucking live comfortably. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not asking for the world here. I'm not asking, you know, to make several thousand dollars a month and, you know, live pretty high on the hog out here because, like, you know, I live in the Midwest, you know. <laughs> The cost of living is pretty low out here comparatively to like the bigger cities and stuff. So, you know, you don't need to, you don't really need to make a whole lot of money to, you know, live comfortably out here. Um, but I just want to make a, yeah, excuse me, make a, you know, good amount of money doing what I love to do without fucking killing myself doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, the, one of the advantages of, working online doing the freelance stuff is that you can do it anywhere so you know the goal is to be able to you know make enough money to live off of on a consistent basis and then you know doing it full time and stuff and also to be able to do more traveling I think that's going to be uh, a big part of my life once you know we get the freelance gigs and stuff you know where they need to be so that way I can do more traveling, because I think that's one of the reasons why I just feel so, why I feel so like depressed and, you know, shackled, in a way, is that you know I, I can't, you know, I don't really have the money to go anywhere, and especially around here, you know, there's not really a whole lot of stuff to do, to be honest. I mean, you can go into the big city and spend a lot of money, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just gonna be kind of eh you know and that could just be me because you know I've been to some of the biggest cities in the world I mean Tokyo especially you know but you know Tokyo aside you know I was in San Diego Chicago you know all these other big cities and stuff and uh, you know going up to Grand Rapids for a weekend isn't gonna impress me all that much just saying um, so yeah, I definitely think, you know, that's that's going to be the goal uh, once we start getting freelance gigs, uh, paying what they should be paying me. Um, <laughs> and that's not to, to talk disparagingly about my current clientele. Um, it's just, you know, it is what it is. But uh, once that starts happening, uh, then I can uh, start booking flights or you know, get an RV or something like that and travel around America. I think it'd be kind of cool to do, like, a little American road trip. Because, like, you know, I lived in this good, you know, lived in the country for, you know, the majority of my life and uh, haven't really seen a whole lot of it, you know? I've only seen a couple states and stuff. Even while I was in the Navy, you know, there's <laughs> bringing 50 of them. And I've only seen like maybe a handful, like maybe about ten or less. Um, so this kind of one of those things I'm thinking about. But you know, most importantly, aside from you know the going around America tour of, of sorts, um, I want to go back to Japan. You know, I know everybody's been asking me, you know, hey, Tom, when are you come back to Japan, Andy, you should really come back to Japan. You know, I know you hate it in America, just come back to Japan. Well. Yeah, it's not that easy, guys. You know, it's not an easy process for me to get back to Japan, you know. <clears throat> even if it was through school, like, even if I got... Because, like, the original plan for me to come back was through uh, was through Temple, going to school out in Temple University. But, you know, with the freelance gigs and stuff taking off, um, I don't want to run the risk of, you know, trying to save up all this money for plane tickets and all the other stuff that I need to come out to Japan and stuff before the GI Bill starts kicking back in. And, uh, you know, I got to focus more on the freelancing stuff. And, you know, it's it's just a, it's a very delicate balance, you know. Because, like, I want to build up the freelance thing for it to be, like, 
you know, something that I can work towards. You know, I don't want to, you know, go to college and hope for the best of, you know, getting that sweet job right out of college, you know, being a entry level paper pusher. You know, I want to go out there and just kind of make my own destiny, you know, carve my own path. Um, <clears throat> and with like doing the freelancing stuff, I feel it's, you know, helped me build up the skills that I need to do it proper and, you know, also make some money on the side. And uh, once I'm able to do it full time, then, you know, I can just take it from there and, you know, adjust my rates accordingly as I, you know, as my income expectations change, you know, because <laughs> I don't want to just, you know, settle on making just enough to, you know, just to function living in a one bedroom apartment in the Midwest, you know, I have other dreams beyond this apartment and, uh, I want to get out there and, and do them, man. Like, you know, rewatching some of these old J vlogs and, uh, some of my own, you know, Japan vlogs, um, and just knowing what I know now versus back then, I just, I want to get out there and make more videos, especially in Japan, because I felt like, you know, even though on a personal level, especially, you know, being deployed in 7th Fleet out there, you know, it was a very stressful, dark period in my life, but, you know, creatively, um, I felt like I was really reaching new heights, and it felt like, you know, every day or every weekend I could go out and do something new. And, you know, of course that's the honeymoon period. And, you know, once you've been in Japan long enough, that sort starts to wear off. But, you know, being a YouTuber, you know, trying to think of stuff to put out there video wise, you know, you're kind of kept in the honeymoon period a little bit longer. Um, <clears throat> and I just felt like, you know, my time there was cut too short, you know? I felt like I had a lot more to offer um, from a creative standpoint, from a video making standpoint and stuff like that. And uh, I just want to do more, you know, see more places, meet more people. That's a big thing for me, meet more people. Cause like out here in the Midwest, you know, especially when I was living out here before the Navy, um, you know, social media was around, but it wasn't nearly as prolific as it is now. So, like, walking around with a friggin', uh, you know, a camera, because you didn't have cell phones with decent enough cameras back then. Uh, you didn't have the selfie sticks and drones and all this kind of fun whiz-bang stuff that you got now. Um, but, you know, that kind of stuff wasn't as prolific, so you're just seen as, like, a fucking weirdo with a camera. Like, what are you doing? You know, sneaking in other people's houses? You filming a porno? What you doing? And, uh, you know, later on it became a bit more mainstream to do. So, like, coming back now, it's still a little embarrassing to go out and do vlogs. But now, you know, it's less about, you know, what are you doing peeping in other people's houses? You know, it's more like, yo, can I be the vlog, man? Well, you know, what's your social media? I ain't got one, man. And, you know, stuff like that. Again, eh, I'm trying to wipe off the screen here. Eh, fucking, whatever. <laughs> trying to get rid of them comments so I can see everything and the picture and stuff. Okay, there they go. Alright, but, um, in any event, guys, I think I've rambled on long enough. Um, so that's basically what's going on with me. Just feeling really burnt out at the moment. Um, really sick, if you can tell from my voice. Um, hopefully I'll get better uh, in the next couple days. You know, I'm usually, I'm usually not very, I'm, not, I'm usually not sick for very long. It just kind of, you know, either lingers a little bit where I'm a little stuffed up and then just kind of goes away or I have like a really, you know, a sick day where I'm just, feeling like complete and utter dog shit and I just gotta like sleep it off for a day uh, whatever the case may be but uh, you know <laughs> so I just gotta you know go through with it and uh, stuff like that so um, you know <laughs> kind of lost my train of thought there but you know basically that's kind of what I've been going through 
Um, hopefully I'll make this a bit more concise uh, once I do my February 2018 update video. And, you know, hopefully I won't be as sick, so I'll sound a little bit better. Um, but for now, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in to this live stream. If you're watching the post stream, it's totally fine. That's kind of what this was made to be, just something that I don't have to sit down and edit because uh, I just wanted to get it out there for you guys. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, and uh, with that said, this is the Andy Sound. Sign up for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're live. <coughs> so, hey gang, Andy here. Um, just wanted to do, uh, do a live video here to talk about some stuff and things and have this basically be my February 2018 update video for, you guessed it, February 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these uh, monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as some youtube -y stuff. So, let's just jump right into it. Um, <clears throat> If you can tell from my voice and stuff, uh, I've been a little sick recently. Um, the flu has come into full effect in this area, so that's why I haven't really uh, been able to make videos and stuff as of late. You know, I've even had to scale back on some uh, some editing projects until very recently. Uh, in fact, just today, I started working on a little project for uh, my good old buddy Rado Rado uh, Radley from uh, Rad Culture. Um, finishing up an episode of his for the Why Come Japan podcast where he interviews another good friend of mine, <clears throat> uh, Albo from Drift Hunter Albo. Uh, definitely recommend his content. Uh, if you guys are interested in like Initial D, uh, street racing, Japan, stuff like that, uh, his channel is definitely a great uh, place for that. Uh, his content is really, really high quality. Um, hopefully he gets like a Netflix show or something like that because it's like that good, that high tier quality. Um, so yeah, definitely check his stuff out and check out Radley's stuff as well. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I've been doing and I just haven't really, you know, aside from being sick and just dying <laughs> from the flu and I lost my voice a couple days ago, um, getting it back uh, through the power of mints. <laughs> and uh, proper, you know, water drinking and stuff like that. But it's still not 100% yet. But uh, I just wanted to come on here and uh, talk with you guys about, you know, the usual updatey stuff. So that's kind of been the main thing for uh, February, at least. It's just, you know, been sick, you know, still plugging away at editing projects when I can, but you know, sickness has kind of put a damper on that. And plus, you know, just other stuff as well um, but yeah uh, <laughs> that's kind of been my thing um, as far as um, future YouTube stuff for me um, I definitely want to do more live streams I wanted to do like an editing live stream and stuff but like I said I've been sick my voice isn't hundred percent so I didn't want to you know talk for two to three hours straight uh, while I'm editing stuff and plus I got to get this episode out in particular um, so I just wanted to make this quick little live video um, just to talk to you guys let you know I'm alive barely because <laughs> of the flu and uh, I didn't forget about you um, just sick because flu season so that's kind of what's been going on in my neck of the woods and uh, you know I guess personal life wise um, as you guys know, I'm going to be moving back to Ohio next month. So it's just been, you know, being on the grind, making money, um, getting ready to move back. Um, it's not really going to get super underway until, you know, this coming month because that's kind of how I roll. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is my voice again. Shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I've just been working saving up trying to keep afloat until I move back in with my folks at the end of, the, of uh, next month and then from there um, I wanted to uh, find a job you know get savings and stuff built back up again and then find another place that's kind of close by to where they live like I don't want to live like super close to where we would like run into each other at the grocery store or something like that but still 
you know, close enough to where if I wanted to stop by on the weekends or something like that, it wouldn't be too outside the uh, budget or anything like that. Because, like, that was kind of the idea with uh, moving out to Kalamazoo initially. Um, I didn't really take into account just how far Kalamazoo is from where my folks are. Um, to me, you know, I thought three hours was like, eh, it's nothing's three hours, whatever. But like when it involves snow and Michigan drivers, and it's just, eh, it's not a good combo, especially not in the snow. Um, so I've been wanting to move back to Ohio for a while now, but you know, it was either due to school or, you know, apartment leases and, you know, it's just, the timing wasn't really right. So I decided, you know, once my current lease ends to move back to Ohio, um, to just kind of start over, you know, I think that I had a lot of roadblocks in coming out to Kalamazoo to say the least. Um, a lot of personal, mental uh, sort of issues I had to get through, um, especially coming out of the Navy. Um, I think I think if I were to, <clears throat> you know, do this whole thing all over again, um, honestly, I probably would have just went straight to Temple. <laughs> I wouldn't have bullshitted around going to Western and all this other bullshit. And I would have just went straight to Temple and, you know, I still had all my savings and, you know, fun. But, uh, you know, you live and you learn. Um, it's kind of a, the price you pay from all this. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's still other ways to get to Japan. Um, but that is, you know, my goal to get back out there. As I've been saying for a while now. It's just, you know, these things take, take time. You know, I don't have a whole lot of money or resources or anything like that. I can't just, you know, book a flight and get out there you know I don't have the money for something like that um, plus living out in the Midwest um, the cost of living is pretty low which is good but also the amount of income you get is relative to that low cost of living so that's kind of one of the reasons I want to do freelancing a bit more because it's it's global you know it allows me to work um, pretty much anywhere at any time and uh, that's kind of the beauty of it. And that's, you know, something I wanted to do because, you know, there's like a whole community and stuff of, you know, people that call themselves digital nomads. Um, but they, you know, I don't want to be like a nomad nomad where I have, you know, no attachments or anything like that. All I have is a backpack, my laptop, and the world at my feet, or however the phrase goes. Um, I guess the... Uh, Sort of the opposite end of being a digital nomad would be, I guess, just being a digital sedentary or something like that. That was one of the names proposed for it. But anyway, as I'm rambling on here, um, basically I just want to um, get these uh, freelancing gigs and stuff to where um, that income can support me full time. And from there, I can do more traveling because I think that's honestly... One of the things that I miss uh, ever since getting out of the Navy uh, way back in late 2015, going on three years now, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's been a long ride so far. Um, but yeah, uh, that's one of the things I've been missing is just being able to travel, being able to do stuff. Um, you know, in Japan, like, <clears throat> Jesus, <laughs> in Japan, uh, but in Japan, um, even if you didn't have a whole lot of money, you could still, like, do a lot of things you know even just going and walking around the parks and you know just riding your bicycle or if you have a motorbike or a car or something like that you know there's a lot to see and do in Japan that doesn't require a whole lot of money and you know I can't really say the same for uh, where I live out here in the Midwest I mean there's some things but you know especially in my little side of the mitt um, it's college town, so if you're if you're like of traditional college age, then I think there's plenty for you to do. You know, lots of good bars and stuff like that. But uh, you know, as a thirty-something, no longer a twenty-something, 
And the bar scene's not really all that appealing to me unless I'm going with like a mass group of friends or something like that. I don't know. This is just a lot more fun doing that in Tokyo. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things where, you know, you lived in a big city or at least near a big city long enough that you go to, you know, someplace else and, you know, they try to do something different, but it's all like scaled down relative to, you know, that city. And it's just like, eh, it's not the same. You know, that's kind of the feeling I get from going to a lot of these places out in Kalamazoo and surrounding areas. It's just, you know, it's just kind of, eh, you know, it's okay, but nothing really to write home about, nothing to really vlog about, at least. Um, that's how I feel anyway, but uh, yeah, man, um, in addition to that, um, I've also been working through uh, a lot of... Uh, just personal creative burnout as well um, before I started getting sick with the flu and everything you know I was running at full steam as far as making videos and stuff like that goes for uh, for my clients and uh, you know I just hit a wall um, I just I reached my limit with uh, the amount of stuff I could do and uh, I just burned out and uh, I had some people upset at me about that, but you know, kind of is what it is. We talked it out, hugged it out, whatever. <laughs> so we're good now, but uh, you know, it's just one of those things where, um, and I'm glad that this problem happened, you know, so early into my freelancing, but you know, it's just the whole like you should be working syndrome, you know, like every minute of every, every waking day you should be working on a project whether it's your own videos somebody else's videos or trying to set up something to where you can get more videos from clients you know that you either already have or get new clients you know it's the whole you should be working syndrome you know unless you're like getting ready to go to bed or eat like i am about ready to make something for uh, for supper tonight um, but i just want to put out this video to uh, talk to you all about stuff um, but that was just kind of what I was dealing with. It's just this constant feeling of um, not being good enough as far as not, not being able to put out enough videos for my clients, not you know having good enough editing quality for those videos, not doing the videos fast enough, um, stuff like that. And it really got to me. And uh, you know, I just broke down basically as far as that stuff goes and you know the the flu kind of uh helped push that along a little bit to where i physically couldn't do it um but it did teach me a valuable lesson to you know to prioritize off time as much as you prioritize on time and what i mean by that is you know even though it's freelance and you can technically work anytime from anywhere for any amount of hours um, you should always prioritize um, not really prioritize but just um, make time for um, off time like you know it's not just extra time you know it's you know it's allocated as time that you're not working it's off time it's not just this nebulous undesignated time you know, it's like, this time will be for breakfast, and then this will be for work, and then this will be for lunch, work again, and then something happens, you go to sleep, and then you start it all over again. So it's no longer that something happens. It's, it's all allocated, you know. It's, you know, I might work a little bit after supper. I might not. I uh, just got to kind of feel it out. But, you know, and one of the other things that kind of, brought me to you know push myself you know to the certain point was you know just kind of my training in the navy you know one of the one of the good things about the military and it's kind of a double edged sword here but one of the good things is that the military will train you on going beyond your limits and in a lot of cases that's good but you know I've learned that you know limits are there for a reason and if you go beyond them too much and you just like are constantly 
you know, just burning yourself at both, you know, burning the candle at both ends, you know, you're just going to burn yourself out that much quicker. And, uh, you know, it's okay to kind of go beyond your limits sometimes. Like if you want to get a project done or you're studying for finals and you want to pull an all-nighter just to, you know, get that last little bit of information in the old head brain. You know, it's good to go beyond your limits in certain specific situations. But you don't want to do that for months on end. You know, it just, you'll eventually burn out. And that's basically what happened to me. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of glad that the flu happened when it did because it you know it basically forced me to, to slow the fuck down you know whether I wanted to or not like I had to take a couple days off from from my real job to uh, recuperate because I had like a really high fever and like uh, muscles were all weak and I was just a fucking mess and even going into work yesterday was pretty rough because you know, if, if you think my voice was bad now, um, I couldn't, I could barely speak. And in my job, uh, verbal communication is very key. I mean, communication is key to anything, really. But uh, in my IRL job, it's uh, especially crucial, especially timing stuff. Um, so it was really hard for me to get that across to my coworkers because they're all like looking at me and like, all right, Andy, what should we do? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> Jesus. And it feels like whenever I cough, like all the air in my lungs is expelled at once. And it's just like, <laughs> you know how it is. But yeah, um, as far as uh, what I plan on doing once I get back to Ohio, um, you know, like I said, uh, moving in with the folks just temporarily, um, just to kind of, you know, regain my bearings and, uh, to find a new place that's a bit closer to them, um, so that way I can visit them on weekends or whatever, or something happens, they can stop by or whatever the case may be, um, and, uh, beyond that... Now, like I said, I do want to go back to Japan, but, you know, unless I'm going back to school, my choices are pretty limited, so, um, I may just have to bite the bullet and go back to school, so it just kind of is what it is, but, um, you know, <laughs> it's just one of those things, but, uh, the way my grades ended up at, uh, Western and KVCC, um, I really need to rethink a lot of things before I even attempt to go back to school again. And, you know, obviously one of those things is a good support network. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, moving back to Ohio because, you know, I have that support network. And that's that's one of the things that kind of kept me grounded in Japan, even though I was having a really bad time out there, you know, with work and stuff. Um, one of the things that I did enjoy was the support network through um, <clears throat> through my roommates, as well as, uh, you know, people I met through YouTube that were living out in, like, Tokyo and surrounding areas. Um, we wouldn't get to see each other that often, but, you know, maybe a weekend or every other weekend or something like that, at least one of them would be available to hang out and talk, chill, whatever. Go to some random hole-in-the-wall bar that I don't know about. Um, that's not widely advertised. And then they get all huffy when I can't follow directions. Like, ugh, you've been in Japan for like a month. How come you don't know like 500,000 kanji like we do? Ugh. <laughs> I was like, give me a break, dude. Shit. But, you know. It's whatever. I still love you guys. Um, yeah, I definitely do want to get back to, out to Japan. Um, I just, you know, and I've been saying this for a while, but, you know, I just feel like you know, American life just doesn't really have anything to offer me. Um, and one of my, one of my good friends said this, um, you know, America's a great country if you're rich, but if you're not, it, it sucks, you know, and there's still the notion of the American dream of, you know, working your way up the ranks and, you know, going from rags to riches, I guess. And, you know, that's still around, but, 
you know, we've become more of a, a global society, an international society, and it's a lot easier to, you know, make it in the world rather than just in a specific country. So, you know, um, and in Japan, you know, um, it's pretty easy to, you know, live at least comfortably by my, my standards, you know, like, I live a pretty Spartan life. I mean, it looks pretty nice and stuff in the background, but you know, it just, most of this is just kind of leftovers from back when I was in the Navy and had the money to spend on a, you know, big screen, flat screen TV, couch, stuff like that. Um, computer, <laughs> probably the most costly thing I own next to my car. Um, but yeah, um, definitely would go back to Japan. I just, I just felt like, you know, creatively I was, you know, reaching new levels and now that I'm doing more editing and learning how to cut things, you know, more, uh, I guess cinematically or just make it more appealing cut wise rather than just kind of do what I used to do on YouTube, which was just more of a kind of an artistic sort of like old school YouTuber mentality, which is just, you know, put stuff up there, minimally edited, um, but just make it more about me and rather, rather than the place, which, you know, I don't really agree with that philosophy anymore. I mean, unless you want to be like an online personality, that's a little different, but, uh, you know, for me, I, you know, want to showcase the place more than myself. Um, and just the other little differences, you know, especially learning more about editing and stuff than I did before. Because, like, before it was just kind of as a necessity just to cut out a lot of the ums, the ahs, the uh, you knows, things like that. Um, <laughs> I said it right there. So, shit, I'm catching myself. God damn it. Eh. But you guys, you guys understand what I'm saying, though. Um... So I just wanted to go back to Japan, knowing what I know now uh, about editing and things like that, and put together some like really good uh, YouTube videos and collab with more people, uh, both big and small. Uh, I think that's just one of the biggest joys I've gotten uh, while I was out in Japan was being able to um, meet up with a lot of YouTubers, uh, both you know big YouTubers that were my heroes, you know back when the platform was first starting as well as, you know, up and coming creators who are just getting their feet wet. And, you know, I'd always come up to them and just like encourage them about making videos and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, things like that. Um, before it gets into like a name dropping phase. Um, but that's just one of the things I miss, man. There's not really anything like that out here, at least in this part of America. Maybe in LA it's different, but you know, LA's, a way different animal for most of America anyway. So, I think my voice is pretty much shot. Um, <laughs> you've recorded like, what, over 22 minutes so far? Uh, so I think that's plenty enough to let you guys know what's been going on in my life and what to expect moving forward, both YouTube-wise as well as personal life-wise. So anyway, guys, I gotta get back to this project for uh, my good old buddy, Rado Rado. Um, definitely check it out when it comes up on the on the Rad Culture channel. Uh, definitely subscribe to Radley. He's a good guy. Makes good stuff. I help. <laughs> Sometimes. But, yeah, man. Be sure to check it out when it comes out. Probably in a couple days. Um, and with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to my March 2018 update video for, you guessed it, March 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it, as a much more famous YouTuber would say. So I tried recording this monthly update video earlier on my trusty Sony Alpha 5100. Uh, but the main problem with this camera is that it overheats very quickly. So if you don't record in like 10 to 15 minutes, it just shuts down and 
you gotta like cool it down and at that point I'm, I'm kind of like on a roll with talking about stuff so it's like uh, now I gotta go back and talk about the things again and hopefully I can nail the takes better and then all of a sudden get back into what I was talking about so you know it is what it is and it's like the only like alpha that has the little flip out screen like the other ones have the weird little tilty thing it's like like <laughs> I can't work with that as far as you know filming myself so anyway that's why I'm filming on the webcam today so there you go anyway guys uh, let's just jump right into it as I was saying um, with the YouTube news and this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while but uh, I didn't want to jinx it because of the YouTube partnership program revisions and stuff like that so I think we can uh, safely um, celebrate my recent milestone of reaching over a thousand subscribers so I'm very excited about that I think at the time of this recording I'm very close to getting over 1300 subscribers so very excited about that thank you guys for subscribing to this humble humble channel and because I've reached over a thousand subscribers I'm now able to retain my YouTube partnership program uh, benefits so I'm very excited about that um, and I'm hoping to make more videos for you guys in the future. So that way, you know, you've subscribed to this channel for something. So, um, but it's not gonna be like an everyday thing. It might be like a weekly or every other week sort of thing because of my other commitments, most notably with video editing. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm the main video editor for the Tikio Sam channel, as well as now, for the Eric Surf 6 channel. So I'm very excited to be working with those guys. Um, they're great people. And uh, we're definitely gonna be making some great vids for you guys in the future. So I've also done some side work for my buddy Radley from the Rad Culture channel. And I'm now recently starting up work for Brian of the Ramen Adventures channel. We're gonna be putting out some good videos for his channel in the coming months. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Um, but that's been kind of the main reason why I haven't really been making so many videos on my channels that, you know, I just don't have time to make stuff for myself because I'm busy either working my IRL job or, you know, working on videos for other people. So, you know, it kind of is what it is, but I'm hoping to be making some more stuff for you guys in the coming months. So anyway, that's all I got to say about the word Vietnam as far as video making and stuff like that goes. So let's get right into the personal life stuff. So um, as far as, you know, this past month or so, uh, I've been feeling pretty good. And as you guys know, I took a break from college uh, for a semester just to kind of, you know, get myself back together again. Um, last semester, I didn't really do so well, uh, mostly due to anxiety and depression. Uh, just felt like I was, burning myself at multiple ends and was just wearing myself out. Um, so I decided to take a semester off to uh, rethink a lot of things. And one of the big things was um, continuing to stay in this area. And I think um, nothing against this area in particular. I'm sure, you know, the people that live here love it and they think it's nice and, you know, more power to you. But for me, it just, you know, isn't my scene. I don't really like it. So another reason why I took a break from college is so that way I can eventually move back home to Ohio. Um, talk to my folks about it. They're really keen on the idea and um, gonna be moving back with them uh, the end of this month, beginning of next month. So by the time you see this, you know, <laughs> I might have already been moved in. Never know. Never know who's watching this and when. So in any event, um, Gonna be moving back in with them uh, temporarily, mostly just as a cost-saving measure. Um, gonna be uh, working to save up some money so that way I can, you know, move in my own place proper, have a good amount of savings. I know it's not an ideal situation to be moving back in with your parents as a 30-something, but you know, it just kind of is what it is right now. Um, I just feel like um, it's a good move. Uh, for a couple reasons um, but also you know just to have a good support network there I think that's that's the main reason why I failed out in Kalamazoo not just um, not just at college but I just felt like I failed overall 
living out here. Um, you know, when I was looking up colleges when I was getting out of the Navy, um, a good social network <laughs> wasn't really something I thought about because like I've always been kind of a loner, you know, just an introvert. So I felt like I didn't really need to be around a lot of people. And plus, being in the Navy, you're in, in close proximity to a lot of people anyway. So I felt like at that time that it would just be best for me to kind of distance myself from people and just kind of take a break from being around people 24 seven. You know, I just wanted to do my own thing, be by myself. I didn't want roommates because, you know, I didn't really know anybody in this area at the time. And I certainly didn't really trust anybody. Didn't want to like put up an ad on Craigslist and get roomed with a psycho. I mean, it'd make a nice story, but I might lose a kidney. So <laughs> didn't want that to happen. Um, but in any event, um, being out here did teach me a lot. Um, I did have a lot of uh, emotional baggage leaving the Navy. I didn't really think I would have that when I, when I was on the inside looking out. But um, being on the outside now, um, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of issues that I've dealt with over these past couple of years that I didn't really see as problems when I was still on the inside, you know, because, you know, my level of thinking at that time was, um, it basically just felt like I was transferring. You know, I was going from working on board USS Lassen in Yokosuka, Japan at the time to transferring to college. <laughs> you know, I was like going from, you know, USS ship to USS college. You know, that's kind of the mentality that I approached it with is that, you know, this is my new life, this is my new job, you know, and I'm gonna do the best I can at, you know, what I do. But, you know, there's a lot of downtime and I think that really um, hurt me the most was that there's a lot of time for me to unpack emotionally and just a lot of time for me to just kind of, you know, get my feelings in order. And it was a very uncomfortable experience, you know, doing that over a period of time. And plus dealing with school, dealing with, you know, readjustments back to American life. Um, I think I got a lot of that emotional baggage in order now. Um, I, I definitely feel feel a lot better mentally. I still have my moments, as I think I always will, of just, you know, not feeling like I'm right with the world or that I'm focusing on what I should be focusing on. One of the main things that has been worrying me is, you know, am I moving forward in the right direction? You know, am I doing something right now that is moving me forward in the direction that I want to be? And that's something that I'm just like always worried about. You know, it's very hard for me to be in the moment. And that's one of the things I've really been trying my hardest to focus on is being more in the now because I'm always focused on, you know, future Andy, you know, Andy from, you know, maybe like one to two to three years from now, not so much Andy right now recording this video, looking at this little piece of glass and having a little fuzzy microphone to talk into, you know, I'm, it's hard for me to focus on that Andy because I'm focused on, you know, future Andy. So that's one of the things that has really been helping me in getting a much clearer mental state. And, um, you know, that's not to say I haven't been focusing on the future, but it's a lot easier to deal with the here and now when you're in the here and now. So, um, but if you do want to hear about some future talk, um, one of the main things that I've been saying, and I even said it earlier, is that I want to go back to Japan. I've been saying that pretty much since I got back to America. So for years now. Um, but it, it's been a, a complicated situation because um, it's, you know, it's not like I can just buy a ticket and go to Japan. I mean, I can do that, but I mean, that's, you know, only for the short term, maybe for like a week or two. But, you know, I want to be there a bit more long term. Um, so that's a bit more a complicated thing to do. It's a lot of moving parts and stuff like that. And, you know, with my, my bad grades in college, it doesn't exactly um, endear me to a lot of the uh, 
a lot of the staff at uh, colleges out in Japan. So that's kind of been my main uh, downfall is that, you know, I just don't have good enough grades to transfer out there. Cause that's, that's been one of my main things um, is, you know, transferring out to Temple University. And I know a lot of people have their opinions about that particular college. Um, and they're definitely not lost on me. But, you know, in order to experience Japan, and especially on the GI Bill, because going international, um, your, your options on the GI Bill are fairly limited. So I feel that Temple is, you know, the best option for me. I'm still able to collect BAH while I'm out there because it's technically an American school. So that's really nice um, to be able to afford rent and food and be able to go out and do stuff and things. So that's definitely a major plus for me. Um, but, you know, a lot of my mistakes, you know, have caught up with me as far as like bad grades, failing classes, things like that. So it's not as easy for me to just pack up my bags and get on the next flight to Tokyo. Um, it's just, it's a lot of stuff I got to deal with. So, um, and moving back in with my folks, you know, another reason why I'm doing it aside from cost saving measures is to hopefully go to another community college out there to help boost my GPA. So that way I can transfer out to, uh, out to Temple. And, uh, I definitely want to, you know, really make it count out there. I know I only have so much of my benefits left, and I'm just kind of rambling and raving at this point. But, uh, you know, if anything, I hope it'll, you know, address a lot of um, questions about, you know, why I'm not in Japan, why I didn't just go to Japan, why don't I just leave this place and go to Japan? Because, you know, it's just I don't really have the, uh, the money right now to do that. Um, kind of dug myself a little bit of a hole and uh, got to dig myself out. So not as easy as it, you know, may appear to be for some people because, you know, for some exchange students or for some students out there, um, it's pretty easy because, you know, mommy and daddy can foot the bill or maybe they worked a whole lot and were able to save up and kind of is what it is. But, uh, you know, the uh, the desire is still there to go out to Japan. I felt like creatively I was, you know, at an all-time peak. Um, I just felt like, you know, everything flowed creatively. You know, I was very focused on making videos in Japan about certain spots that I thought were very interesting. I was constantly looking up new spots that I didn't even know about and, you know, trying to come up with concepts for videos and stuff like that and just kind of see what other people were doing in those areas and you know I kind of did a combination of you know popular stuff as well as some local stuff that doesn't get a lot of coverage online and you know looking back at some of those videos especially after having done all the video editing work for all the people that I work for um, sometimes it's kind of painful to look at that stuff because it's like I hardly ever edited stuff because I was so busy out in Seventh Fleet, I didn't really have time to do it. And plus, I was still in that like old school school YouTuber mentality of, you know, if you build it, they will come regardless of the quality. But you know, nowadays, I've definitely smartened up to, you know, better production quality, better editing. Um, so I think that Andy Japandi season two um, will be a lot better than season one as far as production quality, editing, things like that, you know, because I, I just have more of a, more of an eye for things like that now. And, you know, I, I want to make more, take more pictures for my Instagram, because that's kind of been another thing that's been haunting me is, you know, doing all these throwback time hop pictures, you know, it's just like, I don't really have anything all that interesting to show you guys right now. But, you know, I just kind of go through the archives and like, oh, I remember going to that place. And then, you know, just fancying it up with the Instagram app and then putting it out there. Um, but it just feels like I'm constantly reliving my past by doing that. And, you know, again, it's it's fun to visit, but I don't want to live there. It's kind of 
my thoughts on the past, you know. But uh, I definitely want to make some new memories out in Japan. I was only really out there for, I mean, technically I was out there for two years. But considering the hectic schedule that I had out in Seventh Fleet, um, I was really probably only like in Japan, Japan for like a year collectively. So I didn't really have a whole lot of time to do stuff. So I'm really proud of the amount of stuff that I was able to do in the short time frame that I was out in Japan. And I feel like that there's more for me to do and see out there. And that's the reason you know I want to go back is that I want to get back into that creative flow of things and to see and do more stuff. Because even in Tokyo, there's a lot of stuff that you know I want to do out there. And、uh, in other parts of Japan as well. I don't want it to just be, you know, a Tokyo centric sort of video series.、Um, you know, Tokyo's nice, it's got a lot of nice things. A lot of my friends are out there or in surrounding areas.、Uh, but there's more to Japan than just Tokyo. It's like California, you know, there's more to California than LA. You know, <laughs> it is what it is. But、uh, definitely want to explore Japan more and. You know, make some memories, get some dang old pictures out there beyond stuff that I took like three, four years ago. Anyway, guys,、um, that's kind of the plan is to boost my GPA through going to, to a local community college when I move back to Ohio. And then from there,、uh, applying to Temple, you know, eventually getting accepted as my GPA goes up, and then transferring out there. So. You know, once I'm out there, I'll be able to、uh, still do some video editing work、um, and also get, you know, my GI Bill stipend. So that's definitely nice. But again, it's a lot of moving parts. I got to talk with some people. It's not something I can just, you know, do overnight. So definitely appreciate you guys sticking around、uh, for the video, even though I kind of rambled and raved. For most of it. So, anyway, that's it, guys. This is the Andy Son. t i m e for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, now we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And welcome to my April 2018 update video for, you guessed it, April 2018. Woo. So, yeah, as always, with these monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. And Probably the most important thing that's happened to me recently is, if you couldn't tell from the background because it's a little dark, is I've moved. <laughs>、um, I've been talking about this for a couple months now about wanting to move back to Ohio, and after several weeks of getting everything prepared, working my final days at McDonald's, and all this other stuff, I finally、uh, moved in with my folks here in Ohio. It's good to be back in、uh, what I consider my home state, even though I was born in Michigan. But this is, you know, the place where I did the majority of my growing up at. There's a lot of, a lot of little things, you know, coming from a mid sized city in Michigan to a smaller town in Ohio. You know, just the people are a lot nicer out here.、And、I've only been back for a couple days and I've already started to notice it. The roads are a lot nicer, I can tell you that right off the bat. Um, not all of them, but the vast majority of them.、Uh, the drivers are a lot more laid back. It's nice to be in an area where I don't have to worry about my car getting broken into, house getting broken into. But yeah, like I said in previous updates, some of the main reasons why I wanted to move back I wanted to save a little bit of money doing the freelancing stuff, plus working at McDonald's, especially in you know, a single bedroom apartment in Michigan, just really wasn't cutting it. Since I wasn't going to school up in Michigan anymore, And I really didn't like it up there to begin with.、Uh, there was really nothing there to you know, really keep me there. Talked over my folks over Christmas break, decided to move back in with them once my lease was up, and decided to move back in with them、uh, temporarily until I can find a job and start saving up and get another place of my own, but with much lower cost of living, which is nice. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's, it's good to be with my folks, you know, because. When I was out in Michigan, I hardly ever got to see them. In fact, I probably saw them more when I was in the military.、Uh, so it was、uh, a little difficult at times, you know. I got really homesick and you know, just missing a lot of little things about Ohio. I know, weird, right? <laughs> But, you know, it's good to be back.、Uh, it's just kind of a temporary little, you know, recovery period for me, I think.、Uh, just 
get myself back together again, um, get myself, you know, a good job, get some more freelance work, which is really important to me, because um, I want to I want to do freelance full time, and you know I'm able to make it an effective part time income, but I want to do it more. I really enjoy the aspect of working for different people and getting to solve their problems and stuff when it comes to video and you know it's just it's just a lot of fun you know because like I said you know another one of the reasons why I decided to move back to Ohio is to be close to my folks because um, you know they're kind of getting at that age where you just you just don't know I mean I've seen a lot of a lot of my friends uh, lose their folks over the past couple of years and we had a couple health scares in my family. I don't want to get too into it, but uh, you just you just never know, man. I know it's a little <laughs> a little dark to think about, especially you know this early in the video, but you just never know. So I just want to be close by in case something happens, and even for less morbid reasons, you know, I just want to be around my family, you know. So if they want to invite me over for dinner over the weekend or something like that, I can do that. You know, whereas when I was up in Michigan, I had to make a whole friggin' trip of it and got to plan the trip back because I had to be back in time for work. And if I lived close by, it wouldn't take me more than a couple minutes. But anyway, aside from moving and the whole uh, freelance thing, I guess we can sort of sashay a little bit into the whole youtube -y thing. As you guys know, if you've been following the channel for the past couple weeks now, I've seen some recent growth in views as well as subs. Um, all thanks to the uh, the Tikio Sam controversy, I guess, involving his uh, Sushi Go Round video. So when he took his original video down, a lot of people linked to my little VHS edit of it. Um, it was just a fun little edit that I put together, basically cutting a lot of the parts I didn't like, uh, just keeping the main gist of it in there, while adding a little VHS filter that I put up there. It was basically just editing practice for me, just to show what I could do and to just experiment with some like VHS type effects because those are really popular with the kids and plus, you know, they have kind of a soft spot with me as well, being a being a 30-something, you know, growing up in that environment. So when Sam took down his original video, a lot of people started linking to mine, so my humble little video went from a couple hundred views to like tens of thousands of views. It's up to like probably 20, 21 thousand views at least last I checked um, a lot of hateful comments a lot of the same stuff that was directed at Sam was directed at that video um, so I ended up just disabling comments ratings by approval only just because you know I just didn't need that kind of uh, negativity in my life and you know as much flack as YouTube gets for a lot of the bullshit that it pulls and it does pull a lot of bullshit that's no, not mince words here um, I am definitely thankful that they have at least got the comment system fairly together now. Um, it took them a couple, a couple uh, false starts to get there. My inbox isn't bombarded with a bunch of these comments and stuff like that, because, you know, after a while, this shit starts to wear on you, you know, even though it's not, like, my video, per se. But, you know, it's just good for my mental health to uh, be able to have those by approval only, so I don't have to look at it all the time. The fallout from that caused a, a recent um, spike in views as well as uh, subscribers. And we went from about 1,300 or so to a little over 2,000, and then back down to like 1,800-ish. So <laughs> I wanted to make this like a happy 2K subscriber video, but with the, and we went back down to 1.8K, so <laughs> um, yay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I know we'll get there eventually one day uh, on a more permanent basis. But I am definitely thankful to you guys for uh, subscribing to this uh, humble little channel here. Even though I don't put out as much content as I used to. Uh, just because busy with freelance work and now trying to find another big boy job. <laughs> but you know, one of my big fears with starting over on this channel uh, back in 2016, which was the 10 year anniversary of my original channel. Uh, but one of my big fears was that I wouldn't be able to get the subscriber count that I had with that channel. You know, starting over from not necessarily nothing, because, you know, that the channel that I have now had about 150 subs, I think, at the time. But who knows how many of them were active. It was basically just my second channel that I would throw stuff up on. Even though we didn't meet the 2K mark, we still were able to surpass uh, 
my original channel's uh, peak sub count, which was close to about 1.7K. But we surpassed that, and you know, it just makes me very happy to, to see a renewed interest in my channel, and it's given me a lot more motivation to make videos of my own. I know I've been busy working on other people's stuff, you know, Eric Surf 6, TKO Sam, now Brian from Ramen Adventures, and uh, maybe a couple others here and there. You know, with all that, you know, work, it's kind of hard to fit some time in for my own stuff, and plus, like, most of the time, my own, like, day-to-day -day life isn't really all that interesting, but um, it is, you know, very encouraging to see a lot of people interested in my channel now and I want to put some effort into making more content for you guys on this channel so let me know what you guys uh, would like to see more of from me in the comments down below in the boobity boops um, I know that my Japan related videos have seen a recent surge in, in popularity and stuff so I definitely want to do more uh, Japan related videos but I don't know I'm still kind of mixed on the on the whole Japan content thing because you know not having been out of the country for going on three years now it's kind of hard for me to you know come off as some kind of Japan expert but you know you guys seem to be very, be very interested in the Japan content so I'll do my best to you know make more Japan related videos in the future maybe do like an Andy Talks Navy esque sort of thing with Japan. I don't know, Andy Talks Japan? <laughs> that might be the name of the new series actually, because I'm so original. So yeah, if you guys have any uh, Japan related topics you'd like me to discuss, be sure to leave me a little something something down below in the comments, in the boopity boops. And uh, if you have something else you would like me to discuss, uh, be sure to let me know there as well. So with that said guys, this is the Andy San. Time for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to my April 2018 update video, part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube -y stuff. So let's just get right into it, huh? <laughs> so as you guys know, I've been really busy since moving back to Ohio, uh, working on freelance projects uh, for TKO Sam, uh, Eric Surf 6, as well as Ramen Adventures. Really busy getting some good stuff out uh, to you guys for, uh, for those channels. And uh, I've also been working really hard on uh, some short film projects as well. So I just finished the, uh, the full trailer for an upcoming short film that we're gonna be pitching to studios and stuff like that called Music and Love. And uh, I'm hoping to get the writer, director, producer, cameraman, um, voiceover, all those people together for a video and we're going to premiere the trailer on this channel as well. Aside from all that, um, I really wanted to make this video to talk to you guys about something that's, uh, that's really been bothering me for a while now. And that is um, my lack of, you know, real andy San videos. Um, aside from the updates and stuff like that. Um, I know since getting out in 2015 from uh, the US Navy, uh, my day-to-day -day life really hasn't been all that interesting. Um, you know, I can't really make the videos that I used to make back in the day where I'd visit a new part of Japan or, you know, some, you know, go to a restaurant in San Diego or something like that. There's not really a whole lot of that type of video to be made out here in Midwestern America. I mean, there's some places, but not really enough to make like a whole series out of it on a consistent basis. And you know, because I'm also looking for work, I don't really have the budget to go out there and visit those places either. So I've just been doing a lot of thinking as far as uh, what type of content I would love to make for this channel. And uh, like, I don't mind doing the uh, the update vlogs, let you guys know how I'm, how I'm feeling, how I'm doing, what I'm working on, stuff like that. I don't mind doing that. But uh, when that's like my only content on this channel, that's when it starts to bother me a little bit. Cause you know, I wanna, you know, I love making videos. I mean, obviously I do freelance video editing, so I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it, you know? I also wanna make videos for this channel as well, but you know, my time is very, uh, it's much more limited now than it used to be and granted I have more time to work on projects but 
you know, I'm mostly putting that into these uh, freelance projects as well as, you know, working on short films and stuff. Um, gonna be getting pretty into that as well, but I enjoy making YouTube videos for myself as well and interacting with you guys. And, you know, I've been seeing a lot of, a lot of growth on this channel as well over the past couple weeks, couple months, you know, thanks in part to shout outs from the people that I've worked with as well as some viral videos, spillover success. And, you know, I'm happy to say that uh, at times recording, we have well passed 2K subscribers. So I definitely want to thank you guys for subscribing to my humble little channel. I really want to make some more stuff for you guys. You know, I don't want you to just subscribe to the channel and this is all it is. You know, I wanna make something with some meat on it, you know? Um, so I've, I've got some ideas for uh, videos, um, mostly just from like my most popular continuous series. And I wanna ask you guys like what you would like to see more of. So obviously, you know, daily uploading and stuff, that's not you know, really feasible for me. Um, I feel more comfortable doing either like a weekly or like a twice a week sort of uh, schedule for my videos. Um, maybe like max it out at three times a week. Um, but I don't know if we'll be able to get to that just yet. Um, but I definitely wanna do like at least a video a week, twice preferably. Some videos that I wanna work on, obviously, you know, getting back to uh, the like editing tutorials. Um, I've got some ideas for some new things on showing you guys how to do stuff in Premiere Pro as well as uh, Adobe Audition, you know, editing audio for video, things like that. Um, also doing some stuff like buying your first camera, what you should look for with buying audio equipment and, you know, stuff like that. And I also want to uh, do some more um, Andy Talks Navy episodes as well, you know, talking about uh, my time in the service, you know, what I think of certain things now that I've been out of it for going on three years now. I also want to collaborate with uh, some fellow military vloggers um, just to kind of get a different perspective on things. Um, really enjoy doing that. Um, I also enjoy, um, you know, talking about Japan. You know, it was a very important time in my life. And I want to make some videos about that as well. But, uh, you know, talking about Japan is kind of a you know, kind of a weird thing. I mean, I could talk about my experiences, I guess, but, uh, you know, I just don't really know, like, what about Japan I could really talk about, you know, that would make a continuous, regular series. I mean, I could make a couple one-offs here and there, but, uh, you know, we'll just <laughs> kind of go with the flow there. So yeah, guys, those are just a couple ideas that I have about uh, bringing certain series back. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, which series you'd be most interested in seeing me bring back. Um, it could even be something completely different, I don't know. <laughs> I'm open to suggestions and you know I want to make videos that you guys would like to see as well as videos that I like to make but you know like I said my time's kind of limited between freelancing stuff and looking for part-time jobs and you know eventually once I get that doing the part-time jobs so I don't have all the time in the world like I used to so I want to make sure that you know, the time I spend on making videos is well invested for you guys. Anyway, with that said, this is Andy San. Time for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And welcome to my May 2018 update video for, you guessed it, May 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So let's just get right into it, shall we? And the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the fact that, well, I've dusted off the old GoPro. So uh, <laughs> decided to break her out of retirement, get her charged up, dust it off, and here we are, just using it for funsies. And it's good to see uh, an old friend back in action once again. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is to do a follow-up on what I talked about in my previous update vlog. So for those who haven't watched or are just watching my channel for the first time, um, I'm a freelance video editor. I primarily work with three channels on YouTube. Uh, those are Eric Surf 6, Ramen Adventures, and TQ Sam. I've also done a little 
a couple one-off projects here and there for other channels as well. But those are the, uh, the three main channels that I work for. And in addition to that, I'm also starting up a production company here in Ohio. So we're just right now getting a lot of the paperwork and getting some clients lined up and stuff like that. So I've been a pretty, uh, pretty busy boy these past uh, couple months since moving back to Ohio. I haven't really had as much time to work on my own videos. So in the previous update vlog, I asked you guys what type of content you'd like to see from me moving forward. And I've talked with a couple of you guys and I've decided that uh, moving forward, it's best to focus more on the video production side. What that means is I'm gonna be doing some more video editing tutorials. I'm also gonna be doing like some videos talking about buying your first camera, what to look for, buying audio equipment, stuff like that. So I think it falls more in line with what I'm doing I guess technically professionally right now and it just makes sense so it's something that I really enjoy something I'm very passionate about working on and uh, I want to spread what I've learned online so if I can help some people out that are just getting started on YouTube or are looking to kind of up their game as far as that goes I want to help them out with that. So what does this mean for my other types of content? So as far as the Japan stuff goes, um, I haven't been in Japan since 2015. So, you know, I haven't really been making Japan content since then. So unless I make a trip out there or move back to Japan, it doesn't really make sense for me to talk about Japan unless it's talking about my time there because my time there is a little different from most other people that have gone out to Japan. Most of them either go out as exchange students or as regular Joe Blow English teachers or maybe tourists or something like that. Um, I was stationed out in Japan, so I have a much different perspective than uh, those people do. So if you guys are interested in hearing about that side of the house, um, I'd be more than happy to make a video about that, but that's not going to be the focus of my channel. And also, speaking of being stationed out in Japan, that also dovetails into the Navy videos. Now, a lot of you have subscribed to my channel because of my Navy content, and I'm very thankful for you guys for doing that. Um, I've been making Navy content for a long time, pretty much since... Uh, since I joined back in 2010, I've been making Navy related videos, whether it's NFAX or maybe just showing my different travels and places that I go uh, during my time in the military from 2010 to 2015 when I got out. Since getting out, um, I haven't really resonated as much with the Navy. And to be honest, I haven't really been keeping on the up and up with uh, what's been going on with the Navy currently. The only ways I've been able to, you know, keep current with Navy stuff is stuff I'd read on Navy Times or maybe if like JT Suits or somebody like that does a piece on some kind of big Navy news. I just haven't really been feeling as connected with the Navy for probably about a year or so really. And that's why I haven't really been making Navy videos as much as I used to. You know, it's just, it kind of is what it is. I don't mind making Navy videos, just like with the Japan stuff. You know, I wouldn't mind making little one-offs here and there, but it's not really going to be a main focus of my channel moving forward. Uh, it's just not something I'm really as into anymore. And plus, if people are looking for Navy videos because they're thinking about joining or whatever the case may be, then they would want the most current information, right? I haven't been in, in going on like three years now at the time of this recording. So I feel that I would be doing myself and those people watching a disservice by giving them old information. Now, if you guys want to hear me talk about my experience out there, you know, whether it's overseas or just in the military or on a destroyer, frigate, whatever, you know, I'd be more than happy to talk about it as far as talking about like boot camp stuff. I haven't been there in like the better half of a decade, so having me talk about my boot camp experience isn't really going to give you guys the most current information. Thankfully now, there are so many avenues of current information for people thinking about joining the military, whether it's through the military's own official channels on social media, as well as YouTube, or just other people who are active duty. Like I said, wrapping that little section up, um, I wouldn't mind making Navy-related videos every once in a while, 
But again, it's not gonna be a main focus of my channel moving forward. So if you've subscribed to my channel for that reason, I apologize. And I wanna thank you for sticking with me for this long. Now, how does this involve my personal vlogs? So the personal vlogs aren't going away. I still wanna do personal vlogs, whether it's these monthly update videos or just talking about major things going on in my life. Again, it's not gonna be a main focus of my channel anymore. So I'm gonna be focusing primarily on the video production side of the house. With the personal vlogs, um, I know some people suggested spinning those off to their own separate channel, but with the recent YouTube um, change in policy with the partnership program and stuff like that at the beginning of this year, 2018, it's not really a viable option for me to do something like that. But yeah, with the personal life vlogs, I still wanna do at least one uh, personal life vlog update every month just, just to let you guys know what's going on in my personal life for that month and what type of videos you can expect from my channel, stuff like that. If you come here just for those vlogs and are wondering like what the heck's going up with all these video editing tutorials, I apologize. So just wanted to uh, to clear the air on, uh, on all that stuff, let you guys know what's uh, gonna be going on moving forward with this channel. And honestly, man, like I'm really excited about it because I know for the longest time I've been trying to find my niche, my place, in YouTube and originally it was just vlogging about my life here in nowhere Ohio and then when I joined the military it was talking more about Navy stuff and then showing off different uh, places that I would visit or just showing off you know different places in like Chicago San Diego you know even Yokosuka Tokyo, stuff like that. And then all the different ports that we'd hit. Since coming back to the States and out of the military in 2015, it's been very hard for me to uh, just kind of find my place on YouTube. I used to, you know, travel and do all these fun things, but I don't really do that anymore. I just, I don't have the budget for it anymore. So I just felt lost on YouTube for the past couple years now. And I feel that with moving forward towards the video production spectrum of my content, since that's primarily what I do for a living and what I focused on, it just makes sense to uh, just go all in with it. So that's pretty much it for my updates for, uh, for this month. As always, feel free to subscribe to this channel, leave a comment, like, all the fun YouTube stuff. And with that said guys, this is the Andy San, sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to my June 2018 update video for, you guessed it, June 2018. Woo. So, yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube -y stuff. So, let's just jump right into it and talk about the elephant in the room, and that is why I haven't been posting as much as I used to on YouTube lately. It's something very positive. Um, if you guys are worried if there was something darker behind the scenes going on, it's actually very positive. So uh, the two main reasons I haven't been posting as much on YouTube lately is because uh, for one, I've been busy looking for some uh, IRL work and I've already got a part-time job all lined up for that to start next week. That's mostly just to help cover some bills as well as save up for some new gear because um, I love the equipment I have right now, but I definitely need to upgrade. It's not 2015 anymore, just saying. The second reason is that, uh, as I talked about in some of my previous videos, I'm starting up a production company here in Ohio with my folks. It's called Leading Line Productions and we do video business cards, um, we do real estate listings, events, things like that. So if you guys want to check out some of the stuff we've done so far, I'll leave a little link down below in the description as well as one pinned in the comments so you can check those videos out. Let me know what y'all think and uh, that will be updated as we put out some more stuff. So I'm um, also looking forward to making it its own YouTube channel in the future as well. So be on the lookout for that. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while now, you know, because with YouTube being what it is and all the recent controversy and things like that, it's getting harder and harder to not only just make a living off of YouTube, but really make any kind of money at all. And I realize it's not all about the money, but you know, you get older, you got bills to pay, you got other responsibilities, 
it gets harder and harder to dedicate time towards YouTube without something in return. So as of this recording, I'm gonna be sticking around with YouTube. It's just that, you know, my priorities are gonna be elsewhere. So I'm not gonna be able to post as much as I used to. And it just kinda of is what it is. But it is for the better. And it's for something that I think is gonna be really big in this area as well. So definitely looking forward to it. And as far as new videos for me, as far as what that'll be, um, as I've talked about, I'm shifting the main focus of this channel towards uh, video production type content. But that's not to say that vlogs and other stuff are gonna be going away. They're just not gonna be posted as frequently as my other stuff. I'm gonna try to do at least one monthly update vlog to let you guys know what's going on, what you can expect for this month as far as videos and stuff like that goes. And if anything, just to check in with you guys, let you know what's going on in my own personal life. So I figure, you know, one personal vlog a month ain't gonna hurt the channel, you know? <laughs> I'm working on some more tutorials. Um, I've already have like eight or 10 different ideas written down on the computer that I need to work on. Um, so I'm gonna be pushing those out, you know, throughout the next couple weeks, maybe even a couple months, actually. I'm gonna start basically doing batch recording and just have a whole like catalog of stuff that I can like slowly release. So I'm thinking of starting off, you know, releasing like maybe one tutorial a week. And then once I start getting more and more of a backlog to where I can feel comfortable releasing more a week, then I'll do that. But I think, you know, a good starting point would be just one a week and then we can go from there. So anyway, guys, that's about all I wanted to say in this update video. So with that said, this is Andy San, signing for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to my June 2018 update video, part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it. I was originally gonna wait until July to do this update video because I don't know if you guys noticed, kind of been killing it a bit lately with the videos, and that's mostly just finding some old stuff from the archives that I forgot to post, as well as a couple new vids as well. I was gonna wait, but uh, I don't wanna wait for two weeks to talk about this stuff. So anyway, before we really get into the nitty gritty, I just want to take some time to thank you guys for all the support. Uh, got a lot of new subscribers, a lot of uh, new views and stuff with some of my recent vids. And I wanna thank you guys for all that support. Uh, it really means a lot to me, especially because I don't really post stuff on a regular basis. I just, I don't really have the time or the energy to do daily good daily content. I just want to thank you guys for all the support, uh, especially when I was on break. I, I like to take breaks often just because sometimes I just kind of don't have the energy or really don't have anything to talk about on YouTube. So it's always good to kind of step away from it a little bit, step away from social media for a little bit, just to kind of get a little bit of a refresher, just kind of rest, recoup, and maybe work on some other things and then come back fresh. That's one of the good things about taking a little bit of a break from the YouTube social media rat race. And uh, also life kind of happened in my case as well. I don't know if I talked about this before, but I recently got a, a new part-time job. So I've been doing some training with that as well as working. It's just really nothing much, but uh, it's enough to kind of start paying some bills and have a little bit of spending cash, a little bit. <laughs> So, you know, and in addition to the new part-time job, I've also been working on uh, the production company that me and my folks started up called Leading Line Productions. And we're based in Ohio. We've already got a couple videos under our belts and we're talking with uh, some potential clients, getting some stuff set up. So definitely looking forward to what we're gonna be putting out in the, uh, the very near future. So very excited for that. And uh, <sighs> I guess we'll get into the, uh, the big news that I want to talk about. I'm a little nervous, but uh, also really excited as well. And that is, um, I want to go back to college. Um, I know that I've said in other videos that I'm kind of done with the whole college thing. It just felt like it really wasn't for me and I was struggling a little bit. But I think, um, especially with, with what's going on now, 
I think now is a pretty good time to uh, go back to college, take some classes, and kind of build myself up as far as being a better video editor. It also doesn't hurt to uh, to network a little bit, so I feel that I'm in much better place now than when I was up in Michigan by myself. Um, I felt, and I even told my folks this, I felt that the reason, one of the main reasons I failed up in Michigan was because I didn't have a, a local support network to help me out when I was not feeling like myself. And, you know, a lot of that's on me for not going out and making friends and, you know, or going to a school that's a bit closer to home or closer to other family members. So again, not blaming anybody else, but but me, it all comes down on me. Kind of is what it is, but uh, I've since learned from that mistake and I really do want to, uh, to get that paper. If anything, just to say, I got it, <laughs> you know, after all this time and all this trying and everything else that's gone on in my life, you know, I want to say at least I got the paper, right? So I'm going to be looking um, at some colleges that are in the nearby area in Ohio. I'm going to see if I can apply for the fall semester this year. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it, man. With what's going on in media production as of late, I definitely want to keep my skills sharp. Definitely want to hopefully learn some new tricks as well. And it's also good to just kind of be in an environment where you're around similar you know, like-minded creative people, um, a lot of younger people, so I'm kind of getting in on what some of the newer trends are, so that's that's always nice. And uh, I feel like I'm in a much better headspace to take on college. And, you know, being in my home state, I also have a lot more uh, veterans benefits as well. There was a time when I was up in Michigan that I was really hurting for money and was about to get evicted from one of my apartments. And uh, I reached out to get like an emergency loan to hopefully cover things until I got paid, uh, which was only like two weeks away. So, you know, I wasn't waiting too long, but still, because I was out of my home state, I couldn't apply for those, for those loans. So should something happen within Ohio, you know, I have those benefits to, you know, to use should, should have called for that, but you know, right now, at the time of this recording, we're living with my folks, so I don't think that's gonna happen to me, but should I decide to move out, the options are there, and that's that's nice to have. Like I said, man, really nervous about going back to college again. Like I said, you know, I've had my failures, I've had my ups and downs with getting out of the military. Like I said, one of the main reasons I failed was due to a lack of a local support network. Um, I have that here now with my folks. You know, a lot of the colleges that are nearby aren't really that far away. You know, the commute's about comparable to what I was doing even back in Kalamazoo, maybe just a, a tea tad further, but nothing too unmanageable. So, you know, I just, I feel like I'm in a much better headspace to to take on college. And uh, I really wanna, really wanna make it right this time. But yeah, uh, once again, before I close out this video, I just want to thank you guys for uh, for all the support um, that you've been giving me as of late. Uh, it really does mean a lot, and uh, we're close to uh, finishing up the road to 3K subscribers. I can't believe it. This is this is crazy. I just want to say uh, once again, I'm very very thankful for you guys' this support. Very humble. And uh, that said, guys, this is the Andy Son signing for now, and as always. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to my July 2018 update video for, you guessed it, July 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the fact that we've hit over 3,000 subscribers on YouTube and I'm super excited. It's just, you know, it's such a big milestone for me because we've effectively doubled the amount of subscribers that I had from my old channel. And one of my big fe fears in moving to this channel, as I talked about in a previous subscriber milestone, was am I gonna lose some people along the way? Am I gonna be able to build up an audience, you know, making videos and stuff? There was a lot of fears because I had amassed that over 1,500 subscribers through years 
of making videos, a lot of trial and error, learning along the way. And it took me a long time just to get 1,500 subscribers. And I was extremely worried that it would take me about that long to get to where I used to be. But, you know, in, in just two and a half years or so, we've effectively doubled that amount with this channel and I couldn't be more happier about that. And we're still, still on the road to 5K and the road to 10K as well. Those are gonna be some big subscriber milestones, I feel. The rate we're going, man, you know, we're gonna get there sooner rather than later. And I couldn't be happier. And that's why I'm, you know, uploading more and more videos to give you guys more stuff to watch. And speaking of which, I know some of you might be wondering about some of the recent uploads that I've been putting up there. You know, might be wondering why I posted some re-uploads of older videos. And without getting too technical, but when I was in the process of moving my videos over to this channel, some of those got demonetized for no reason. The best conclusion that I could come up with was the fact that I had mass uploaded so many videos, they thought I was like spamming my channel. So I decided to basically re-upload those old videos as long as there wasn't anything else wrong with them. You know, I don't really see why I can't make a little bit of mun from some of my old videos, you know? Still on the grind, still doing my thing with freelance editing, uh, still doing my thing working for my production company here in Ohio. Um, still making my own videos as well. Um, I ha have uh, three tutorials that I worked on. Uh, those are gonna be coming out as soon as I'm done with the re-uploads, so in another couple weeks or so. And I'm gonna be working on some more of those as well. Anyway, let's move on to some, uh, some personal stuff that's been going on in my life. I've been doing a lot of thinking and soul searching as far as where I see myself in the next couple of years. And, you know, I had a pretty serious talk about it with my mom yesterday and it's really helped um, kind of clear up some things and just make me feel, if anything, it made me feel like I wasn't alone in this thought process because I kind of thought I was just going crazy and I'm being too impatient and I'm wanting more in less time. Uh, but really it's something that a lot of people my age go through and those who don't know, I'm 32 years old, so I know, right? I was talking to my mom about it and she went through something in, in her 30s as well. It's similar to what I'm going through and it's just, you know, kind of taking some time to pause and reflect on my life and just kind of basically ask myself the question like, what am I doing? Um, there's a lot of good things that are going on in my life right now. You know, especially with, uh, you know, YouTube, freelance video editing, doing videos for my company as well. Uh, but I just feel like I can be doing more. You know, I, I feel like there's, there's more for me to do and I need to be a bit more ambitious and not patiently plunk away at stuff. You know, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm not getting any younger, basically. So I want to pursue something a bit more actively. I guess is the best way I can describe it. You know, so I'm looking for a new big challenge to work on while I'm still fairly young. You know, before I turn 40, I want to do something kind of crazy and outrageous and, you know, something that a lot of people say, oh, you'll never make it, you'll never do the thing. But I still want to do it anyway, you know, and I'm still going over different um, options. You know, a lot of people, because I lived in Japan, they say, well, just move back to Tokyo. You know, moving back to Japan is definitely something I want to do eventually, but I feel like it's just not the right time right now. And especially my main holdup is with immigration uh, because I don't have a college degree. I, I can't get a work visa out there. So if I were to visit Japan, it would only be for like a tourist visa or for something very short term, which, you know, for getting nice videos and stuff, I'm totally down for. And whenever I see some of my old Andy Japandi stuff, I'm like, fuck, I can do this so much better now. Aside from little short term visits, um, long term, I don't know if I'm able to stay out in Japan. So um, there's definitely other places just within America that I wanna see. Wouldn't mind moving back to California, even though housing and stuff is like mad expensive. It's where all the, the work in the entertainment industry is. You know, aside from New York, but I don't really like you know, snowy winters. 
it's actually a little less expensive to live out in LA than it is New York. You know, I think moving to a big city is uh, definitely an idea that I want to pursue while I'm still young and I don't have attachments, you know, I don't have a wife, I don't have kids, or anything like that kind of, you know, preventing me from just going out and doing the thing. And, you know, I really want to make a go at this, you know, with the whole YouTube thing and with not just with YouTube, but also with making videos as well. This area isn't as conducive to what I want to do as, you know, moving out west would be. And I know that it's kind of a, a, a long shot sort of thing, you know, like you have no money, you have no connections. You know, you only have 3,000 subscribers, which I'm very thankful for. <laughs> you know, don't get me wrong. Very thankful for you guys. I know there's a lot against me in moving to LA in the next couple of years. It's definitely gonna be something that I wanna pursue. If I, if I really wanna get serious with this whole video making thing, whether it's doing stuff for YouTube or for other people, you know, I got the skills, so, you know, I'm okay with either. But I definitely do want to make a make a good go of it before you know I'm too old and have too many attachments to really go anywhere. <laughs> so that's just been something I've really been thinking about for the past couple weeks now, and you know see where it goes. But uh, that's all I got to say for now because I got to get ready for work here soon. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son signing for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to my August 2018 update video for, you guessed it, August 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it. And I know it's a little early for an August update, but I'm just out here at McDonald's enjoying some iced coffee, no ice. Pretty sweet deal, if you ask me. Get a large coffee for a dollar. It's pretty dope. Um, get it while supplies last, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, but in any event, uh, let's just get right into the updates that I have for you guys. And first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, YouTube updates. Um, as you know, I put together some tutorial videos. I've been kind of busy for this past week, working on some stuff, which we'll get into in a little bit. Yeah, the tutorials are already uploaded to my channel. I just got to work on the thumbnails for them and then once the thumbnails are done, we're gonna start uh, putting them out slowly but surely, so stay tuned for that. As far as um, personal life updates, work updates, things like that goes, we got some pretty good news on that front. Um, first things first, uh, I have a new client. Um, he's raindrops detailing out in Pennsylvania. Really excited to be working for, for them putting together some good videos and whatnot. You now working with them has brought me one step closer to realizing my dream of doing freelance video editing uh, full time. The rate I'm going, it's gonna be more reality than dream very soon. I've also been really busy this past weekend working on my photography portfolio because a job offer has come up in the area and I realized, you know, after taking all these pictures for all these years, I haven't actually put together a photography portfolio. So I'm just like, well shit, what do I do? So I'm combing through like a whole bunch of like really old photos and uh, I found on my hard drive a lot of like really old photos and like some raw files and stuff like that. Pictures I never put up on the internet and whatnot. So it was a lot of fun, you know, going through, getting the uh, the old Natsukashi, as the Japanese may say, feeling very nostalgic for times since past. In picking out a lot of those old images, it really um, showed me that um, I've really improved as a photographer, videographer, whatever label you want to use to describe me. Um, as far as like composition goes, uh, lighting, just getting the right colors and stuff like that in for the pictures because uh, a lot of those, especially those really early pictures, were done with uh, cell phones and even back then the quality was, you know, average at best. But looking back on it now, you know, some of them are like, <laughs> Most of them aren't even in focus, the shutter speed's all off and it's just like, Jesus, I was so terrible back in the day. You know, one of my big hang-ups uh, when I came back to the States was I felt like 
I, in a lot of ways, I was regressing as far as my own personal growth and my development as a photographer, videographer. But in reality, looking back on it now, it's been the best thing for me. I have significantly improved, um, not only just doing my own thing, but uh, editing for other people as well, you know, making their stuff look really good and, you know, telling their story. It's been a lot of fun uh, to put yourself in another person's shoes, telling the best story possible with what you're given. And uh, it's allowed me to really flex my creative muscles. Urgh. <laughs> Can't tell because I'm wearing the hoodie, but you know. Creative muscles are swole as fuck right now. I know that on uh, on my own YouTube channel, the content's been kind of sparse as of late, but uh, some short-term sacrifices for uh, long-term gains. That's all I gotta say about that. I'm gonna find ways to properly uh, schedule out, you know, my own video making time, client work, uh, working on portfolios, uh, things like that, you know, pitching to new prospective clients. Um, I think it all just comes down to time management, and I think that's going to be my next thing that I'm working on, especially as I'm getting more and more work from newer clients. Um, I'm going to have to be a little bit more savvy with my time. In that regards, I might have to make some sacrifices in some areas so I can make gains in others. If you're looking for some new vids from the old and San Sam Adesta, um, you don't have to look very far. I have on my YouTube channel a playlist of all the videos that I've put together. And in addition to videos for other YouTubers, I've also put up uh, some videos for my production company here in Ohio called Leading Line Productions. And that playlist is going to be ongoing, so as the videos I put together you know, go live on YouTube, I'm going to be uh, adding to that playlist as well. So be sure to, to check it out, see the work that I've done, and if you're interested, you know, give your boy a call. <laughs> or a message, whatever. I'm not a hard man to find. <laughs> just look up the Andy Son, you'll pretty much find me on any platform. But in any event, guys, um, I'm just really thankful to be living this life that I'm living. I'm not always in the best of moods, you know. Sometimes I'm pretty down on myself, and I just gotta remind myself that I'm only down on myself because I have higher expectations for myself. With that said, guys, I'm gonna get going. I gotta finish off this, uh, this iced coffee here. It's getting warm. <laughs> Especially with no ice. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Time for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And today I'm going to be doing a response video to Jade, who just recently passed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I got my dog Sugar here because she won't leave me alone to uh, record the video, so I decided. I'll just do it on my cell phone, so that's why I'm rocking the MySpace angles so my neck boop don't stick out too much, you know, like... <laughs> so anyway, um, today, like I said, it's going to be... Uh, we're going to be doing a response video to Jade, who just passed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And uh, for those who don't know who she is, um, she is a 17-year-old entrepreneur. She does brand consulting for Instagram and YouTube. And she has a whole bunch of great videos on that, so definitely I want you guys to check her out. Uh, obviously, link to her channel and all that kind of stuff is going to be in the description. I'm going to pin something in the comments, too. Man, sugar, you really shouldn't, dude. <laughs> Maybe that's why she don't want to leave me alone. Anyway, um, uh, what you think about? What you doing, pup? There she is. <laughs> she just wants to play. But anyway, um... <laughs> In Jade's uh, 100,000 subscriber milestone video, she asked her subscribers to do a uh, video response to it, Ask, answering the question, um, aside from followers, why do you do YouTube? So I thought I'd do that today, or at least try to. Sugar wants to keep playing around. <laughs> In any event, um, just a little bit of context on me, if you guys haven't watched my stuff before. Um, I've been doing YouTube since 2006. I've been on the platform since 2006, but I've been making content on a regular basis since around 2008. We're celebrating 10 years of actually making stuff uh, next month when I uh, bought my uh, first camera. Because <laughs> back in the, uh, the mid-2000s when YouTube first started up, 
Um, didn't have cameras on cell phones like you do today, like the one I'm recording on right now. Um, you had to go out and get your own camera and make stuff, you know? And even the cameras that were on cell phones, uh, usually the cell phones were really expensive, out, way outside of my price range, and the quality on them wasn't really all that good to begin with. So, kind of had to make do with what you had, so it actually made more sense to just buy a dedicated camera. A lot, a lot less expensive, too. So, in any event, um, when I first started off doing YouTube, um, I did it to connect with people. Um, I noticed um, for a lot of uh, people that I'd watch on YouTube, I felt like a real connection with them. So some of the first people that I watched, um, obviously a lot of the OG YouTubers, you know, you had your, your Charles Trippies, your Shea Carls, um, Jenna Marbles, Lisa Nova, uh, Philip DeFranco back when he was known as SXE Phil. Um, but for me specifically, I also liked the uh, burgeoning Japan vlogger scene, also known as J-vlogging scene, uh, back in the early days. So I'd watch guys like Tokyo Kuni, uh, the late Roger Swan, uh, Hiko Simon, bring in Kurt Bell, also known as Softy Papa, um, just too many more to list. Um, and the numbers keep, keep growing every day, so really excited about that. Um, but, you know, just watching their videos, they usually upload about weekly, which is, you know, kind of the schedule back then. Um, I, I felt like a real connection to them as people, and it really got me inspired to make my own videos, because originally I wanted to make videos like them, you know, go out to Japan and make my own J-Vlogs, but uh, I didn't have the money to, uh, to go out to Japan or anything like that, so... Um, I remember either getting a message or a comment, I think it was a message from uh, Kurt Bell, Softy Papa, saying, you know, why don't you just show people around your hometown? You know, I've, I've never been to Ohio before, so, you know, what you may think is completely mundane may be totally interesting to somebody else who's never been there before. So I was thinking, all right, let's, uh, let's try it out. So I, you know, filmed some local landmarks and stuff in my hometown and in surrounding areas and I uh, really liked it really enjoyed it and then uh, you know around the late 2000s early 2010s uh, the American recession happened and I wasn't able to get work doing anything I couldn't even get a job at McDonald's it was that bad uh, so push came to shove and I eventually decided to join the US Navy um, as a sonar technician aboard surface ships, so STG for those in the know was my rate. Uh, so I did that from 2010 to 2015. I uh, was stationed mostly in San Diego for about three years, um, going to school as well as uh, being stationed on board USS Kurtz FFG 38, which is uh, no longer active anymore. I was on the decommissioning crew, so that was pretty cool. Um, and then from there, I went out to USS Lassen DDG 82, which at the time was stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan, which is about uh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours south of Tokyo, and about an hour, maybe 45 minutes south of Yokohama as well, just to give you guys a little bit of context of the area that I was in. I got out in a less than ideal manner. Uh, back then, you could get discharged for uh, not fulfilling uh, weight requ requirements in the military. Uh, they since changed that to where you still stay in, but you just get like a really bad evaluation for it. But back then, you you know they could discharge you for it, so that's what they did with me. Uh, still got out honorably though, still considered an honorable discharge. So kind of was what it was, but uh, you know I was kind of glad because I was in kind of a bad mental state at that point. That's why I gained so much weight. You know, I just felt very depressed and would drink a lot and just eat a lot of bad food that wasn't good for me. And I just felt completely hopeless in my situation. So, that's what I, it is what it is. What happened is what happened. Um, I'm not, you know, angry about it at all. In fact, I see it more as a good thing, but um, in any event, after 2015, when I got out, uh, I decided to go back to college, beginning of 2016. Um, had a little bit of a rough start, um, especially since I hadn't been to college at that point in almost a decade. Um, didn't have that student mindset. And plus, um, 
I had a lot of emotional baggage to unpack after I got out of the military. Because, you know, when you're in the military, especially being stationed overseas, um, you don't really have time to, you know, work on what's in here. You know, you're just kind of in the here and now, you know. You don't really have enough time to focus on yourself, I feel. Um, so when I got out and was in college, I had more than enough free time to focus on this stuff. And I realized, you know what? I'm not a very happy person. And there was reasons why I was let go from the military, aside from just being fat. And it was really hard for me to deal with all that. And, you know, I started developing anxiety and go, going through depressive episodes and, you know, periods where I wouldn't even leave my apartment. I would just be so scared to even leave my apartment to go to school or do anything. And it was really rough on me. And my grades suffered because of it. Um, but during that time, I also uh, picked up uh, doing some freelance video editing gigs. Um, my friend Sam, you may know him as TKO Sam online, um, his hard drive had crashed and he was needing somebody to help him out with his videos because at that point he was just start starting his YouTube channel back up again and he was doing daily content. So his hard drive crashing meant that he couldn't you know, make videos on a regular basis anymore. Um, until he got it fixed. So I offered to um, just edit his videos for him while he was uh, waiting on a new hard drive and getting that all set up. And he liked that, he liked how I put together stuff and how it gave him a bunch of extra free time to, to do other things. So he decided to take me on as his dedicated editor. And from there I got referrals from his other friends and uh, you know, I've been doing freelance video editing, you know, pretty much ever since. And I've been really enjoying um, helping others, you know, see through to their vision, you know, whatever it is on YouTube. You know, I help clients like uh, like Eric Surf 6, for instance. Um, he has over 600,000 subscribers at this point, I believe. And, you know, I help him with his Eric Mealtime videos. And then uh, I also help out uh, my friend Brian from Ramen Adventures with his uh, traveling ramen videos and stuff. And, you know, each client, you know, I feel like I bring something new to each client. And, you know, I want them to find their own style and, you know, help in bringing their vision of what they want to do on YouTube into a reality. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy, you know, editing videos for others, honestly, a bit more than doing my own stuff and plus since I'm not out and about traveling or doing stuff out in the real world as much as I used to back when I was in the Navy you know I figure this is kind of a way for me to you know scratch that YouTube itch without you know making my own videos and worrying about you know oh is my chin sticking out nah. or just superficial stuff like that so I've really been enjoying doing it and I want to make it uh, my full-time job and be able to, uh, you know, comfortably live off of it. You know, I'm not looking to, you know, make it big and make millions and stuff like that. I mean, that'd be awesome if it happened, but, you know, I just want to be able to do it full time and, you know, afford to exist, you know? So um, that's, that's kind of my goal, and I'm, you know, getting closer and closer to it every day, you know, with the more videos that I edit and the more referrals I get and stuff like that, so... I uh, feel like I'm going to get there very soon. So, in any event, I think I've, you know, rambled and raved long enough. And Sugar's getting all kinds of antsy as I'm, at, as I'm putting this, trying to, you know, do this little video. She's getting all kinds of antsy. She's like, Andy, play with me. Play with me. Play with me, Andy. <laughs> so, better end things here. So, yeah, that said, this is the Andy song. Time for now. Oh, and this is Sugar. We're, uh, she just turned a year old a couple days ago. Anyway, we're signing off for now. Uh, thank you to you guys for tuning in to this kind of rambly, uh, <laughs> I guess, video response to Jade, who just uh, got over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So congrats, Jade. Um, we live out here in uh, Wapak, Ohio, just for some point of reference. It's the hometown of Neil Armstrong, first man on the moon, 
Um, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, man, uh, thank you guys for watching. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Say bye, sugar. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. Tell Jade bye. Say bye. Bye. Okay. Hey guys, Andy here, and today we're gonna do something a little different here on the YouTubes. So, um, I've been doing a lot of thinking about where I want to take this channel moving forward, and I want to get you guys' feedback on some things. So, just for a little context, if this is your first video of, of mine that you're watching, uh, my name's Andy. I've been on the YouTube platform since 2006, and I've been making content on a regular basis since 2008 and we're actually gonna be celebrating 10 years of making videos consistently next month. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. I was active duty Navy, so I was in the United States military from 2010 to 2015 when I got out. I went back to school and then came back home where I'm at now in Ohio to uh, start up some business ventures and you know things like that. But uh, in any event, I'm doing a lot of thinking about what I want to do with this YouTube channel moving forward. Um, I felt like since I got out of the, of the Navy in 2015, I felt very lost as far as what I want to do here on YouTube. Because I felt like my main thing was uh, doing travel videos. Um, I really loved doing travel videos, you know, going to the different ports out in Southeast Asia, doing stuff out in Japan as well, you know, going out to Tokyo, Yokohama, and even just little local spots in my neighborhood in Yokosuka, Japan. Loved making those videos. They're a little bit dated now, just based on how much I know um, video maker wise compared to then. But it's still nice to look back on those moments and just remember being at that spot or eating that food or meeting that person. Um, it's always nice to look back on those. And that's one of the reasons why um, I started doing videos on a regular basis was to document myself and to give myself some some place to uh, to air out my feelings and to tell you guys what I'm going through in this moment in time and to ha to be able to look back on it uh, years from now for better or worse. <laughs> uh, so you know. Being a long-term creator like myself, um, it's always fun to look back at some of my old videos and just kind of see where I was at at that time, um, what I was doing, what I looked like. <laughs> Those are the little things that I like and it's all about documenting the process and establishing uh, some sort of legacy as uh, Gary Vaynerchuk would say. But since I got out of the Navy in 2015, I felt uh, very lost as far as what I should do with this channel. So I've been trying a bunch of different things here and there, doing like vlogs, basically giving guys uh, monthly, sometimes more than monthly updates on what's going on in my life, you know, and videos to expect, things like that. And I've also been experimenting with a different series as well, like uh, my Andy Talks Navy series, which is the newest incarnation of my formerly known series, NFAX, as well as Life After Navy. Um, it's just kind of a, uh, a freeform, non-episodic series. And I started doing that series when uh, I got in touch with uh, my boy JT Suits. What a fam. Um, I started finding his videos when I was transitioning out of the military and looking for some advice on what to expect when uh, getting out of the military. And I found some of his videos uh, we connected and uh, he gave me the inspiration to start doing military videos all over again. But at the same time, I was also getting more involved with doing video editing. Now, originally I got into doing video editing for other people, uh, just helping out my uh, my friend Sam, you might know him online as Tikio Sam. A while back, I think this was back in 2016-ish, somewhere around there, one of his hard drives had failed. so he was unable to edit videos and he was just rebuilding his channel at that point so he wanted to keep that daily streak alive and so I offered to edit some videos for him until he got his hard drive fixed and he really liked how I put together his videos and the fact that you know it gave him more free time to do other things whether it's shoot more videos or set up stuff or whatever uh, just gave him a lot more free time so I started doing more videos for him 
And then from there, he referred me to um, other guys like Eric Surf6 and Brian from Ramen Ventures. And then I also started branching out and asking people uh, if they needed some video editing work and I did a couple onesie twosie videos for some others as well. What originally started as just kind of a fun little side hustle is really starting to become more and I want to build on that. And so in doing that, I felt like I should do more uh, video editing tutorials on my YouTube channel because those have been, uh, according to my analytics anyway, those have been my most popular videos on the platform. And uh, you guys really seem to get a lot of value out of those, so I wanna do more. Um, but I do wanna open up the floor to you guys. I wanna ask you, what do you guys wanna see from me moving forward? Do you wanna see more vlogs, more Andy Talks Navy, more tutorials, or maybe something else I didn't mention? So sure to leave me a little something something in the comments down below in the booby de boops. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. It's that for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome to my September 2018 update video for, you guessed it, September 2018. Ooh. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the very slight change in scenery. Um, I usually, when I do these monthly update videos, I'm sitting here at the corner of my bed because you got the painting up there, you got my closet door. Usually I take those towels down so you're not looking at them all the time. I got my fan over there, keeping things cool and stuff like that. But as you can see, this spot isn't very friendly to uh, the old spectacles. So uh, that's why I usually take them off. So I decided to do something a little different this month because um, that's gonna be the theme of this video actually, is uh, changing things up, doing something different. And uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking as it involves my YouTube channel and just seeing the progression of it over the years and even just recently this year. Um, definitely gotta thank you guys for all of the support to this channel. We have well over 4,000 subscribers right now, which is just mind blowing to me. <laughs> and uh, I wanna thank you guys for all the support, especially considering how inconsistent I've been and not only uploading stuff, but just like what I upload. And I'm looking to, to fix that moving forward with my channel. And that's where we come to the big announcements of what I'm gonna be doing with uh, my YouTube channel moving forward. And so I've decided that starting this month, September of 2018, I'm gonna be moving all of my older videos as well as videos that just aren't relevant to me anymore to an archive channel. And that's gonna be the Andy Sun Archive. Um, if you'd like, go ahead and subscribe to that channel. Um, it's up in my sidebar on my main channel page. And I'm also gonna have a uh, link in the description. I'm also gonna pin something in the comments as well. And uh, the idea behind that is that I like my old videos. I'm very proud of, you know, the huge archive of videos that I've made over the years. But the fact of the matter is, you know, people change over the years and people's interests and tastes and stuff change. And, you know, it's one thing to look back at the past, but it's another thing to live there. And I feel that, you know, the past should stay the past, you know? And since I got out of the military in 2015, I've been feeling very adrift, very lost in what I want to do on YouTube. And I've definitely been feeling very good about uh, doing video editing for other channels. Um, that's been giving me a lot of personal satisfaction. But I've also felt like I've lost the plot as far as what my own channel should be about and what I should do with my own channel moving forward. And I've decided to move my old content as well as stuff that just isn't really relevant to me anymore to the archive channel so that way you guys can still watch it and um, 
look through it, be like, you know, oh, that's where Andy was back in 2012 or, you know, 2015 or something like that. And, uh, you know, you can see the progression that I had, you know, in making, like, my very first videos back in 2006, which really were, like, compilations from my friends uh, doing karate and stuff like that. You know, I'd get the, uh, the video from, like, a video CD. I don't know if those are even a thing anymore, but uh, we wanted to just see, like, a couple little clips, little highlights and stuff. You know, like my one friend, Ben, kicking this dude in the face. Or like, you know, my friend Cody just like one punching this dude and just knocking him out. Um, but we didn't want to have to leaf through the entire video to do it. So I just went and cut up that little clip and put it up on YouTube, which was really new at the time. YouTube was released, I guess officially released back in November 2005. But um, I didn't start making stuff until you know, 2006, but even then that was very inconsistent, you know, just put up videos every once in a while. It wasn't until, well, actually, September 2nd, 2008, when I made my very first video using my own camera, because uh, before I was using my friend's camera to do stuff, and uh, decided to get my own camera. The very first camera was Sanyo Zacti CG6. Uh, it was used off of eBay with a strip tripod mount, so I couldn't, you know, screw it onto a tripod to hold it up steady. So I had to find uh, creative solutions to keep the camera upright. And it was one of those pistol grip type cameras that were very popular back in the day. So you couldn't just like set it up like you could like a traditional camcorder or whatever. So I'd usually just like hook it into cups and things like that, keep it upright. And uh, from there, man, went all the way around the world, vlogging my experiences in the United States Navy from 2010, 2015, got out, you know, had some rough periods here and there. Uh, but I've been documenting my whole life since uh, 2008 on a fairly consistent basis. And it's been a hell of a journey so far. Um, I always use, you know, March 1st, 2006 as like my first, you know, YouTube milestone because that's when I signed up for my first account. Um, but I didn't start making stuff until September 2nd, 2008, at least consistently making stuff. So that's where it really started for me, you know, as, as a creator more than just, you know, a passive fan just watching stuff. And so, you know, this this move with the Andy Son Archive, very important to me, you know, because it helps establish it helps establish my legacy on the platform, but it also allows me to to do more and not be weighed down by the stuff that I used to do and places I used to go on YouTube. So you know, you gotta shed some skin to uh, to continue in your pursuit of growth. And you know, another part of that, you know, in the pursuit of growth, is uh, I'm gonna be moving all of my military content over to my Andy Talks Navy YouTube channel as well. Now, I've done this before with uh, with limited success, and then with the, uh, the recent changes to the YouTube uh, partnership program, I decided to move everything back to my original channel. But, you know, I know this makes me sound really wishy-washy, flippy-floppy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I feel very confident in moving forward with, with these changes. You know, moving all my Navy stuff to a Navy channel, my old archive stuff to an archive channel, and then just keeping it fresh on this channel with stuff that's relevant to my current interests, you know, putting up new videos, and then, you know, slowly cycling them into the archive as, you know, I get more stuff. So that way, you don't have to wade through like literally thousands of videos of mine just to see any of the good stuff. And also, you know, I'm not being overshadowed by my older videos as well. So that's, 
you know, the main point of why I'm moving a lot of my videos is, you know, so that way I can continue to grow and continue to make stuff that's, that's relevant to me now and still respect the past and still respect what I've done before, but, you know, put it in its own separate category. If that makes any sense. You know, for the, as far as the main channel here goes, um, first stuff you can expect, obviously, video editing is going to be a huge one. Um, I have a whole bunch of ideas for different types of content that I'm experimenting with. And with moving a lot of my older content to the archive channel, it's going to give me more room to to grow and to experiment, to try new things. You know, maybe a podcast, maybe doing like those story time animation stuff. You know, those are some ideas I've been throwing around just to see if uh, if I'd be any good at them and stuff like that. Because I'm always about trying something new and I think that's what's kept me on YouTube for this amount of time is just trying something new and it doesn't have to be something drastically new it could be something as simple as adding transitions you know tweaking the audio a little bit or even just slightly moving where you normally sit for these update videos you know just trying something even if it's just a slight change just always always changing but from the youtube stuff delving more into the personal life stuff um you know i just i haven't really been feeling all that well uh, mentally and i think that's just because of the frustrations i had for my youtube channel you know it's kind of hard to to go out there and like blame other people for why I'm why I'm miserable because really it's it all comes down to me you know my own happiness is predicated upon me you know <laughs> nobody else is responsible for my own happiness so I think overall like the person I'm the most mad at for all this is, is me and that's that's hard to deal with man because uh, you know if, if I was able to just blame it on other people, you know, I can just offload all those problems onto them. But, you know, really, they're <laughs> they're not the root cause of me being unhappy. And even, you know, if I did blame them for all my problems, it would just be a temporary fix because then, you know, I would get another problem that's completely irrelevant to what they what they're doing. And, you know, how am I going to blame them then, right? <laughs> I would just be delusional if I did that. So, you know, I just, I just got to work on myself. And I've just been feeling like I just need to escape. I just need to go somewhere, figure my shit out. Because, you know, you can't run away from yourself. But you just need to, you know, center meditate, exercise, I don't know. Um, so I'm hoping that these these changes with YouTube as well as other life changes um, work out for the best. But in any event, guys, that's all I got to say for, uh, for this update video. I know it's kind of on the long side when it comes to these. I've been trying to keep them under 10 minutes and maybe with a little bit of fancy editing I might be able to, but I doubt it. So uh, apologies for the long length and kind of the rambliness of it all. Um, I've just been feeling very, very nervous, but also excited about rolling out these changes to my YouTube channel. Cause I honestly feel like it's uh, it's been a long time coming. And it's been something that's been weighing on me for a while. Um, as any of my Facebook friends can attest to, just all the different rants and stuff that have gone on about what I should do for my YouTube channel. So, hoping that these channel, these changes help out. And in any event, guys, that said, this is Andy Son. Uh, for now, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Well, time to do another update video.
Well, fu- all right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to my September 2018 update video, part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the fact that, well, these update videos are on a new channel. So uh, the biggest news as far as YouTube -y stuff goes for this month is the fact that I've decided to branch out to separate channels to give you guys different uh, streams of content. So um, as I told you guys in the uh, original September 2018 update video, I've decided to move all of my Navy content over to my Andy Talks Navy channel. And I've also decided to move my whole archive of content onto this channel that you're watching me on right now. But I've decided to change this channel from strictly an archive channel to it also being the location of all my personal life updates, vlogs, travel videos, and just things like that. So if you guys are looking for the personal life vlogs and stuff like that, you've come to the right place. <laughs> so this is gonna be the new location for those videos now uh, moving forward. And then what was, you know, basically is still my main channel. It has been turned into strictly um, my channel focusing on video editing tutorials, as well as other aspects of the creative industry. So uh, I've changed it from just the Andy San to edited by the Andy San and it has my little logo and stuff like that. And I'm also gonna be changing banners and avatars and all that kind of stuff up very soon. Uh, it's just gonna take me some time because I really want to make these channel changes right and put on a, a fresh coat of paint as it were, because they've been sorely needing it, to be uh, perfectly frank with you guys. But uh, I'm not especially good as a graphic designer. I mean, I'm okay. I know my way around Photoshop a little bit, but uh, it's not my specialty. So I prefer making videos as opposed to making pictures. But I'm pretty decent at making pictures. If you follow me on Instagram.com slash the Amazon, humble plug. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I definitely do want to make a good go of this as far as uh, making YouTube videos again. And I felt for the longest time that having all my content on a single channel was really hurting my numbers, really splitting my audience. Because uh, there's some of you that watch me strictly for the Navy stuff. Some of you watch me for personal life updates, travel videos, all that stuff. And then some of you watch me just for my editing tutorials. And I found that, you know, trying to market myself to, you know, one of those niches tends to turn people off to the other stuff that I have to offer. And that's okay. I'm not blaming you guys. This is uh, it's all on me. <laughs> I've been fighting uh, having separate channels for the longest time because I felt like it was splitting my audience, you know, literally splitting my audience. But I found that actually keeping them all on one channel was doing the same thing. I figure that's the, uh, the best strategy moving forward. And it's not just for ad money and stuff like that. It's also just... So that way I feel more creatively, you know, not restricted, free, I guess. <laughs> Cause I felt like, you know, making videos is like, is this really the video that screams the Andy son? You know, cause you know, I have a lot of ideas for different videos, but I felt that having them on the main channel just really, again, would split my audience and it really wouldn't be uh, the Andy son type video. So I figured, Splitting the channels to their own little niches will be the best thing moving forward. And plus, I got this channel now. In addition to archival stuff, it's also kind of my little uh, experimental channel as well. So I'm going to be putting up, you know, a bunch of different stuff as I make them. Um, it does take me a little bit because uh, I'm also doing, still doing, the, uh, the freelance video editing stuff as well. So that's what the majority of my time is being spent on, uh, doing videos for my current clients, finding new clients, as well as my IRL job. But yeah, uh, I feel really good about this uh, this move. It's been something that's really been weighing on me for a while now. And I feel yeah. like this move is the best way to give everybody what they want, basically, and still allow me the creative freedom to pursue what I want to make as well. So, And also, if you're thinking, well, he just did it for the AdSense money. Um, it, I'm not going to lie, it did play a part in my reason for splitting the channels, but not as much as you guys might think. I've noticed that as far as um, ad revenue, my video editing tutorials 
hands down, made me the most amount of money. So, yes, that was partially the reason why I moved them to the monetized channel and then all my vlogs and other stuff onto currently unmonetized channels. I'm hoping through uh, some more consistent video making to eventually make them monetized. Um, but again, that's just a small reason why I did it. It's not the main reason. But yeah, man, I uh, feel pretty good about that. Um, in other updating news, I'm still looking for uh, another job to help kind of supplement my income. Uh, I've been looking for more freelance video editing gigs. I've um, been looking for additional work from my current client base, which that's going especially well. I'm really, really proud of how my clients are doing uh, growth-wise on YouTube and just the, the overall positive reaction to uh, those videos. And I mean, granted, I'm not in the videos. I just put them together. Um, so ultimately, it's on them to provide me with the best material possible, you know, so I'm, I'm not an alchemist. I can't turn lead into gold, but uh, I can get pretty close. <laughs> really glad for them and their success and especially moving forward uh, and getting more involved uh, with their video making process as well. You know, maybe giving them a couple suggestions here and there, you know, hey, get B-roll this or, you know, do this instead of that, you know, stuff like that. And that's something else I wanted to to talk with you guys about, you know, because as you guys know, since moving back to the States in 2015, I've been wanting to go back to Japan for the longest time. And I felt like it was so cost prohibitive, you know, because that's the main thing, because being out in the Midwest in America, uh, plane tickets to and from Japan are extremely expensive. Um, if I was living, you know, on the West Coast, not so much, probably about like literally half what I would pay if I flew out from here. Um, so that's been the main uh, prohibiting factor for me not even visiting Japan since I got out. Um, but I'm looking to, to change that in a big way. Um, and I know I've said this before, you know, <laughs> but uh, it does bear repeating. You know, I do want to go back to Japan. Uh, I've been talking with a lot of my friends and clients and stuff about what it would take um, moving back to Japan. Now, obviously, I don't have a four-year degree, so I can't just apply for a job from here and then fly out or anything like that. And I don't have the husbando visa, so can't do that. So the only other real way for me to come back to Japan for longer than just a tourist visa would be for me to go to school, go out to a escuela, out in Japan. So that's an avenue that I've been pursuing uh, pretty heavily as of late. Uh, just been looking into the cost because that's the main thing because, you know, even as a Navy veteran on the GI Bill, and, you know, where the tuition's taken care of, you know, you get like a book stipend, you get living, you know, BAH, you know, you get a housing stipend basically. So even with all that, you know, if I were going to school, it'd probably most likely be in Tokyo because that's where all my clients are. It's where a good, you know, foreigner population is. It's where a lot of the main Japan YouTubers are. So, you know, I want to go out there for networking events and, you know, getting more clients in addition to being out in Japan and enjoying myself. And Tokyo seems to be the perfect hub for that. And people that aren't even in Tokyo can get there pretty easily, I feel. Um depending on their situation, of course, but a lot of them at least know where it's at. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, so yeah, I feel pretty pretty good about uh, looking for educational opportunities out in Japan, you know, looking through um, a lot of American schools. You know, the main two are obviously Temple, which, you know, despite how some people may feel about it, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, you got to realize, you know, what do you want out of this experience? And, you know, for me, I want to go back to Japan. I uh, really miss it, really miss my friends out there. Would love to do more um, networking opportunities out there. And I feel like I'm not really getting those here in Midwestern America, here in Ohio. And I think that since pretty much my entire client base is in Japan, 
in the Tokyo-ish area, that moving out there would bring me closer to them, literally, and uh, would allow me to work with them a bit more closely than just giving suggestions out here in America as far as, you know, camera movements and things to shoot for B-roll and stuff like that. And so I think it would really benefit them, you know, in the video making process. And, you know, it don't hurt, you know, if anything, it don't hurt to have a, a, you know, a cameraman. So that way you don't have to do it all yourself. So I think it's going to be a really good move. But again, Rome wasn't bit, built in a day. So it's definitely going to take me some time to save up some money um, to even consider the move because, you know, the plane ticket is the main cost. Um, it's at least a thousand dollars USD. Um, that's at bare minimum. You know, that's like one of the cheapest prices I've seen them for just a one-way ticket, mind you. And then you also got to figure in uh, living costs until the GI Bill kicks in. Because yes, like I said, GI Bill pays for school. They give you a you know book stipend. They give you a living stipend and all that stuff. But it takes a little bit to uh, to kick in. You know, best case scenario, I'd start seeing checks around uh, the following month, basically. Um, but if I were to go there earlier to get myself set up, um, I got to pay that all out of pocket. So um, got to come up with some money to do that. And plus being on a student visa, um, legally, I can only work so many hours a week. And also depending on schoolwork as well, and client work and all this kind of stuff, you know, there's only so much that I can do. And plus, you know, I didn't come to Japan just to work, you know, I came there to enjoy myself and to see the sights, make some videos of my own. So, you know, I got to really buckle down on time management and, you know, really, you know, at the end of the day, I do want to get my college degree and uh, I can't just be out there gallivanting around Japan the whole time. You know, I got to focus seriously on my studies because if I don't, then I'll lose my visa and I'll have to go back to America empty handed. And I don't want to do that. You know, I've had if you guys been following uh, my channel for a while now. You'll know that um, I've had some trouble in college um, just focusing. And especially since getting out of the military, I've been dealing with a lot of uh, mental issues, you know, just a lot of anxiety and depression and stuff like that. And it's something that I'm really working on and I want to make sure that I succeed this time, you know, not just because of, will there never be a next time? Cause there's always a next time point being I'm in my early thirties. You know, I got to really start putting in some work, you know, I'm out of the military now. I don't have that to fall back on aside from GI bill and stuff, but you know, it's time to start getting serious about what I want to do, you know, and I'd love being, a freelance video editor. It's allowed me to express my creativity even when I'm not in front of a camera talking. Cause you know, there's some days and it's been like this for the past couple weeks now where I, I just don't want to be in front of a camera. You know, the anxiety starts really setting in and I'm stumbling over my words. And you know, sometimes I just don't really have much to say, to be honest with you guys. And, uh, you know, that's why there's delays a lot of times with me putting out videos in addition to working on other stuff for clients, IRL work, stuff like that. So, you know, I really want to do this to help work on myself because I noticed, you know, in a lot of my old Andy Japandy videos that I really wasn't happy it, it was a really weird time in my life, 2013, 2015, because I was in the place that I've wanted to be since I was a little kid, you know, always wanted to go to Japan, and uh, I was still unhappy. And, you know, through uh, therapy and just having some time to really think about it, once I got out of the military, I found that, you know, I just wasn't happy because of the, you know, the fast pace nature of being stationed overseas, uh, the military versus just living in Japan, because I felt that Japan was kind of my, <laughs> it was my, my, 
place of solace, you know, despite all the stuff that was going on in my personal life, work life, you know, Japan was there and it was kind of the nice, warm, fuzzy blanket that kind of, you know, kept me going throughout all these troubling times. And, you know, I really miss it. And I want to get back to Japan, you know, because even though I was there for like two years, there, there's more to Japan, more of Japan to explore, you know, not just within Tokyo, but also throughout. And I felt that being in the military, I was very restricted on what I could do, what I could make videos about, especially. So there's a lot of times where I was just like inside my apartment making videos, which I know not a lot of people liked. Um, kind of is what it is. But, you know, and speaking of that, you know, knowing what I know now about making videos and editing and all that stuff and having the actual time to do it, to put forward, you know, a good, well-edited video with B-roll. <laughs> I know I was anti-B-roll at the time because um, I felt like I had that old school YouTuber mentality of, you know, they'll watch it because it's raw and it's not super well cut like a TV show or something like that. But the climate's changed. I've changed, most importantly. And I feel like B-roll is nice. It's a nice little break. Uh, even though there's really no B-roll for the most part in these update videos, um, they're just to let you guys know what's going on and stuff like that. And allow me a chance to kind of ramble and rave about whatever else is going on. So that's what's going on <laughs> right now uh, in my life. And... I'm glad to be uh, to be making videos again. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been making my own stuff, and you know, I can't wait to get back in the saddle, um, especially with the Japan stuff, which, again, I don't have any set-in-stone plans yet, so don't get all, you know, oh, my God, Andy's going to be going to Japan, you know. It's, it's coming. I just don't have anything set yet. I'm just starting to put the things in motion that I need to in order to get started. You know, the most important thing is, you know, getting stuff in savings. Um, Going to be selling some some stuff to raise some money. Um, and again, this is all kind of part of the reason why I'm looking for more client work, uh, looking for a different IRL job, looking to pick up some hours, stuff like that. You know, another reason why I'm making some videos and changing some stuff up as well. It's all it's all part of the plan, as the Joker would say. So, in any event, guys, I've kind of rambled and raved long enough. If you guys are still watching this video, thank you so much. And with that said, this is the Andy Song signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Yeah, might have to change that uh, that number vlog number later. I don't know if this is 290 or not. <laughs> I'll have to check it. Anyway. We're live, pal. So, hey guys, Andy here, and uh, I'm just kind of out and about today. Um, just got done eating some food, and I figured, you know, I was gonna go home and actually like record a, a proper, you know, update video like I normally do in my room. But you know what? It's such a nice day out, and you know, with winter coming up soon, well, soonish. I figure, you know, take advantage of the nice days while you can and just uh, record where there's, uh, there's good wireless and uh, McDonald's, you know, for better or worse, one of the better wireless places out here. And I can record like in my car, <laughs> pretty far away, so I don't have to worry about upsetting customers or anything like, oh, folks, dude, there we go, upsetting customers or anything like that. So anyway, hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to my October 2018 update video for you guessed it October 2018 woo so yeah as always with these updated videos I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube -y stuff so let's just jump right into it and again this is live so there might be mistakes and stuff and I might go on little rambly bits so bear with me um, but you know like I said I figure since it's such a nice day out I'd uh, just sit here and record uh, Take advantage of the nice days while we have them because winter's coming sooner you might think so in any event uh, let's go over some youtube -y stuff give you guys some updates there so um, as you guys know from the previous updates 
um, my editing channel got demonetized a couple weeks ago and it was according to YouTube it was due to uh, duplicate content and I had a bunch of different theories about uh, what that could mean if there's any specific videos I tried asking YouTube for a bit more specific info if there was like any particular videos that you know flag the system to where they're like you know what the hell's going on and I had a couple theories uh, one of them was the star bomb videos um, for those who don't know I uh, put together the uh, South by Southwest 2016 live stream that they did uh, the original streams audio was pretty shitty so I just uh, took the original streams audio and used it as an editing project for uh, Adobe Audition and it just went in there and experimented with uh, like compression, EQ, all that kind of stuff just to make it sound a lot better and uh, it did. <laughs> it sounds way better than the original stream um, and it was actually one of my most popular videos and it would always get a very consistent amount of traffic um, not just on the full concert, the full concert was my most popular video uh, but I also broke it up into its individual songs so if you guys just wanted to listen to a particular song you could those did okay but it was the main full concert that got the most amount of views <laughs> bar none but you know it's always nice to give people options so I figured you know that could have been the case as far as the whole duplicate content thing so I ended up uh, they were originally unlisted because when I went to go uh, fix up my editing channel to be what it is now, you know, focused on editing tutorials and other aspects of the creative industry. Um, I had to take down a lot of videos, but I just made them unlisted. So if you still had the link or had had them in like a playlist or something like that, you could still watch them. And I figured that'd be okay. <laughs> but uh, I guess it wasn't for YouTube, so I ended up just straight up deleting them. Um, I apologize for having to do that, but kind of is what it is, you know, so, you know, maybe one day I'll re-upload them somewhere else, but, uh, won't be on that channel, that's for sure. Um, but in any event, uh, that was one of the possible suspects. Another one would have been the, uh, the Roger Swan Remastered series, where I went and, this was actually before the, uh, the whole Starbomb thing. Um, I went and remastered a lot of, well, not a lot of, all of the uh, the Tokyo Swan and the Wate Swan series of videos um, as a tribute to uh, the late, great Roger Swan. Um, it was originally to celebrate his, um, his 10 years of first arriving to Japan, as well as um, something to kind of build interest into the, uh, the study abroad program at Western Michigan. Um, at the time, they were starting up um, doing some ad campaigns and stuff, and I wanted to um, put the series out to kind of, you know, hopefully give people some interest in the program, as well as in Roger's um, scholarship program, scholarship fund that was started um, shortly after he passed away in 2010. Um, so it was designed to gain, to garner interest in that as well. Um, but the videos were never monetized and, you know, strictly, you know, in tribute to Roger and to bring awareness to the scholarship and study abroad opportunities over at Western Michigan University where I was going at, at the time. And it was also, you know, in a, in a, it's kind of a side thing. It was meant to kind of give me some practice editing with Premiere because I just switched over to, from Sony Vegas and I need something to kind of help me practice how Premiere works versus Vegas. Um, but in any event, those episodes were very well received by Roger's audience, friends, family, all that sort of thing. And originally I wanted them uploaded on his, his own channel, but you know, talking with uh, family and friends and stuff, they recommended that I just, you know, upload them to my own channel and just leave Rogers as a memorial to uh, to the videos that he put out. So, um, you know, <laughs> had to do what I had to do. So, um, you know, I also deleted those as well. Um, just kind of is what it is again. But, you know, if you're hankering for some, uh, some Roger Swan, you know, his videos are still 
up on his original YouTube channel, so you can still check him out there, uh, which is what I would highly recommend, because even though some of the videos even are like over a decade old at this point, but it's just his his spirit and just his you know his love for life, uh, just his energy and vibe and stuff is just really really infectious, and I think that's one of the the main points that I really liked about about Roger, and that's why even even today in 2018 it still sticks with me. You know, there's not a lot of not a lot of YouTubers, especially nowadays, that are like that. You know, and it was just in a different time on YouTube. But, you know, <laughs> I could wax nostalgic about that all day. Uh, it's kind of hot in here, actually. But in any event, um, so I ended up getting rid of those videos, straight up deleting them. And uh, <clears throat> another possible one uh, could have been just the fact that I was moving all of my uh, vlogs and other videos onto this channel. So that's what I think is probably the most likely thing that happened was, uh, you know, all the vlogs and everything else somehow got flagged by the system because it showed that, oh, you know, there, there's vlogs that are unlisted on this channel and this channel, but they're on this other channel, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, but... It's kind of funny because I looked it up today actually because I was a little curious um, and I noticed that there were some people who ended up like re-uploading my own shit <laughs> and uh, it's just a straight like rip from my channel. Um, some of them added a lot of like spam content you know like you know V-Bucks or whatever the fuck the Fortnite shit is about coupons and whatever else. So I was like oh okay so these guys can do it but I, the original creator of those videos, gets penalized for that. Okay, roger that. And keep in mind, those videos, the duplicate videos that I didn't authorize to be, you know, uploaded up there. Um, you know, keep in mind, those were, uh, those have been up for some of them even years. Um, so that's kind of kind of disconcerting. You know, I just had to do a little little googling to find all that shit. So I was a little little pissed off about that. Um, but we'll kind of deal with that later. Uh, but in any event, um, as far as the whole demonetization thing, um, right now I'm just working to build up this channel in particular, uh, getting all the vlog, all the old videos and stuff moved over here. And get them all scheduled out and then uh, also making new videos for this channel as well <laughs> it's not just gonna be old content um, so that's what I'm focusing most on now and then I've also been kind of cycling between the other stuff as well you know like with the whole Andy talks Navy thing just doing little bits here and there you know and uh, oof, man, it is freaking hot out today let me just switch hands here. Ooh, this phone's, phone's burning my ass right now. But anyway, um, where is that? Oh, yeah. Um, so I've been focusing mo <clears throat> mostly on just getting this channel up and running and, uh, you know, getting all the vlogs and stuff scheduled out, thumbnails, tags, title, all that shit. Get that all taken care of. And then uh, once that's done, then I can start you know, making some more uh, newer videos as well. Uh, not just for this channel, but also for, uh, sorry about the noise, but anyway, also for uh, my editing channel as well, because I've kind of fallen off the wagon as far as uploading stuff for that channel goes, and the whole demonetization thing certainly didn't help my motivation in uh, making stuff for that channel. But uh, I figure, you know what, even if I'm not making anything from that channel currently, um, I think it would be best to at least have something up there to show, like, you know, to show if anything that the channel's still alive, you know. So, um, once I get a little bit of time, then I'm going to start uh, doing some batch recording for, uh, for some tutorials and stuff. Because I, I do have ideas written down for uh, tutorials and uh, just got to just gotta get on it, basically. So... 
Um, that's going to be that's what's going to be going on with that. And as far as the whole Andy Talks Navy channel, um, I don't have any plans to make it like a super consistent thing. It's just going to be kind of an every once in a while sort of thing. Um, just as I see videos that I think are kind of interesting to uh, to react to. And uh, if there's any particular topics or something that I feel like I can contribute as a U.S. Navy veteran, um, be happy to uh, to do what I can, you know. Um, but again, it's you know basically a secondary channel, so you know <laughs> stuff kind of comes when it comes. Um, and for this channel, this is my personal channel, also my archive channel as well. So you know we're gonna have consistent uploads of the old content so if people who weren't around uh, when my old stuff came out they have another chance to uh, to watch it and uh, it also gives me uh, a little bit of a boost in the algorithm because it shows like oh he uploads daily you know so um, there is a method to the madness um, so it does give you guys something to watch in between me making stuff for not only this channel but also my other channels as well. And then, like I said, for the edited by the Andy Sun channel, uh, definitely expect some tutorials coming up soon. Um, I've just been really busy as of late, which we'll get into in the personal section, but schedule is starting to clear up a little bit, so I think we're gonna start putting out some uh, some tutorials soon. So, anyway, now that we've gone over the, uh, the youtube -y stuff, let's get on to some personal life stuff. Let me switch hands here. <laughs> Still hasn't cooled off yet. But anyway, like I said, um, been very busy these uh, past couple weeks, which, you know, if you've been following this channel for a while, it's nothing new, really. Um, but as it relates to recent busyness, uh, it's mostly involved with, uh, with my brother because um, he's stationed out in North Carolina, uh, which is where uh, Hurricane Florence struck. Well, I guess it was Tropical Storm Florence by the time it got there, but still it's enough <laughs> to wreck some shit. And so uh, his wife ended up dropping off um, their dog to uh, stay with us for a couple weeks while they got that situation under control. And, you know, love her to bits, wonderful dog. But, uh, you know, while she was interacting with the other dog <laughs> at the house, They'd often get into trouble and dig holes and bark and, you know, it's just kind of a stressful thing to deal with, you know, as I'm, you know, applying for new jobs and as I'm working on, you know, video projects and things like that, it's kind of hard to, for me to do that while still paying attention to what the dogs are doing, making sure they don't rip stuff up or, you know, dig holes or bark or whatever, play a little too loud and whatnot. So that was kind of stressful on me. But um, yesterday, they came by and uh, picked up their dog, and now they're back in North Carolina. So, um, won't have to worry about that. <laughs> but it was kind of nice having having her around. You know, she was a really chill dog. And like I said, by themselves, they're pretty good dogs. You know, you don't have to really mess with them too much. But together, they just like to play, and they're very loud. And you know, it's something I gotta keep track of and since I don't have a laptop to edit stuff I couldn't just like sit in the living room and watch them you know because when I was actually out in the living room watching them they're fine didn't do nothing it was always when I went into my bedroom to start editing stuff that you know I'd hear them rustling around or you know what's this licky spot over here what's wrong with this blanket and all this other stuff so, so that's when things started to get a little bit ooh, sun flare Shit. <laughs> that's when things started getting a little sun flare. No, but that's when things started getting stressful. Um, but that's all. It's all over with now. Um, so I should be able to uh, start making uh, videos, like I said, in the YouTube update. Um, but more importantly, stress levels are going down because it was getting a little, little hectic n there near the end. Um, but yeah, stress levels are definitely going down with that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm also applying for new jobs. Uh, mostly, you know, as a pace, as well as to make money to save up for, uh, for going back to Japan. So, um, 
applied to a bunch of different places around town. Not gonna name names because I don't know who's watching. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, applied to a lot of places here in town. Um, I go in for an interview today, actually, at some place that I will not name. But uh, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Um, and uh, like I said, looking to uh, save up some money, get back out to Japan. Um, as I explained in previous update video, um, my main reasons for wanting to go back to Japan, you know, are <laughs> trying to get a new position. <coughs> but anyway, uh, reasons are that I want to network more because I feel like with doing freelance stuff, which I really love and want to do more of, I feel like I've kind of hit kind of a limit to what I'm doing right now because um, I feel like you know I'm trying to trying to get more clients and things like that and you know my network especially locally locally is pretty much non-existent you know all of my main network content you know contacts as far as doing videos and stuff are out in Tokyo or thereabouts so I figure why not just go where they're at and you know be able to do more for them as opposed to just being here in America putting together their footage you know I want to get out there and you know shoot video with them as well you know just get different uh, camera angles for b-roll and if anything just be an extra set of hands to help them out with uh, making their videos so I think that's really gonna be gonna be helpful and uh, you know can't wait for that and you know I also want to uh, just go back to school out in Japan you know because uh, there's two places that I'm looking at right now uh, there's Lakeland University and there's Temple and uh, the main advantage that Lakeland has over Temple is that they have a better acceptance rate and since I have pretty low grades right now uh, as it stands from the last time I was in college um, they would be more likely to accept me versus Temple where I'd have to probably build up my GPA a little bit before considering going there uh, but one of the disadvantages is that uh, Lakeland is a two-year university you gotta I oh, never mind <laughs> I thought I got a notification anyway Lakeland's a two-year university versus Temple which is a four-year university so I can get my bachelor's degree from Temple versus Lakeland where you can only get uh, an associate's degree but you can get like a transfer degree so that way if you transfer to a four-year university then, um, you know, you won't have to take a lot of the bullshit courses. You just take the stuff that's in your major and carry on smartly from there. Pretty nice. Um, but, you know, another disadvantage that Lakeland has is that um, there are upfront costs to going into the dorms versus Temple, which has um, its own dorm system where, you know, if you're, especially for me being a veteran, getting paid through the GI Bill, you know, it, it takes a minute for the GI Bill to uh, to kick in. You know, at best it would be a month, at worst it could be longer, and I've heard recently of some payment hang-ups going on as far as GI Bill goes, so I was getting a little, a little worried about that. Um, and especially being out in Japan where it's harder to make money in some aspects, you know, because you're limited in your the amount of time that you uh, you can work under a student visa. I think it's only 25 to 28 hours that you can work. Um, but the wages are obviously way better than in the states. It's just that you know you have to be a bit more careful in picking your jobs and stuff like that. Um, but it is a lot easier to pick up work, and there's many more career opportunities out there versus. You know here in ohio or even back in kalamazoo you know so that's nice and uh anyway uh, some advantages of going to temple um the bah is way higher uh last i checked times recording bah for uh fucking uh lakeland jesus <laughs> This is why I edit my vlogs. But BH for uh, for Lakeland is about 1200 a month, which is still pretty good and is definitely doable in Tokyo, which is pretty shocking to say, but it is doable if you budget correctly. Um, 
but over at Temple, it's like close to $2,000 a month. So that's a pretty considerable difference. And you're living in the same area too. So it's not like, you know, one's in Tokyo and the other's in Osaka or Yokohama or something like that. You know, you're living in the same area. So it don't really make much of a difference, you know? And plus, if uh, I really wanted to, um, I could just, you know, there's a lot more options as far as cheap housing in Tokyo versus, you know, in the States. And uh, that's really gonna help me out. Obviously the apartment's not gonna be as spacious as my previous apartment in Japan was, <laughs> not even close. Um, but the, uh, the rent can be reasonable depending on where you're at. If you don't mind a commute, then you can live in a pretty, pretty okay sized apartment for not a whole lot of money. Um, again, it might be a lot, might mean a longer commute or you might not be around, uh, you know, certain places like a convenience store or something like that. But then again, it's Japan. So, <laughs> you know, you can't walk more than two feet without hitting a convenience or something like that. So again, it all depends on location and stuff relative to train stations and everything else. But, uh, you know, it is it is definitely doable to do on a student visa. And plus, um, you know, there's also the option of just like, you know, rooming with people, you know. Um, <clears throat> I've been finding some uh, pretty decently sized uh, apartments or even like townhouses that are still reasonably priced for me just by myself. But if I were to get roommates, that would drive the price down even more, which means that I could save up more money. So in case, say, the GI Bill, you know, takes a little bit longer to kick in, I still have money in savings to where I'm not like freaking out about where I'm gonna eat that night or something like that. Um, or, you know, what if I have to go back to the States for whatever reason? Um, you know, it's always good to have that, uh, that plane ticket money should something happen. Um, and another good thing about living in Japan is you don't have to have a car. You know, uh, well in Tokyo anyway, I should preface that. It's, you don't have to have a car like if you're in a big city. Um, if you're out in the Yanaka or something like that, then yeah, you know, having a car is definitely essential, I think. Uh, but if you're in one of the big cities, you really don't need it, <laughs> to be honest. It'd be nice to have, but you know, the cost of having one and all that has to deal with that is just, to me, as a single dude, it's not really worth it. You know, I mean, if I had a family or something like that and I didn't want to fuss with them getting on the train or something like that, then fine. But, uh, you know, it's just a single dude. I really don't need a vehicle out in Japan, you know. But should I need one, I, I think, you know, maybe a scooter or like a K, K cycle or something like that um, would be more than enough you know if I wanted something motorized but uh, I was just thinking about um, just getting a bicycle while I was out there so I can you know you know depending on where I'm at you know living wise I could possibly bike back and forth to college or at least you know bike back and forth towards other locations I go to frequently like the store or community something like that it's just a way for me to to get around without having to rely on the trains all the time. And you know, when I was out in Yokosuka, you know, I lived fairly close to base. So by bike, it was actually pretty fast. And I ended up getting there faster by bike versus by train anyway, because I could use the bike on base versus the train, which just gets me from station to station. And I still have to walk to the station. And I still have to walk from the station to base, to my ship. And you know, it's just, it's more time. So with the bike is a lot faster um, and it saved me like a ton of money really like even just going back and forth to base you know um, on the train was like eh, roughly about three bucks round trip every day that I was working like during the week so instead of spending that just getting back and forth to work you know I ended up just spending it on a bike and within like a month or so I ended up recouping the cost of the bike so that's pretty nice um, but also you know the main reason I do want to go back out to Japan is that just quite quite frankly I miss it 
you know. <laughs> I've been back in the States for over three years now, and a lot of the reverse culture shock has, has since faded, and, you know, I've gotten used to civilian life again and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I do do miss, in some cases, the simplicity of Japan. I know it's complicated in other parts, but... You know, I just miss how things worked out there. You know, the transportation system, you know, I didn't need to have a car. I didn't worry about what if my car breaks down or I get in an accident or if somebody steals my car, breaks in my car, or something happens to this car, I'm fucked. Basically being out here in the States, um, especially where I'm at, you know, maybe if I was in New York, it wouldn't be so bad, but uh, still. Um, being in the States, you pretty much have to have a car in order to get around anywhere. Um, don't get me wrong, having I mean, a car is nice. Get your own little space to do whatever the fuck you want within legal reason. Um, you just listen to your own tunes almost as loud as you want. Um, go wherever you want. You don't have to worry about, you know, if this train is leaving or if the station's closing or something like that. You just fucking go. <laughs> Um, which is nice, don't get me wrong. But again, is it worth the costs? I don't think so. I mean, I'd wish that there was, you know, a proper public transportation system out here. You know, and even when I was in Kalamazoo, like, the transit system was just so fucking slow compared to Japan. You know, it would take me like a half hour just to get to work if I were to do it by public transport. So, versus like 10, 15 minutes depending on traffic by car. So, there's that. And like I said, you know, all my clients are out in Japan, so it'd make sense for me to go out there and be able to do more with them, as well as build on my network, you know, network with more people looking to, uh, to outsource their video editing, which admittedly is a pretty, um, long process. And, you know, for some creators, you know, it may not be worth worth it for them to sit down and put together videos because, you know, it does take a long time and if you're not efficient with it, it can take even longer. So, to me, it would make more sense to just, especially if you're doing it consistently, you know, and you want to get the product out in time and stuff, um, it would make sense to offload that way. You have more time to <clears throat> make your own stuff, make, uh, make your own stuff rather than just sitting in front of your computer putting it together <laughs> you know you can take that time to make more stuff um, you can plan out more stuff you can uh, just simply take it easy you know YouTube burnout is very real and I think that outsourcing a lot of the uh, the the commonly done things is gonna be uh, more prevalent moving forward um, Right now, the whole like freelance editor thing is kind of an inside game. You know, people have heard about it, but people don't really talk about it as much because it's mostly like, especially for the big channels, it's usually like one of their friends or something like that that does the editing. But I think that moving forward, there's going to be a big market for outsourcing the, uh, the editing process for YouTube channels. And you're already kind of seeing that. Uh, in the bigger cities anyway, you know, there's the whole Tokyo Creative um, Studio out in Tokyo, obviously. <laughs> and they work with a lot of big names out in Japan, putting together their stuff and whatnot, um, or just helping them in other ways. So I think there's definitely a market for it, definitely very much a need for it to help out, especially the big names that, um, you know, maybe they're just not the best editor. You know, maybe they're just good at being in front of the camera and talking, you know. It's just one of the things where you have to recognize your strengths and, you know, do what you can to mitigate the damage from your weaknesses. So, for me, I know that I'm not the best in front of the camera. You know, I'm very fidgety and I don't always look at the camera. Even after all these fucking years of doing YouTube, I don't always look at the camera because I'm so like deep in thought and I'm just like kind of my own world, just talking, you know? And uh, again, I, I know I don't have the best camera presence, but I've gotten fairly efficient at uh, putting together videos. 
and especially doing it for other people has helped me improve upon that even more so why not just offer my skills in editing to others you know it just makes sense to me and uh, I just want to be in a market where there's a lot of big players more opportunities and you know I also want to I also want to shoot videos of my own as well, you know, uh, just putting together um, different places that, you know, I'd go in Japan because even though I was stationed there for over two years, there's still a lot of Japan for me to see. And I saw a, a good chunk of it <clears throat> when I was out there for two years, but I didn't see all of it or even close. You know, there's just so much to do just in Tokyo alone. But I do want to see other parts of Japan as a country as well. You know, I want to get a bit further into it, you know, go to like Kyoto, Osaka, you know, go more into southern Japan as well. Visit, you know, Fukuoka, stuff like that. Uh, just get more of a feel for the country and just see Japan, basically. So, um, but anyway, guys, I am getting hot as fuck out here. So, this is a pretty long ass update over a half hour so thank you guys for for watching this if you made it all the way through and um, new videos and stuff like that are coming soon um, gonna be saving up to get my ass back out to Japan uh, whether that means you know getting a new job getting some more freelance work. Um, oh shit, one more thing I didn't talk about. I'll go over it briefly, because we're already like super long in this video, but I'm also looking into going back to college here, locally, um, to, if anything, build up my GPA, as well as help me save up money a little faster. Um, depending on how well I save up money, as far as that goes, I could be back in Japan as soon as like late spring early summer ish or i might have to wait until the fall of 2019 next year time's recording uh it just depends on how much i can save up you know any kind of circumstances in between now and then that crop up um stuff like that but uh again another reason why i'm you know, looking to get another job so I can work weekends and go to school and still make a good amount of money doing that, freelancing and all that kind of stuff, you know, just gotta be on the grind, baby. Gotta hustle. So anyway, with that said, for real this time, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Again, you guys poop for tuning into this um, updated video and for watching other stuff. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're live once again. <laughs> okay, um, sorry about that. Um, I tried doing a live video earlier, but uh, it just wasn't uh, working out. The stream kind of kind of crapped on me midway through thought, so I just ended up deleting it altogether. But anyway, if you guys are watching this for the first time, hi, Andy here, and um, just sitting here at McDonald's. Um, sipping on my water things like that and I got the car on because my phone's getting kind of low on on battery life and I just want to make sure everything's all good with that and it's starting to get a little hot in here too I think it might Oop, by the way <laughs> we're live pal might just end up uh, cracking the window up top all right so you might get some more lens flare action but uh, ooh, that's real nice uh, I should have done that earlier. I'm starting to sweat in here already. And it's not even that uh, that warm out outside. It's just all the light and stuff coming in here is heating up the car. So that's nice. Anyway, apologies for the engine noise and all sorts of stuff. Let's get into the video because I've been doing all the disclaimer crap for like a minute now. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update on uh, what's going on with me uh, college-wise. I uh, just wanted to let you know what's what's going on as far as that goes from my last video. So uh, the plan is to first go to a community college to help uh, get things going as far as getting myself ready for the transfer out to a an overseas school in Japan. And there's seven reasons why 
just a couple. Well, a couple reasons why I'm going to, excuse me, uh, a community college before uh, just going to university overseas instead of just like going to it right away. Man, <laughs> this is a jumbled fucking mess. Ugh, sorry if you guys are watching the first couple minutes of this. This is why I edit my vlogs, but you know I ain't got I ain't got time for that right now. So in any event, we just kind of have to deal. So a um, couple reasons why I want to go to a community college right away versus just going straight to an overseas university. Uh, one of them is to boost my GPA, so I'll have a better chance at getting accepted to that school because um, Lakeland has a, you know, pretty high acceptance rate. So I'm not like super worried about Lakeland, but I still want to give myself a good chance so they're not like iffy on accepting me. Uh, but on the other hand, Temple has, um, I wouldn't say it has a low acceptance rate, but it has a much lower acceptance rate than what most people might think. So you do have to kind of try to uh, to get in there. But I've also heard stories of people with just shitty grades and for some reason or other they end up getting into Temple. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the case may be, but in any event, I just want to make sure that I give myself the best chance possible to be accepted so I don't have to worry about, I got a notification on Twitter, we'll get to you later. Anyway, I just want to make sure I got uh, the best possible chance to uh, get accepted so I don't have to plunk down all that money for an application fee on a, eh, maybe, <laughs> sort of shot, um, which is another big thing. You know, with, with Temple, it's not so bad. It's about 100 and some odd dollars USD, however it shakes out, depending on the exchange rate. Uh, but with Lakeland, it's much higher. It's like 350 USD and some change. So I want to make sure that I have a pretty good shot and I have, you know, transcripts and everything all lined up. So when I do transfer out there, we're good to go and I have a pretty good shot at getting accepted. <laughs> so uh, that's one of the reasons. Um, another reason is that I need to save up money because yes, the GI Bill does pay for college. Yes, the GI Bill does give me a housing allowance every month, but at best, it kicks in about a month into your courses. So you, you do have to have some kind of a savings or a job or something to kind of help cover for those initial expenses until the GI Bill kicks in. And plus, uh, I've heard lately that there's been some payment issues with some of the veterans going to school as of late. I don't know if that's just a, you know, just like a random thing or if it's something else, but I have heard some stories about it. So I just want to make sure I have a little bit of savings in case something like that happens. Cause again, you know, being overseas, I can't exactly go over to the mommy and daddy's house and ask for some money, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm a little far away. So, um, and you know, like I said, have money saved up, of course, for the plane ticket as well. Um, I want to make sure we're good to go on that before I, you know, commit to transferring over there. That's a big thing. Um, the application fee, like I said, living expenses till the GI Bill kicks in. And also just savings in general because uh, you never know what's going to happen. You never know if you're going to take a dip on the, on the GI Bill. And plus holidays really affect it because you only get paid for days that school's in session. So for like spring break or winter break or something like that, you really take a pretty big hit as far as the GI Bill goes. So you have to be prepared for that sort of thing. And um, like I said before, um, under a student visa in Japan, you can only work so many hours a week. And, you know, during regular school time, that's, you know, an okay amount of hours. I can definitely get by, you know, with the GI Bill working properly and me, you know, getting those hours and stuff, I can get by just fine. But it's when these little changes and stuff happen that, you know, I have to be cognizant of that and not go over my uh, allotted time during the week. So just something to keep in mind, you know, situations like that. 
And plus, you know, like I said, I want to go out and see Japan. So I'm going <laughs> to kind of need some form of money uh, to do that. You know, even, even if it's just, you know, cruising and perusing in Tokyo. Um, Got to have the mons, or the mons, I guess, <laughs> in Japan's case, to, uh, to do that. Um, and, you know, one less thing I got to worry about, really. Um, so... Another reason that I want to go to community college first versus just going straight to the overseas university is to also in some way kind of test the waters as far as going back to a college environment, see if I can I can do it. Because uh, for those of you who've been following my channel or just my exploits online, I guess, um, you know, because I've been shifting channels and stuff. But anyway, um, for those of you who've been following me for a while, um, you'll know that I had a kind of a rough go of it um, going back to college uh, this time around because, uh, you know, I had a lot of uh, mental unpacking to do once I got out of the military. And it was hard for me to make a lot of uh, adjustments in life. And, you know, I had a lot of hang ups about college and just the area I was at. I wasn't a super big fan of Kalamazoo. I felt in a lot of ways isolated because, you know, I didn't have family out there and, you know, I was really distant from my work friends because they were a lot younger than me. And even though that didn't really matter to them, it, you know, really mattered to me because it just kind of, you know, is part of a whole self-esteem issue that I have. So, Again, it was nothing that they did or said or anything. It was just, it was all, it was all me. It was all I had. That's something, you know, I've come to realize about why I failed up in Michigan. And, you know, I just want to make sure that I, I do good this time because I only have so much time on the GI Bill. I can't just be, you know, fucking up classes and stuff and expect to get anywhere in life because, you know, I got this opportunity to, uh, to succeed and to to get my degree get that paper so i can uh, get that work visa to work abroad in japan and even if that you know working abroad in japan thing doesn't work out for me i still have a degree to to fall back on so i can use that to help me apply for jobs out here in the states for uh, for what it's worth even though a degree nowadays doesn't mean as much as it used to but still it's nice to have on a resume and also for me since i've been pursuing it for so long it's it's also just an accomplishment in and of itself because um you know for those who've been following me for a short period of time um i went to college at you know traditional college age uh first went out to itt technical institute back when they were still around they've since foreclosed which i guess kind of shows um the state of that but you know when i went it wasn't quite as bad um i went in 2000 from 2004 to 2006 so yeah i know i'm an old guy whatever but um went from then to then and uh you know i was commuting and i was also basically working full-time at uh, mcdonald's as well so funny how funny how that works but uh, yeah so i was just doing a whole lot and i was just feeling very burnt out by the whole thing and i felt like you know i wasn't really going to college per se i, I was just it's basically like high school but really far away as far as that goes and you know for me it's almost the opposite of what i'm going through with college as of late which was you know instead of me feeling like the old guy in the room i felt like the young guy in the room because a lot of people that were going to itc tech had tried college before and due to whatever circumstance they had financial family uh whatever um they you know dropped out and they're just now picking it back up again so they can get a degree to get a better job to provide for themselves their family stuff like that so they were coming into college at a later later time in their life so it was more around when i'm going back to college actually so they were you know in their late 20s early 30s some of them and i was traditional college age you know 18 19 and you know it's just i liked hanging out with them because they were kind of you know pretty even keel 
they weren't all broy and stuff and you know it being a tech school um, everybody was kind of nerdy as well so I kind of got along with uh, with that group of people um, but as far as the curriculum goes they were starting up uh, online classes at the time and um, you know keep in mind this was early 2000s it's not like it is today where they've since you know smoothed out a lot of the, the rough edges as far as you know taking online classes goes because like <laughs> if you had any kind of question on an assignment something that would be really simple to answer for a teacher you know you had to send them an email or check the message boards at a certain time and a lot of times professor professors would be uh, in another time zone for me and you know like I said I was working nearly full-time at McDonald's so you know if I wasn't in school I was pretty much at work and you know I, I didn't have time to kind of sit there on the forums at 6 p.m. or something like that you know to have my question answered so I would just basically just say fuck it and not do the online assignments and obviously grades started to uh, to go down and uh, eventually ITT Tech addressed the issue not with me specifically but with uh, other students as well because it wasn't just a me thing um, a lot of students you know were having problems with you know getting in touch with their instructors and submitting assignments and all sorts of other technical stuff. Like I said, it was the early 2000s and, um, you know, online learning was just starting to become a thing. I think that was around the time when University of Phoenix was coming around. I remember those commercials you know, probably back, probably as far back as like 2002. That's the earliest I can remember. They might have even been around before then, but as far as the whole taking college courses online thing, that was a new thing at the time. Now it's pretty commonplace. I mean, hell, even like middle school and high school, they have some kind of online module. You know, I remember, you know, my brother Raj, when he was going to high school, he would have to do some kind of online module, you know, whether it's submitting assignments or doing reading or something like that. So, you know, they've since come a long way from when I was in, in college, but point being, um, it didn't do so hot at IT Tech because of the, the online courses. And I was feeling really burnt out with uh, basically being full-time at McDonald's and going full-time to college, which, you know, I was really young at the time and didn't know how to manage my time like I do now, at least better than I did, de did then. Um, and, you know, I remember having to take uh, a night course as well because, like I said, with um, the whole online thing, IT Tech eventually addressed it by starting up hybrid courses, which is kind of what a lot of online course, online classes are today, where, like, you go to a physical class to uh, basically, you know, make your presence known. And if you have any questions for the teachers or something like that, you can ask them there in person without having to wait for a specific time on a message board or send out an email that may or may not get answered for a couple days. And meanwhile, you you know you're going to be late on the assignment. Um, and it was a pretty good idea, actually, and it should have been something that they started off with in the beginning, I think. Um, but point being. Um, I had to take that at night, and because I drove, you know, from Saline, Ohio to Dayton twice, sometimes three days a week, depending on the quarter, um, I didn't want to put more wear and tear in my car by driving back home only a couple hours later to drive all the way back again, you know. So, uh, my best friend Eric, also known as the Talking Vidalkin online, was going to undergrad school at the time. Uh, he was going to Urbana University in Urbana, Ohio. And so in between classes for me, um, while waiting for the night class to start, I would just go visit him at Urbana because it was a lot closer and I had something to do in between, you know, <laughs> while I was waiting for my classes to start. So I'd hang out with him, hang out with his friends, and, you know, we became friends too. And I became friends with his friends as well. And, uh, I just, I really liked the vibe of the area, you know, it was a lot like Salina, but it was bigger, it had more stuff to do, 
and you know more importantly it was closer to a lot of the bigger cities it was really close to dayton uh springfield it was pretty close to columbus as well so you know if we wanted to go out and do something we were all pretty close by to a lot of the big urban areas in ohio so we weren't really too uh too short on on things to do out there um, I guess the main thing was just having the money to do it, of course, because, you know, broke college student, but, you know, that's just life. Um, but in any event, um, I was really liking the vibe of the area, and, you know, I, I'd wanted to transfer to a four-year university anyway. You know, I figured I'd just get my degree at IC Tech and then transfer over to a four-year university where I only have to do two years and then get my bachelor's degree, but... I just like the environment so much out there. Let's see. Where are we at phone charging wise? Okay, hold on. Okay, cool. Just making sure. I still got a ways, especially since I'm streaming. So, anyway. Um, but yeah, I was just feeling, you know, I really liked, you know, that area a lot. And, you know, my friends were out there. So that, that helped. Uh, I just decided to transfer over to Urbana University and uh, started up uh, fall semester 2006. And that was, that first semester was probably one of the best times of my life because it was the first time I had actually gotten a taste of what it was like to be an adult, you know, just freedom from, you know, my parents or relatives or anything like that. I got a chance to, to just be me and it was such a freeing experience. I'll never forget the amount of joy and just relief that I felt um, the day that they helped me move in. Um, you know, I got all my stuff in the dorms and, uh, you know, we played some pool at the uh, student center. And then when it was time for friction issues. Okay, anyway, <laughs> sorry for, for the recon thing. Anyway, as they were finally pulling out, um, out of sight, that was the moment where it all hit me, just the freedom. It's like, I can do whatever the fuck I want right now. <laughs> I don't have to worry about coming home at a certain time or making sure I'm up at a certain time to let the dogs out or, you know, mow the yard or clean up dog crap or do any of this other stuff that I was doing or even go to work at McDonald's. You know, I didn't have to worry about any of that. Um, you know, I was living in the dorms at the time, like I said, so I also had, um, was eating at the, uh, the cafeteria there at Urbana, so I didn't have to worry about food or living anything, you know, just, you know, and I even got a job at the, uh, the cafeteria just to give myself a little bit of pocket change for, okay, anyway, so I, I gave up my car, which I was leasing at the time, um, because I, I knew I wasn't going to work a full-time job while I was at, you know, Urbana. I wanted to make sure that I did it right and I didn't have to worry about distractions from a full-time job or a nearly full-time job. So, you know, quit my job, gave back the car, which uh, in retrospect probably wasn't a good thing <laughs> um, because it really adversely affected my credit for the longest time. Now, I've since paid off the car, so it's fine now. But, uh, you know, it definitely affected me for a while, uh, credit-wise. So, um, looking at all the kids coming in. We just had a bus coming to McDonald's, so all the kids are getting on the bus. In any event, um, so I went there. That first semester was the best for me because it was my first experience of adult life and just being on my own and not having to worry about, you know living up to anybody's expectations except my own. I just be my own person for the most part. And uh, I loved it. But at the same time, I didn't know how to deal with living by myself. So I spent more time, you know, hanging out with my friends and goofing off and stuff than I did actually doing homework and studying for tests and stuff like that. So needless to say, my grades weren't the best. And I got put on academic uh, suspension, probation, later on. Um, so I ended up having to file an appeal letter 
saying, you know, I'm sorry for, you know, low grades and stuff. I, you know, it's my first time being on, on my own, and you know, it's hard for me to deal with that sort of thing. But um, you know, I'm gonna work to improve myself and to, uh, you know, do better in, in school and stuff. And you know, I was really anxious during that whole winter break when I went back home because the, they sent the letter over there and my folks found out and it was just a whole thing. And uh, yeah, um, that didn't go over so well with them either. Um, but, you know, I made the uh, conscious choice to, uh, to do better in school. And for the first half of the next semester I did, like I went to every class, didn't skip a one, um, study for tests, did well, turned in homework, and was doing just exceptionally well. But um, at the time, that was around the time where uh, my stepdad and my mom married. So, um, whereas before, uh, from a financial aid standpoint, I had to uh, only list my mom as an income source because she wasn't married at the time. So, you know, I only really had to use her. Then when she married my stepdad, I had to count both of their incomes into the equation, and collectively they made, an, you know, enough to disqualify me from a lot of the grants and stuff I was getting. But they weren't really making enough themselves to be able to help me pay for college, or at least make adequate enough payments to let them allow me to continue going to college. So I was stuck between a rock and a hard place because I knew, like, even if I continued to work my ass off that semester, it wouldn't matter because I wouldn't be able to uh, to continue going. Um, and I just felt really defeated because, you know, I put forth this concerted effort to to do well in school. But because of financial aid situations, you know, it didn't matter if I did well or if I just gave up entirely. So I fell into a pretty bad, a pretty bad slump at that time, and I think it was my first experience with uh, with real depression. You know, I'd felt sad before, but you know, you get over it within a couple of days. But that was my first like legit experience with depression, and you know, I'd stay in my room pretty much all day, stay in bed. Um, I'd only get up to like look at stuff on the computer, go to the bathroom, uh, and then just eat. I wouldn't even talk to my friends or anything. <laughs> like I just, I was in such a bad, bad state, you know. Um, some days would be a little better where I'd hang out with them a little bit, but I was just so overcome with with depression and everything else, and. Uh, you know, I, I just felt so utterly needed. It's like, what did I put all this hard work into for? You know, because I wanted to to do good and continue on through college, but because of financial aid stuff, I won't be able to. So um, eventually, um, the end of the semester came, and I was just so ashamed of of everything that I ended up moving in with uh, with my cousins. Um, they were living in cold water at the time. And uh, it was just such a rough period for me. Um, I'm just gonna unplug the phone. Hold on. Cause I'm getting a little tired of the noise here. But anyway, I uh, moved in with my cousins. They were living in Cold at the time, like I said. And um, just trying to figure out what do I do next in life. Um, and that was. You know, those three years, I'd say, were a pretty dark period for me because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. You know, I knew I wanted to get back to college as soon as possible so I could graduate, get my degree, and, you know, get a job so I could get the hell out of that part of Ohio because I felt like it was just kind of a dead end for me. And, you know, even all these years later, I still feel like that. You know, like I said, it's, excuse me, it's a nice place to visit. I just don't want to stay here long term, you know. Um, and, uh, like I said, still feel that way. Um, and then, you know, as you guys know, I uh, eventually, um, joined the U.S. Navy in 2010 and set off on a journey that 
you know, literally changed my life. Um, you know, it gave me, gave me the opportunity to go back to school again and it gave me a whole new perspective on the world. Um, it wasn't always positive. There was a lot of real negative moments during my time in the service. Um, a lot of, you know, especially being overseas, just the frantic work schedule. Um, I developed a lot of anxiety issues, a lot of, you know, I've had panic attacks and, you know, it hasn't been easy, you know, even since I got out, I still go through some, some panic issues. Um, it's not as, not as much as it was when I was in, but, uh, you know, still some of the, some of the memories, you know, just kind of remain and, uh, you know, it's hard to get over stuff like that. You know, it's it's not easy. And, uh, you know, some days are better than others. Some days I don't even think about it at all. And then there's others where, um, you know, I can't even get out of bed. Can't even leave my couch. You know, there's days like that when I was in, in, in school. And it was, it was really tough, you know. Uh, but... <laughs> Didn't mean to, to open up this much uh, during this live stream. See, see what I said about making it a quick update video. It's like nearly a half hour. What the fuck? <laughs> and we ain't even have breakfast yet. Can I get a hello there? <laughs> Been watching some Infinite Waters. Uh, it's a good, good little motivational channel. Just help you feel good about life, even for just a couple moments. Um, definitely recommend subscribing to him, giving him a watch. Some of his stuff's a little corny and kind of cheesy with his, uh, his catchphrases and stuff, but I don't know, it's kind of comforting in a way. So, but in any event, let's kind of wrap this up a little bit. So, you know, did the whole Navy thing, got out in 2015, uh, went back to school 2016, nearly a decade after, you know, I started school at uh, Urbana. And, uh, you know, had some issues with the original major that I was in. Um, it just didn't really suit me anymore. So my grades weren't the best because a lot of the classes were a little too hard for me. <laughs> and I wasn't used to that. I, I didn't have that student mindset at the time. So it was just a lot of readjustment going on in my life at once. And I had to, like, deal with it, you know. Uh, so didn't do so hot the first semester decided to switch majors um, to film production I might have I think I did the management information systems for like maybe a semester or two I, I forget but in any event I ended up uh, switching majors and uh, did a lot better but then a lot of the uh, depression and anxiety and stuff started kicking in and that's when things started uh, going a little downhill for me because uh, you know it's uh, you know because I had I had the time to to mentally unpack a lot of what was going on in here that I just kind of put off to the side because of you know we gotta do things you know when I was in the military, it's like, we, you can't, you don't have time to dwell on a lot of that stuff. You know, you have to be constantly on all the time. But when you're in college, especially if you're in like a, some kind of fine arts degree or something like that, um, you, you get a lot of free time. I will say that. I think part of the challenge with um, an arts communication, whatever type of degree, is the discipline to continue to go to classes and stuff because it is... In a lot of cases, it's almost like too easy in, in most cases. Um, not all the classes are super easy, but you know, you have to have the discipline to go to them all the time and to do the homework and all that kind of stuff because you know, in a lot of ways it seems, like I said, just too easy and you're just like, eh, whatever, I'll just wing it, it's fine. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's part of the discipline, <laughs> I guess, that I'd I'd lost when I got out of the military. Um, but like I said, the main contributor to my failings then was D 
dealing with a lot of the depression and anxiety uh, from my military life. And uh, I had time to unpack it, so, you know, it was really difficult for me to deal with, especially since I didn't have a good local support network. I think if I had a good local amount of friends and stuff to talk to about these things, even if it was just to go on a short little rant about it, I think it would have done a lot better and gotten over it, you know, a lot faster. But, you know, it still was of that. I can fucking do this. And I can charge forward and I don't need no help and all this kind of stuff. And when I did reach out for help, uh, the help wasn't really adequate, I felt. Uh, it was just basically, you know, best case scenario was just somebody to talk to. That was it. Which, you know, it did help. But it didn't really give me any kind of solution things I could work on to, to help, help allevi alleviate my, uh, my feelings of anxiety and stuff, or at least give me some, some kind of step to, uh, to move forward. Um, it was just basically a soundboard for me to talk about stuff, and, you know, it just, it wasn't really well equipped for someone like me, I don't think, you know, it was just not the right fit, so... Eventually, I decided to transfer over to the community college in Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh, because, you know, their program was geared more towards uh, new media, like YouTube and stuff, versus, you know, Western, which was geared more, mostly towards uh, traditional media. Sorry for the noise that picks up in the mic. That's uh, somebody weird whacking. So... Anyway, uh, the community college is geared more towards uh, newer media versus traditional media from Western. Uh, so I went over there, really liked it. Um, but again, you know, it was just a lot of issues and stuff I was still going through at the time. And, you know, I just was trying to make it work. But, uh, you know, ultimately I came to the conclusion that I just, the area that I was in just wasn't the right fit, you know. I tried to, you know, change my habits and stuff, and that helped. Don't get me wrong, it did help, but uh, I felt that thinking over the situation and everything, I just wasn't in the right environment for me. And, you know, that was something that, you know, honestly, I should have looked up before I even applied to Western was the environment and the lack of a local support network or just anybody, really. <laughs> I didn't know anybody in Kalamazoo uh, when I first went out there, so it was a little scary. And, you know, kind of lost my train of thought. But uh, in any event, um, you know, I decided at the end of 2017, I'm just really burnt out, and I just I just want to take a break from from school. Just want to gather myself take a take some time off to kind of figure out the next the next plan you know and uh, also the video editing stuff was going really well for me so that <laughs> that didn't really help uh, academically anyway plus you know not blaming my clients or anything that that's all on me because I didn't uh, manage my time properly and I think you know had I managed my time better you know, would have turned out a lot better. And now I'm in a much better position with my clients to where I can, you know, if I'm starting up school or something like that, I can tell them, you know, hey, I'm in class most of the week and whatever, so, you know, I won't be able to get stuff out to you as fast as I used to. But, you know, still be willing to work on it and stuff like that. And, you know, it's always good. It's a good side hustle. Want to build it into something more. And I felt like, you know, we're definitely getting there. So, um, you know, that got yeah, uh, <laughs> words. Um, but I decided to just kind of get out the rest of my lease because I talked with my folks and they were starting up a production company of their own here in Wapak and they needed some help. So I figured, you know, 
it, it just kind of worked out that way where you know I want to take a break from school for a little bit to kind of figure myself out give myself a break to get my head on head on straight and uh, you know help them out with their production company whatever else and so I just stayed the rest of my lease my apartment just worked at McDonald's to help cover rent and stuff and then you know once my lease was up I just moved back here and uh, you know it's had its own you know highs and lows um, and uh, you know it's not easy for me making money out here because it's not a lot of job opportunities out here as there are in the, the bigger cities and of the job opportunities that are around here they don't really pay a whole lot so you have to make do with what you have and uh, trying to work more with uh, doing freelance stuff kind of help cover some other expenses and save up and all this other stuff which basically leads me to um, you know like where we're going and uh, you know the main thing is um, gotta take some water there's six buck right now but anyway uh, the main thing is that um, you know I do want to go back to school and I do want to get my degree I want to make this work so I can go to Japan and uh, get a job and just you know live out there I don't know if I'm gonna live out there like for the rest of my life you know like some people ask you know are you gonna die in Japan um, I don't know you know I don't know how long I want to live out there for you know I might only be out there for a couple of years before I decide to come back to the States but in any event I do want to make a good go of it living out there and I really enjoyed my time when I was stationed out in Yokosuka as far as you know being out and about in Japan not so much the uh, the work not so much the work work life that was uh, that was not a fun time but the other stuff was pretty good and I want to do more of it and especially now since I'm no longer in the military I don't have to worry about a lot of the restrictions that I had being a member of 7th Fleet out there. So that's nice. <laughs> I can just do whatever I want, you know, within within legal limitations, of course. But, uh, you know, I'm a lot more free to do what I want than I was before. Ugh. And I'll actually be living in Tokyo versus, you know, just visiting for the weekends. So I'll be able to explore Tokyo a lot more, be able to network with more people, be able to do more with uh, my current video editing clients as well, you know, whether it's being, you know, a second cameraman, just an extra pair of hands to help with, uh, with camera angles and stuff, whatever the case, um, you know, <laughs> it's always good to, to be able to help out and stuff and uh, do collabs and everything to help my own channels out. But, you know, I definitely feel, feel very positive about going back to Japan and uh, you know thing is some you know a lot of times these things take time so it's not you know not gonna be an overnight thing where I'm all of a sudden in Japan you know this has been several years in the making you know <laughs> so you just got to have patience you know it's something I've learned you know watching watching guys like Gary Vaynerchuk you know you're always talking about patience and setting yourself up for success and that's what I feel like I'm doing right now like a lot of people might think that you know I should just directly apply to these universities and come back to Japan as fast as I can and don't get me wrong I'd fucking love to be there at, like the start of 2019 <laughs> that'd be fucking awesome but I gotta put myself in a position to win and I feel like I need to go to community college first get some you know some credits under my belt get some uh, you know some good grades and everything set up so that way I can show to the universities I'm applying to overseas that you know I'm doing good and uh, I want to do good things out in Japan and also you know prove to myself that I can do it because like I said I've gone through a lot of failures in school and you know I'm I'm not getting any younger, you know, I'm 32.
32 what you gonna do so uh i gotta gotta really make this count because uh you know i want to finally finally get that paper and even if the paper doesn't lead to jobs or anything at least i can kind of sit back and say that i fucking i fucking got the paper it took me forever to do it but i finally i finally finished what i started it just you know sometimes it takes a minute <laughs> just got to have patience and perseverance and uh, determination to uh, to make it happen you know and uh, that's about that's about all I want to say in this video we've covered I think we've covered a lot of ground in this live stream it's been, definitely definitely helped me help me out kind of you know on air or to air out some uh, some stuff that I've been keeping in for a while so if this seems kind of like a random ranty, whatever, um, you know, <laughs> kind of is what it is. But it's definitely helped me out and um, helped me air these thoughts and stuff. So at nearly 45 minutes in, I think we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap things up here. So um, this is a quick little recap. Um, looking at local community colleges here in Ohio to. Uh, get some credits and boost my GPA up a little bit before I apply to some schools overseas in Japan. I'm looking at applying at Lakeland University and uh, Temple as well, depending on GPA and stuff. But uh, most likely just going to apply to Lakeland, actually. Uh, maybe transfer to Temple later, but uh, I think we'll just apply to Lakeland for now and get that going. And uh, you know, start my new life in Japan as a, as a, uh, not a foreign exchange student, but as a study abroad student, veteran, whatever, whatever all labels you want to, want to put on the thing. Um, just go back to Japan and start my new life out there, you know, being out and about in Tokyo, especially is going to be a blast. Um, I can't wait to go back out there, see my friends out there, see some of the places I saw during the first run of Andy Japandi. Um, I, I so cannot wait to start up season two of Andy Japandi. Um, I had a lot of fun making the first season. Um, looking back on it though, some of the videos were, you know, kind of so-so quality, but you know, that was nearly four or five years ago, <laughs> looking back on it now. And I've since improved myself as an editor and I'm willing to put in more more effort into my videos now versus then um and i just can't wait to go back out there and make some videos in the old yaban so anyway that said guys this is the andy san sign for now thanking you guys for tuning into this really long ass live stream that's just recently passed the 45 minute mark and I want to thank you guys for watching my other stuff and being patient with me uh, with the um, archive updates from, you know, my archive <laughs> from on this channel. I know there's not a lot of people that like the older videos, but again, it's, it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the journey. And it gives you guys a chance to see some of the older stuff that, you know, depending on when you start following me, you may, may not have seen. So... For better or worse, again, if anything, I'm doing it to show off my progress as a filmmaker, as a YouTuber, whatever else, even just as a person, because, you know, I'm way different now than I was back then. And, you know, even I see it in some of uh, some of these recent uh, archive updates. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Oh, yes, Daddy. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, hi, Andy here. And uh, we're alive, pal. So uh, here we are once again at uh, fucking McDonald's, uh, McDonald's here in Ohio. Um, just because, like I said before, it's got really good Wi-Fi. And I can it even in the parking lot. So that's nice. Um, does get a little spotty sometimes with the internet connectivity. But for the most part, it's good. And I don't have to worry about people looking at me too much uh, when I'm talking to my cell phone. <laughs> Which was not the case uh, over 10 years ago when I first started doing YouTube. So, 
Um, I'm not sure exactly what I want to talk about in this uh, in this live stream. It's not really so much of an update per se, but just kind of uh, kind of I guess a little bit of uh, a little bit of introspection because you know the fall time. Uh, you know, gets me feeling very introspective and just makes me, gives me time to, uh, to review what I've done this year and just lately in general. And, you know, the weather getting colder, it kind of brings me more into this, this introspective mood. I don't know if anybody else does this, but this is just a certain ism that I have, I guess. Uh, so today I actually came into McDonald's way earlier. I had a bunch of other stuff I had to do. So just to show you how long I've fucking been here working on stuff. Um, I got breakfast from McDonald's. I got a friggin', uh, I don't usually get breakfast at McDonald's, but when I do, it's always a steak, egg and cheese bagel. Phenomenal stuff. Uh, it's definitely not healthy. <laughs> But uh, it's definitely good stuff to have every once in a while. And I also got a large coffee with, uh, with two creams. Uh, you know, I don't really like adding sugar to it. And I think there's plenty of sugar in the cream as it is. So, you know, I think it's fine. Uh, I still got a little bit in there. Uh, but I forgot how blazingly hot regular McDonald's coffee was. So I had to go back in and get a little cup of ice and uh, work on that. So in any event, and that's about all I want to say about the war in Vietnam. So let's get on with this uh, this kind of stream of conscious uh, live stream <laughs> sort of video. Um, I really do enjoy doing these because there's no there's no pressure for me to record something, take it back, edit out all the ums, the ahs, the you knows, and the, just kind of the parts that don't really go anywhere. And it just gives me just gives me a platform to just talk about what I want in a more, for me anyway, for a more uh, natural format in in live streaming versus recording for a video where I have to hit certain marks and make sure my words are punchy and I'm looking at the camera, which, you know, I'm not doing here. Is, you know, I just like looking around. That's just kind of how I am. But in any event, um, so today, I guess we'll start by uh, talking about why I'm still here. Why am I still still making YouTube videos after all these years? Uh, for those who don't know, um, I started my journey on YouTube way, way early into YouTube's life. Um, I originally found the site. Um, I was going to ITT Tech at the time in Dayton, back when ITT Tech was still around. And uh, <clears throat> during, you know, in between classes or like during break periods that we'd have during class, um, my friends and I would look up just funny videos online. And keep in mind, this was like early to mid 2000s. So the quality was definitely not where it is today. And a lot of it was, you know, just home movie style, America's Funny Home Video style stuff, you know. And it's you know a lot of people getting punched in the junk or skateboard fails or early versions of sketch comedy from like college humor and stuff like that. So it was a lot of a lot of very early viral hits. Um, but eventually we came across this site called YouTube, and uh, just to give you guys an idea of what uh, the online video sharing platform and whatever else was like back in the day. Um, um, for most other sites, you had to submit your video to the site and it would go through like an admin or a curator or something like that. And if they liked your video, then they would put it up on the site. But it's not like it is with YouTube where you just you can upload pretty much anything short of copyright stuff and whatever. But excuse me but that was kind of one of the key points with YouTube back in the day was that anybody could upload virtually anything and uh, you know created this sense of community versus all the other video sharing websites which were just kind of people are just kind of coming and going really fast you know they'd watch really short clips of like cat videos or like I said people getting punched in the junk or whatever a lot of the early viral video hits out there um, and then they would just leave and either go to another site or do something else 
Uh, but with YouTube, you know, because you had people uploading on a fairly consistent basis, um, but back then's consistent basis was like maybe once a week or once every other week. It's a lot different now, people uploading daily and stuff, but um, since you had people uploading on a consistent basis, um, you had a lot of the early, early vlogging scene as well. And uh, the people that inspired me to to even just get an account on YouTube because you know for the longest time I just watched videos I never really signed up for an account because I felt like I didn't really need to but with more and more people um, you know joining the YouTube platform and making their own content and stuff I felt that um, you know I wanted to leave some comments on videos I never really thought of making my own stuff because I didn't have the camera equipment or anything like that to uh, to work on or to use or even the editing software or even a powerful enough computer to put it all together. Um, I just wanted to start up an account to leave comments on people's videos that I thought were really interesting to interact with them. And that was the other, the other big hook for me on YouTube was, you know, not only seeing people uh, post consistent content uh, about whatever it is they're into. Uh, but it was also that interaction between the uh, the viewers and the creators. You know, it was that relationship that really, you know, solidified YouTube for me. And it's, you know, something that I think has kind of been a little bit lost in the sauce of this whole... Uh, you know, making money online thing that a lot of creators are pursuing and on them or wanting to make money. But I think that, you know, they're focused too much on the money and need to focus more on just making something that they're into. And then eventually if they market it right, you know, the money will come. But, uh, you know, for me, uh, back in 2006, I signed up for my, okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that disconnection there. Thing. But in any event, like I was saying, uh, I first signed up for a YouTube account back in 2006. Um, that was my first channel, which was, you know, just known as Andy San. And I had that channel for over 10 years before I decided to move all my stuff over to uh, another channel. And then, you know, earlier this, you know, like a couple, like what, a month ago or so, some change, something like that, uh, that I decided to move or split my content, but <laughs> we're getting a little ahead there. Um, but I signed up for my first YouTube channel back in 2006. Um, it was originally just to, to leave comments on other people's videos and also to subscribe to them, which was another new feature that YouTube had that the other video sharing sites didn't have, was the ability to subscribe to um, people on the site so whenever they posted a new video you get a little email update saying you know hey Tokyo Kuni uploaded a video or you know Tokyo Swan uploaded a new video you should check it out I'm like all right cool so that way I don't have to like constantly go back to their page and refresh and be like did they upload a new video yet what's going on <laughs> um, it's kind of funny thinking about that now considering the whole YouTube subscriber issues that we've been having the past couple years uh, it was a simpler time on YouTube. Um, you know, it's just people didn't really know what the platform was, so they were just kind of figuring that out themselves. Um, for me, like I said, I really enjoyed a lot of the uh, the early uh, J vlogging scene, which is Japan vlogging scene. Uh, a lot of the early players, like you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, Tokyo Kuni, uh, Tokyo Swan. Um, really enjoyed their videos and even still you know over a decade later I like going back and watching their stuff now granted it's uh, it's not in HD you know 1080p or even 4k or anything like that it's very low resolution but I just like the uh, just kind of the heart that those those videos had you know it's just it wasn't like you know they made it slick or you know made it tailor-made to you know get views and clicks and you know they weren't throwing in the whole like be sure to like comment and subscribe to this channel for more updates and 
all this kind of crap that you see YouTubers do nowadays, which is kind of annoying to me. Um, you know, when I do it, it's just at the end, and even then, you know, it's just a couple seconds. I don't front load stuff. I don't like doing that. I've tried doing it, but I just, I don't know, I felt scummy doing it, so I stopped. <laughs> uh, but in any event, um, you know, watching those early creators live their lives out and about Japan, um, got more into that scene as more and more people were picking up cameras and doing their thing around Japan and then you know as you know as Tokyo is you know a city that kind of a lot of people come and go you know I saw a lot of people you know leave Japan and you know they just didn't pick up video after that you know they just kind of faded into obscurity and you know just stopped making videos stopped doing anything on YouTube so just, channels just kind of died out which is you know to me kind of sad you know because you know and thankfully that's not as much of a case as it was back in the day you know back in the day if you left japan you know your channel was pretty much doa you know you know people just stopped making videos after they left japan uh but thankfully that's not so much the case anymore there's plenty of channels out there that continue to make content even after they left Japan. I mean, look at my channel, <laughs> for what it's worth. Um, recently, we, this particular channel, uh, my life, personal life channel, um, just recently passed uh, 10 subscribers, which I know might not seem like much to some people, but, you know, for a channel that is, for now, uploading primarily my older content, which, you know, like I said, isn't in fancy HD or isn't really well put together, you know, that's definitely an accomplishment. And I know that there are some people out there that don't like the older videos. Um, I've been seeing a lot of thumbs down on the uh, the archive updates, uploads and whatever. Um, but you know, it kind of is what it is. I know some people just want to see the new stuff and I think that's why I've been pushing to make more of these live streams more often. Just so that way you guys get a little taste of uh, of both you know so if you don't like the old stuff you know you got some newer stuff to uh to watch um it's kind of giving you a little bit of the best of both worlds i guess <laughs> but you know it kind of is what it is and uh you know the reason i'm pu uh, putting up those those old videos on this channel um is you know for one to show that i'm uploading consistently on this channel which is good um and uh, gives you guys something to, to watch during days or whatever that I don't have time to put together something or I'm busy and I can't come out to McDonald's and live stream <laughs> or whatever the case. Um, yeah, so there's always like a constant stream of, of content with that channel, this channel rather, I should say. Um, so at least you guys have something. And also, to establish the context of what types of videos I was making back in the day and to show the progression that I've made since you know I feel like I've I've really developed as you know a, a, a creator I guess on the YouTube platform um, you know I've really helped hone my chops uh, especially doing freelance video editing that's helped me tremendously because before you know, I was doing primarily just all A-roll stuff. You know, I never, never incorporated B-roll, you know, because I was kind of of that old school YouTuber mentality of, you know, if you just post it, they'll come. And, uh, you know, that's good for some things like these live streams, I hope. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for some things, it's best to have little B-roll shots in there to kind of help break up the monotony of the, uh, of the shot. You know, it can't just all be face, all talking head stuff all the time. <laughs> Lens flare. But anyway, um, <clears throat> oh, I got the coffee burps. Sorry. <laughs> We're live, pal. But anyway, uh, what was I saying? But yeah, um, doing the freelance video editing thing has really helped me um, know what to look for when it comes to shooting B roll and how to place it within a scene and all this kind of stuff. And 
you know, I can't wait to get back out to Japan to make the kind of videos that I want to make, you know, not just, not just for my own channel, but also for other channels as well, you know, for my current clients and, you know, prospective clients as well. Uh, really, I really do enjoy making videos and, you know, that's the thing, man. You know, there's, there's been a lot of, uh, adversity that I've had to face in, in my journey on YouTube, you know, I went from just simply being a commentator on videos to picking up the camera myself, making videos that, you know, if you've seen some of the, the recent archival updates, you know, those videos really aren't all that good. Uh, the quality is pretty shit, but, uh, you know, keep in mind that was, you know, how it was back in the day. But, you know, just the overall pacing and everything just wasn't really all that good. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm uploading those videos to establish that context, to show that, you know what, when you first start off doing anything, whether it's YouTube or whatever, you're not going to be good. You're going to suck. In my case, I sucked out loud. You know, I was fucking terrible and some may say i'm still terrible but, but i digress um uh you know so if uh if you're worried about you know people making fun of you saying that your videos suck and this that and the other you know don't listen to them man it's just you know there's uh there's a difference between like constructive criticism which says you know hey It'd be cool if, you know, you stabilized your shots or got like a tripod or, you know, maybe showed some more B-roll or, you know, clean up your audio or you know, stuff like that. You know, that's that's actionable stuff that you can work on. Uh, but, you know, just people just saying that your videos suck and, you know, whatever, you know, it's just who cares? You know, you're not making the, your videos for them. If they say your videos suck, like <laughs> where's the uh, the upside in trying to please somebody who's obviously not going to be pleased because they don't like your videos to begin with, you know? So, kind of is what it is, you know? And I say that a lot because it's kind of an Ohioism, you know? It is what it is. <laughs> Damn, lens flare. Freaking, my name it. Okay, there we go. That's a comfortable position without the lens flare. Uh, so, yeah, you know, you just got to keep on doing it. And, uh, you know, for me, I was doing YouTube, you know, back before it was cool to do. You know, I was doing it. I remember, you know, when I got to my first ship, the USS Kurtz, um, a lot of people, not only on my ship, but even within my own division, didn't really know what to make of my whole video making hobby, you know. They thought it was just really, really dorky and really nerdy. And, uh, you know, they just thought it was, you know, just a <laughs> hopeless dork for doing it. But, uh, you know, when I got to my next ship, that's around the time that YouTube started to get some more mainstream attention, started getting more into the, the cultural zeitgeist. And, uh, you know, my next ship, you know, my last ship actually <laughs> turned out to be um was a lot more you know they weren't really supportive they just were like oh, okay you know <laughs> they were just kind of like whatever you know it wasn't that big of a deal to them versus you know my first ship which you know they didn't like it at all <laughs> they thought it was super dorky and stuff but you know on the plus side i actually have you know video of my entire naval career from 2010 2015 so you know for better or worse i can go back and look at all those videos and you know see myself during that time you know i get to see the different ports that we'd hit and you know just kind of see where i personally was at that time you know what i was thinking what i was worried about what i was focused on you know what plans i had for the future at that time and, you know, that's another reason why I still make videos is to establish a legacy and to show, um, to give myself some sort of progress, you know, because I can go back and look at some of my earlier videos, even just a year ago, and just see how far I've come and, you know, what I've done since then and everything, you know. And uh, <laughs> if anything, this has gotten a lot shorter, so that's that's a plus, you know. I tried tried out a new hairstyle, didn't work, so it is what it is. Ended up just looking like a fat lesbian. <laughs> but 
but you know, case of raw. So yeah, that's why I really enjoy making videos even today because you know, this whole demonetization thing on my editing channel, you know, kind of got me thinking about, you know, where do I see myself going moving forward? And, uh, you know, it just, for some people, it would kind of take the wind out of their sails and be like, well, I think I'm gonna give up this whole YouTube thing. But, you know, I felt like, you know, I needed to, to sort of change my strategy around and, uh, you know, work on some other things. And, you know, just work on myself, basically, because I felt like, you know, I wasn't really in the right position to, to succeed you know, not just on YouTube, but in life, you know. And that's something I've been dealing with, you know, since I moved back to Ohio was, you know, it's, don't get me wrong, it's not all bad. And, you know, I do enjoy um, being back in familiar territory and hanging out with the family and stuff like that. But, you know, for me, this isn't the environment that I need to be in to, you know, to grow as a person and also you know, shoot the videos that I want to shoot, meet up with the people I want to meet up with and work with them, collab, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's just, this ain't it, Chief. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and even if I lived in a bigger city like Columbus or whatever, that'd be better. But at the same time, again, you know, it's not something that I really want, you know. Um, so... That's why, you know, there's motivation to, to move back to Japan. You know, I, it's been something I've been wanting to do since I was a little kid. And I'm really grateful that I got to do that when I was in the, in the Navy. You know, from 2013, 2015. Um, I really enjoyed the Japan experience. Uh, didn't so much like being stationed out there, as I've talked about in many videos. Had a lot of really troubling times. But... You know, outside of work, I really enjoyed Japan. It just, I don't know, I just i just felt, I felt like that was the only place where I could like 100% be myself without worrying about people judging me. Because, you know, it didn't really matter where I was at in the States. I always felt like, to some extent, people were kind of judging me, you know, it's just whatever, you know, but... In Japan, I didn't really feel judged so much. You know, if anything, it was just, you know, a case of, oh, a foreigner, <laughs> you know, a white guy. And that's about as far as it got. So, <laughs> you know, I was just like, okay, so like, no matter what I do, no matter how much I try to fit in and to assimilate with the culture, you know, I'm still just going to be, oh, white guy. So, <laughs> you know, it kind of gave me that, um, what Aaron Hansen would call uh, the fuck it energy, basically. Um, just gave me the, the motivation to to go out and just say fuck it, you know? People aren't gonna, you know, they're, they're gonna see me as just the white guy anyway, so it doesn't matter how much I try to fit in, I'm still just gonna be the white guy. So, uh, might as well just say fuck it and be the best me that I can because, you know, who cares, right? But, you know, so I ended up, you know, dressing in, in flashier attire, you know, versus here, which is like super conservative. So a lot of, you know, even the bright blue might be a bit much, but, uh, you know, a lot of neutral kind of darker colors. Um, that's kind of the attire for around here. Um, which is, you know, again, is another reason why I want to move because I feel like, you know, it's kind of stifling being here fashion wise because I don't want to stand out so much. Uh, whereas over there, I don't mind standing out a bit because I already stand out, you know, <laughs> you know, just by me being a white guy, I already stand out. So I might as well just kind of go all the way with it. And of course, you know, respectful to the culture and people and I'm not going to be like a fucking bag of douche out there. I can see so many other people being, um, but at the same time, you know, I'm gonna gonna do me and uh, dress how I want to dress and act how I want to act, you know, within legal limits of the law, of course. And 
like I said, you know, I felt like I was the most the most of myself out there. And I think that's one of the reasons why I want to go back. And it's something I haven't really talked about in the videos. You know, I've talked about how much I like, yeah. you know, the aesthetic of Japan, being able to network with people, collab with people, uh, just being back in that environment. You know, I've talked a lot about, about that, but I haven't really talked so much about the, you know, feeling like myself out there. You know, because that's that's one of the weird things about uh, living abroad that I've noticed was, you know, I feel more like myself being out there because I don't have to worry about the judgment of, you know, other Americans and stuff. And even if I do run into some expats, they're like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, it's still kind of like, I don't care because <laughs> they're just fucking oh, another random white guy. OK, whatever, dude, you know. <laughs> Um, and it was weird. I felt like oddly comforting or it was oddly comforting to me being, you know, even just on the train, like being the only white guy that I could see, you know, in the train cart. It's just, I don't know, it's something kind of comforting about it. You know, I didn't have to worry about people taking my shit or bothering me too much because, you know, a lot of Japanese people don't want to you know, mess with you if you're a, you're a gaijin, foreigner. Um, then there's some that are overly, you know, well, can I touch your hair? Can I touch your face? Oh my God, your nose is so big, you know. Uh, but I never personally ran across too many of those people. Um, it's mostly just people that just kind of wanted to get the fuck away from me. So I'm like, you know, some for some people, it may bother them that nobody wants to sit next to them on the train. For me, I'm like, fuck yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's right. Stay away from me. You know, I'm cool with that. You know, it's like Japan kind of gets the whole uh, introvert experience, you know, and uh, I drink my coffee, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting kind of low. Sorry. Oh, freaking the lens flare. But anyway, Japan kind of gets the whole. Uh, uh, introvert experience like I was saying sorry brain kind of stopped um, so you know they usually don't come up and bug me like uh, like Americans do you know people asking me for money or you know wanting to help me find stuff in the store and I'm like I'm just looking leave me alone <laughs> you know they with some of the stores you know they have like little store greeters so like the the most that they would do just you know the, you know all that stuff but, you know, whatever, you know, you just go about doing your thing, you know, and uh, you'll be fine. So, um, and even in Tokyo, where there's like a shit tons of people, <laughs> um, you know, you think somebody with uh, with social anxiety like myself and just being introverted and stuff, um, I would get bothered by being on crowded trains and in crowded places and stuff. But if you pick the spots right and you pick the right time, it's really not so bad. You know, there's some parts of Tokyo that I'm walking around in that it feels like I'm not even really in Tokyo. It's like, I just feel like I'm in a small town or a suburb or something like that. Uh, but then there's some places that really fucking raise the old Ajita, as it were. You know, Harajuku is a prime example of that. That's one of... I always dreaded going to Harajuku because there's always shit tons of people there and I remember even going there during fucking golden week which is the worst like straight up fucking uh ugh, so many people and I think that was right around the time that I actually recorded my Harajuku video um you know just with the GoPro showing like just a sea of people oh man social anxiety was at a high level that day but you know I've learned to combat that to some to some aspect um, most of them like I said you know they don't really want to bother me so they're just kind of going about their own way so as long as I got the headphones on and I'm kind of focused on where I want to go and stuff or just focus on little signs and stuff not so much on them then it kind of lowers lowers the old Ajita a bit um, so that's kind of how I get around, you know, a crowded place like Tokyo with crippling social anxiety. 
<laughs> Instead of crippling depression. Like, I got that, but, uh, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. Um... Like I said, this uh, this live stream, I didn't really have a, a planned topic or anything, despite what the title says, you know, why well, I'm still making videos. Um, you know, I just want to kind of make it a bit more freeform, just kind of talk about some things that I hadn't really talked about before, you know, and like I said, I enjoy making videos because I enjoy, I enjoy the process, you know, whether it's making my own stuff or, you know, especially in making other people's stuff, you know, it's just the process of finding the video by putting all the pieces together and how to put those pieces together to make something coherent. And it's, it's a lot of fun, you know? It's a lot like, to me, what programming was back when I was going to IT Tech. Um, I remember my friends and I were just staying in class, you know, sometimes we'd, you know, skip breaks, working on coding projects and stuff. We might, you know, some of them might sneak out for a quick smoke, but come right back. And we'd just be grinding on this fucking project and, you know, debugging it and stuff. But when the program ran how it should ran, how it should run, when everything worked, it was just such, such a satisfying feeling. And I get that. I get that same feeling whenever I put together a video. It's just like, okay, you gotta get all the pieces together, make sure the video's not buggy or whatever, and just kind of hone in on the parts that aren't like overall shaky and, you know, get the nice smooth movements, you know, put in a lot of warp stabilizer in some cases, um, you know, and, uh, you know, just putting it all together, finding the right song, making sure the, the audio is nice and crisp and leveled and you know just putting it all together man it's a, it's a wonderful experience and despite my many setbacks you know demonetization for my one channel being one of the most recent ones um i still even after all these years and after all these different setbacks i still enjoy making videos and that's the thing you know I'm not gonna stop doing this until I don't enjoy making videos anymore. And you know, I've been been on YouTube for going on 15 years now, which is <laughs> tremendous to say. Uh, you know, and I don't feel like stopping anytime soon. Now, the frequency might change as you know, life happens and motivation happens or doesn't happen in my case, uh, but. I still enjoy making videos. I still enjoy putting together other people's videos. And for now, I feel like that's not going to change. But, you know, if it does, that's when I'll know I'll, I'll have to hang it up. But for now, I'm going to keep on going strong. So, I think I've rambled and raved long enough about why I enjoy making videos, why I want to go back to Japan a little bit and uh, other things so yeah if you made it this far in the live stream let me know in the comments down below in the boopy boops uh what type of or just like what else you want me to talk about basically because you know like i said i really do enjoy doing these live streams because i don't have to worry about um you know just uploading you know or like taking the video back home, downloading it, and uh, cutting together stuff. And, you know, I don't have to worry about cutting out the ums, the ahs, the you knows. It's just just a stream of conscious rant type video. Um, I don't want to, you know, I still want to have the well put together videos as well. But these are, if anything, they're really helpful for me. You know, it's almost like therapy in a way. But anyway, let me know in the comments down below, in the boopity boops, what other stuff you guys want me to talk about. And uh, I'll do my best to uh, to oblige to that. But for now, guys, this is Andy San signing off for now. Like I said, <laughs> thank you guys for watching this long ass live stream as well as my other live streams. And also want to especially thank you for watching my archive videos. Focus, G, focus. Damn thing, come on. There we go. Okay. Anyway, I want to thank you especially for watching my archive videos. Uh, even though I know there's somebody going around thumbing them all down, so boo. <laughs> but 
you know, it's all part of the process, man. It's all, all to give you guys the context of, you know, I've been making videos for fucking years and years. They weren't all the best. Some may, st some may say they're still not the best. <laughs> But, um, you know, if anything is to show the progression I've made from, you know, 2008, 2009 to today, 2018, woo. <laughs> so definitely felt like I've come a long way since then. And uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me on that journey whenever you, you know, subscribe to my channels over the years. And uh, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm such a fucking ham for those damn thumbnails, yo. But anyway, hey guys, Andy here. And once again, yes, we're at good old McDonaldo, uh, friggin' McDonald's. Uh, once again on on the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi. Um, just got done. Well, not just got done. Shit, it's like three o'clock. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I'm just sipping some uh, French vanilla iced coffee because your boy's a basic bitch sometimes. But it's actually pretty nice. And I can get essentially a large coffee for a dollar, even though they have large hot coffees for a dollar now. But the iced coffee has more caffeine in it. And, you know, if I was really super, you know, wanted like every last drop of caffeine, I'd probably get it like plain, but eh. I need a little bit of cream and stuff to kind of, you know, make sure the stomach's not all upset. Because that's, that's something I noticed as uh, as I've gotten uh, older. Is that, you know, fucking, I can't have black coffee like I used to. Shit really wrecks my stomach. And uh, let's see. I think we're going to try something a little different today. I'm going to go into the passenger side here. I should have... Before I set up the stream, sorry. Uh, it's just something I was thinking about. Um, let me just move some things around. But it's still pretty early in the stream, so I think it's I think it's okay. Yeah, let me just move everything over. So I'm just gonna set this phone right here, and I will be shit, <laughs> and I'll be right back. Like two seconds. All right. Yeah. Oh, Dennis. Yeah. Woo. All right. Damn. Let's, uh, hold on. <laughs> Your boy's prepared for this live stream, let me tell you what. Uh, just got to shut this for now because, uh, I don't know. That, that lens flare is coming in pretty hard. Ah, this is nice. <clears throat> Much nicer. We have. Ah, oh, alright, cool. So, top channel, low channel. Alright, cool. Get that. Oh, hey, what up, Dilbert? How you doing? Oh, friggin' boat coffee? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shit was fucking. Shit was fucking rank. Even, uh. You know, fuck. Ugh. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's why I stocked up on a lot of uh, canned coffee uh, before we would go out to sea. You know, you know, there'd be some people that have like friggin' huge packs of it in their rack or in other storage spaces. <laughs> we had one sonar tech in particular who was very uh, particular about his George coffee, and he still kind of is, and that's kind of a, a nice little trait he has. One of his welcoming things is. Uh, you know, when you first check in, uh, he gives you a warm can of Georgia coffee. I always, always thought that was just kind of a neat thing, you know. It's just, you know, as a way to greet somebody. And he's a, he's a salty boy, let me tell you what. But, uh, you know, he's got a lot, a lot of knowledge. And, you know, if you get past the, you know, kind of the old man grumpiness, you know, he's definitely a, a fountain of knowledge. Just a oops, ankle's kind of itchy, but anyway, just a nice person to, to get some, uh, to just kind of listen to all his sea stories because he's been in the Navy for a hot fucking minute. 
But in any event, you know, yeah, I do miss the uh, Japanese black coffee. You know, even if it was canned coffee, which, you know, it's not gourmet, it's not like super high tier coffee, but, you know, it doesn't upset my stomach like, uh, like the black coffee here in America does. I just, I, it's just, I don't know, like even if I buy it at a coffee shop, it just like destroys my stomach. Whereas if I get like the cheap ass, you know, dollar for a gallon of black coffee from, in a can from Japan, you know, be very rare and it would have to like my stomach would already have to be upset in order to get upset at the black coffee you know I remember you know I had a, a can left over and I found it one day and uh, yeah, I never had Turkish coffee so I don't know but uh, I remember I had a can of black coffee left over I was looking through some stuff the other day actually this was several months ago when I was still at my apartment but uh, I cracked it open because I was going to be moving soon. I figured, ah, fuck it. You know, it's just black coffee. Don't worry about it, like, expiring or anything. I was going to move anyway, and I didn't want to fucking lug it. So I tried it, and even after, like, all these years, it was still, like, super smooth, and it's something I hadn't really appreciated about even just basic-ass black in Japan. Now, of course, you know, your mileage may vary depending on what type of black coffee you get. You know, if you get, like, the Georgia brand or whatever, you should be fine. Uh, those are usually a little more expensive than the other brands. Um, just got to keep in mind uh, price and everything. But you do get more coffee if you get the black coffee. You know, whether it's the slightly bigger cans or, like, the humongous cans for, like, 100 yen or 120 yen or whatever. Oh, man, I would love when... There'd be uh, freaking vending machine sales on the big black coffee. Because I usually get that and like maybe, you know, a little can of, you know, with just like a little bit of cream in the coffee. Just to kind of get me my, uh, my sweet fix. Ooh. So, damn. Ugh, back. It's killing me right now. But yeah. Oh, goodness. So, fuck, I'm spacing out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a random live stream. You know, I've been doing these these often just to, uh, something to do, you know? It's, uh, you know, something to keep me, keep me focused on uh, making stuff on YouTube. And something I've really been enjoying, you know? Uh, whereas with the whole, uh, demonetization situation going on with uh, with my other channel uh, for those who don't know uh, earlier this month my channel was demonetized for duplicate content quote unquote um, uh, my channel wasn't the only one there was a lot of other channels that were demonetized for the same same reason and like me they went out and uh, you know, tried to contact YouTube and you know the YouTube response bots would still give them the same basic ass answers and you know it's hard getting hold of a real human with these uh sorts of situations so you know, it just kind of kind of is what it is you know so i've been uh working on getting rid of some videos that could have potentially flagged the system you know like the star bomb video the roger swan remastered series stuff like that you know and uh, just working, mostly, I'm mostly working on this channel actually. You know, I've found it's actually a lot of fun to, uh, you know, have a channel just dedicated to my personal life and stuff like that. And so it's, uh, it's very freeing, so I don't have to worry about, you know, the, <laughs> the monetary viability of a vlog. And, you know, those, these, Vlogs and live streams and stuff really didn't make me a whole lot of money anyway. Like, you know, I'd probably get like maybe six cents on the first week it was released and then maybe a penny, penny or two after that, you know? So it just, it wasn't really financially viable for me to do it on that channel anyway. Because, yeah, for sure. 
yeah, it's definitely a learning curve with uh, with editing videos, you know. Um, but just gotta keep on doing it, you know. That's you know all I gotta say about that. Really, is just you gotta learn the uh, the software you're using, get some practice with it. You know, for me, you know, I'd used Sony Vegas for years and years, and it wasn't until when I started up uh, college again, once I got out of the military, that I got Adobe Premiere because you'd get a uh, like a student discount, uh, you know, if you signed up for it. So that was significantly cheaper than just getting it regularly. Um, so I ended up getting a student discount, and I figured, you know, I'm gonna edit videos, you know, professionally eventually. <laughs> So you know, I figured it'd be nice to learn Premiere because that's one of the big editing programs that everybody talks about. You know, they talk about Premiere, and Final Cut, and I didn't have an Apple anything, and nor do I want one. I fucking hate Apple. Um, but, you know, since I didn't have Apple, I couldn't use Final Cut. And the other one was uh, Avid. That's what a lot of uh, professionals use. And that's something else I'm considering maybe dabbling a little bit into possibly switch from from Premiere to that I don't know um, I'll have to play around with it for a little bit because again it's uh, it's about the same price as Premiere maybe a tad more and you know it is an older system so it doesn't have as many of the, the cool features that uh, that Premiere has but it is a lot more stable from what I've been told yeah and Final Cut you know it can be a good program um, a lot of people use it you know whether it's you know amateur stuff or even some pros use it actually you know even a lot of big time youtubers and filmmakers use final cut and again nothing wrong with it i just don't like apple <laughs> um i just don't like the way they do things it's just eh, just no <laughs> it's very very hand holdy and eh, I, I just don't like it i don't like the aesthetic of it but you know what if it works for you, awesome. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're wrong for using Apple. It just doesn't work for me. So that's all I got to say about that. You know, because I know some Apple fanboys are, you know, like, oh my god, if you're not running Apple, you're an idiot. Or some kind of Linux Windows machine or whatever the fuck else. Yeah, don't even get me started on Linux. Linux is a whole other fucking, fucking car shit, basically. Ugh. Although I have heard it's improved over the years, but when I was studying Linux uh, back when I was an ITD tech, long ass time ago, so again, things could have changed between then and now, but last time I used it was fucking Red Hat, and I just call it Ass Hat, because it was just so fucking terrible. Um, but again, could have changed, but I don't really have a use for it, so eh, whatever. Um, ah, fuck, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, the title of this, uh, this live stream, like, where were we at? Like, almost 13 minutes in, <laughs> has been kind of a random, random-ass start to the live stream, but, uh, you know, why I'm, you know, looking forward to, uh, to 2019, you know, and that is, uh, I feel like a big wave of change is coming in 2019. Um, 2018 was also a wave of change, but for a different reason. You know, I felt like 2018 was kind of my rebuilding phase in a lot of ways. You know, you could say rebuilding my channel into separate channels for the different type of content that I have. Uh, you could also say taking a break from college for a bit to kind of figure my shit out. You could also say that it was, you know, the start of my you know doing freelance video editing on a lot more of a of, of a serious basis versus just kind of helping out a friend every once in a while like it was doing before you know like with guys like you know eric surf six and brian from ramen adventures and a couple little one-off gigs here and there um i feel like i've really uh grown as an editor and you know i'm looking forward to working with those guys a lot more they're looking forward to working with me a lot more and 
and just progress from there. And I'm using the money that I make from doing freelance stuff to help cover little expenses as well as put away some money to save up to go back to Japan. Because, you know, as I've said in my other live streams, my goal is to go back to Japan uh, this coming year, 2019, whenever you're watching this, this live stream. Mm. <laughs> so, 2019, I feel, is the year that I'm going to be going back to Japan. Now, of course, stuff could happen. You never know, such as life. You know, I don't want to get your hopes up and say, you know, all this other stuff. But, you know, because, you know, stuff happens. Like I said, it's life, but, you know, I feel, you know, it's definitely, you know, Japan's definitely the next move, you know, it's just, I've debated over, you know, going to different places, you know, I've talked about going out to LA before, uh, even talked of going to, you know, a little bit, about going to other places within Ohio too um, but I just feel like you know what it, it, it doesn't really matter like where I'm at in the states you know maybe short of LA but LA is fucking expensive and a whole nother beast in and of itself um, and if I do decide to, to leave Japan to go back to the states it would definitely have to be in California somewhere whether it's LA or San Diego or something like that you know, because I just feel like I can't, you know, go back to America just to come back here to Ohio again. I just, it just doesn't, you know, whatever, you know, I just don't feel that that's where I'm going to go moving forward. I mean, unless, you know, something happens with my family, you know, like my mom gets sick or something like that, then, yeah, I'd definitely move back to Ohio. But, you know, even... If that's the case, it'll only be temporary until, you know, things get sorted, whatever way that 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 works out. But uh, you know, the goal would always be to either move back to Japan or to go back out to California. You know, because I felt like I felt like of all the states that I've been to, you know, the one I liked was California. Um, I know a lot of people complain about it. You know the high expenses and everything and yeah it's pretty fucking expensive living out there which again is why I don't want to do it right now because you know I'm not exactly pulling in the big bucks when it comes to video editing uh, just yet anyway um, so I think you know eventually as things progress with my video editing and stuff you know maybe LA would be a place for me to go eventually but you know I want to make sure I have a very solid ass portfolio a, a good stream of clients to where I'm not exactly like hunting down a job when I first arrive in LA and I have some money saved away for uh, for that um, so you know as far as when that will be or even if that will be I don't know but uh, to me uh, Japan seems like the place and uh, you know, that's where I want to go. I just feel like, you know, I'll be, I'll be happy out there. You know, it's just, you know, my my uh, my first time in Japan was uh, was a real trip, man. Like, uh, it was it was in a really weird time in my life because, in a lot of ways, you know, it was like the you know the tale of two cities. You know, it's the best of times and the worst of times. So. You know, being out in Japan, I felt in a lot of ways was the best of times and the worst of times, you know. It was the worst of times because I felt so unsatisfied with my job. The job that I had, you know, being stationed out in in Japan versus just like having an English job, an English teaching job or going to school or something like that. You know, it was a lot more stressful than, than doing something like that. And, you know, I would only be in port for maybe a couple weeks at best most of the time. Or if we were in for longer stays, you know, we'd often have to stay longer, you know, during the work days. And, you know, I'd also have duty every, you know, six days or so, depending on the schedule. And, you know, there's just, just a lot of stuff going on. So it was, it was very hectic. And, 
you know, despite, despite all that, I still was able to make videos of my time out there just two years, you know, and, you know, looking back on them, yeah, they're not the best of videos. You know, I could have done more, I could have done better, could have been better edited and stuff, but, uh, you know, I am glad I even made anything, to be honest, you know, considering how much of a time crunch I was on. Um, and it's always good to go back and look at those videos, to look at that time with me out in Japan. You know, the Andy Japandi series, you know, despite the quality, will always be very, very near and dear to my heart because that's the series that I've wanted to make ever since I started YouTube back in 2006. You know, that was the series I wanted to make. And, you know, looking back on it now, like I said, quality is kind of so-so. Um, but if anything, that goes to show just how much I've improved as, you know, a video editor and just a, a filmmaker, YouTube creator, whatever, in general, you know. And when I do go back to Japan, I want to make, you know, the best videos that I can. And, you know, having learned... Excuse me. Oof. Sorry, the triburpta, <laughs> friggin' coffee burps. But anyway, learning what I've learned uh, about filmmaking, you know, over these past couple of years since I've been back in the states, I want to apply that knowledge on, you know, my videos out in Japan. And since I'll be going to school, well, in communications, but you know, with an emphasis on film production, cinematography, videography, however the school wants to phrase it, because it's phrase a little differently between schools, but basically a communications degree, you know, being as generic as possible <laughs> with that. But, uh, you know, I also want to learn, you know, more techniques and just be around people, you know, of the industry and just in the field, because I feel like, you know, having people with that creative mindset really helps motivate me. And I noticed that with, uh, with a lot of the collabs and stuff that I did while I was out in Japan, you know, going to the, the Hanami party out in Tokyo, um, you know, even doing like the summer gatherings and just little one-off um, collaborations with YouTubers while I was out there, you know, whether it was even on video or not, because, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of offline, you know, just talking with people that I've had, you know, and just hanging out with with other like-minded people and uh you know i think that is what i really miss as well just being around people who are you know really into youtube and are doing it you know they're not just talking a big game you know they're actually out there making videos i'm just sorry there's a bee kind of flying around it's not in the car so but anyway um but yeah just uh being around people that uh, have that same mindset about YouTube and making videos and stuff and just the options for collaborating to me is really exciting because um, you know I just I know more people now and uh, definitely want to reach out and collaborate with uh, with more people out in Japan now versus then because my time was very structured and very restricted and even just what I could make videos on while I was active duty, I felt, you know, it was very restricted as well. You know, it's just, I was always worried about somebody, you know, about like filming something that I probably shouldn't or whatever, you know, it's was, was always a little, you know, so-so about certain things, but uh, not that I was doing anything wrong. It's just, you know, sometimes, you know, there might be like, it's usually just involving drinking basically <laughs> we'll just come out and say it you know there were some videos where I was drinking but since I wasn't drinking on camera and I wasn't like slurring my words or anything I felt it was okay and I wasn't really making a big ass out of myself <laughs> so I think I handled it pretty well um, that's basically what it was and you know if you're part of Seventh Fleet you're not supposed to do that or whatever but you know as long as it's within reason I think and that's something, you know, my chain of command has told me, so. Plus, I'm out now, so who the fuck cares? <laughs> I can go out and drink whenever I want. And that's another thing that's cool about Japan is I can fucking 
cruise and cruise. Oh, that's going to be so much fun going back to Yokosuka. I just thought of that. Oh, man. Going back to Yokosuka and drinking in the bars after midnight when fucking Liberty Expiration is. Or what if they have, like, alcohol restriction during the time that I'm there. Oh, man. It's going to be so fucking nice. Just sipping at, you know, sitting at the bar, just fucking sipping on too high while everybody else is, like, not around or whatever. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, that's going to be so nice. And plus, I got I to gotta hit up my old, uh, old places I used to go to when I would go out to the haunch. I wouldn't go out to the haunch very often because, you know, that's a place where a lot of military people go during their off hours. And, you know, you don't really know who's who without the uniform on. So, you know, I was always afraid of, you know, maybe shacking up with an officer or getting too familiar with a higher up or something like that you know because sometimes sometimes you can't tell you know even if they're from a different ship you know people talk so you know i was always worried about shit like that and also you know i just like to kind of do my own thing anyway and you know it's one of those things where since a lot of people from work went to that bar, like the last thing I want to talk about is fucking work when I'm done for the day. I just want to like go home and chill out or go to another spot in Japan and hang out or whatever. Um, that was just my thing. Um, but yeah, just really looking forward to 2019. I think, you know, 2018 has been a banner year for me as well in different ways. Like I said earlier, you know, it's been a banner year for me as far as, um, you know, doing the freelance video editing thing. Made a lot of great strides in making more videos for other people. Um, you know, just made better videos for people, in fact. Um, and, uh, you know, I've taken a break from college to kind of figure myself out. Um, came back home to Ohio to kind of give myself some time to think as well, to work on some other things. And, you know, doing doing all these things, which, you know, by themselves, maybe on the surface, don't seem like, like much or like really the direction I want to go. But I feel like, you know, there comes a time where all the the dots connect you know and i feel like that's starting to happen for me you know in going back to japan and uh you know learning all these different um cinematography techniques like i said and you know getting college and stuff all all lined up like i said you know it's getting me in the position to you know go out to japan to uh to start Andy Japandi season two. Oh my god. I have so many ideas for for fucking uh, season two of Andy Japandi. So many ideas. Um, I'm just so excited for it. Um, although, should I call it Andy Japandi season two? Because, like, technically, you know, every year should be a season, right? So, I started Andy Japandi back in 2013. And then 2014, I guess, would be season two. And then season three would be 2015 when I left. So I guess technically it would be season four of Andy Japandi. <laughs> uh, but we'll we'll figure out details and stuff like that later. Um, you know, the point being is that the Andy Japandi series is coming back. And it's coming back better than ever. Way better than ever. You know, I just... I have such... I have so many ideas for places that I want to go and people I want to want to collaborate with, you know, YouTubers and just, you know, people and places and, you know, obviously a lot of the the usual touristy parts of Tokyo as well. But I also want to go off some more to some more like off the beaten path sort of places, you know, places in Kanagawa, which I fucking love Kanagawa. I'm not gonna lie, it's what it's probably no, it's not probably it's definitely my favorite prefecture that I've visited so far. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love southern Japan as well, so definitely want to give give some love to, uh, you know, the, the Kyushu gang. Whoa, fucking B. <laughs> there. <laughs> Rather saying gang is a gang. <laughs> anyway, I told you, fucking B. 
Anyway, um, got to give some love to the Kyushu gang. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, going down there and visiting some people out there as well. You know, given the, the opportunity to do so, depending on their schedule and my schedule and stuff. You know, I'd love to, love to meet up with, uh, with Tino once again. Met up with him when he and Roman were out in Tokyo. Had a really nice chat. Um, you know, it really helped put, put into perspective a lot of uh, different things that I was going through at the time. And, you know, I do, I do miss, you know, good old Tino's words of wisdom from time to time. I mean, he's still doing his thing on YouTube, but it's more focused on, uh, you know, like English teaching and stuff like that, which, I mean, it's fine. But uh, I do miss the old, you know, Tino's words of wisdom <laughs> videos. Um, just like, you know, Kurt Bell, Softy Papa did back in the day. Um, definitely miss, you know, just kind of the, the elder statesman, you know, gathering everybody around the learning tree, teach them some life lessons. Ah, uh, man. You can make, like, seriously a, a really good channel doing stuff like that. Like a fucking killer-ass YouTube channel doing stuff like that but you know I don't know who'd be willing to do something like that I know I don't know <laughs> but I'm just putting that idea out there so if anybody's watching that wants you know to gather people around the learning tree teach them about life experiences and stuff and you have the wealth of knowledge from a life well lived I think you know you do really well on YouTube and you know even going back as far as the early days of YouTube you had the uh, what's his name geriatric 1927 or something like that the uh, the elder the grandpa youtuber who died well, spoiler alert <laughs> died a while ago but uh, he was one of the very early youtubers that made consistent content and just talking about life stories and you know giving life advice and stuff like that and I think you know, I think I could get get into something like that, but I, I really don't have the amount of, of life experience yet to really give, you know, credibility to what I say. I do have some experience, depending on what it is you're looking for, you know, like military experience, all that kind of stuff, and just going through some, some hard times in my life. You know. um, and, you know, just the... The pursuit of, uh, of my dreams, you know, the pursuit of happiness, I guess you could say. Because, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's what I want. I just want to be happy, you know. And uh, all the, you know, chasing the, 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 the degree, you know, transferring colleges, saving up money to go back to Japan, doing the videos when I'm out in Japan and stuff, you know, that's all you know, just the the finer details. But overall, I just want to be happy, you know? I just want to feel good about myself, feel good about what I'm contributing to this world. And, you know, I also want to feel like more of myself. And that's something I talked about uh, in the previous live stream was that I felt more myself felt like the most myself I've been in years being out in Japan because I just felt very unrestricted in some ways you know like when Liberty Call would go down and I'd head out to Tokyo or something for the weekend you know I just felt like I didn't have any uh, societal expectations because you know in Japan I'm just just another white guy so I'm already weird by default because I'm not like everybody else. And so, you know, being in that environment just somehow gave me the courage and the, the fuck it energy, as Aaron Hansen would say, to just go out and just be me because, you know, I'm already weird. Just, you know, if I try to blend in or just I'm already weird by default. So it doesn't matter what I do. People are still going to think I'm weird. So fuck it <laughs> you know um might as well be the most me that i can and plus i don't have any 
of the you know American judgment and stuff on me. I mean, granted, there might be some people on YouTube that'd be like, "Hey, you really shouldn't do that or wear that or that looks gay or that, whatever." You know how YouTube comments are. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and you know that's another thing. Fashion, it's a big one. Um, I know a lot of people may think I look very unfashionable or just kind of plain, but that's kind of the look in rural Ohio. You know, I don't want to, I don't feel like it should stand out too much living here, you know. It's just, you know, it's not the place to do that. Um, especially in a small town where people talk and stuff. Whereas in Japan, especially in Tokyo, fuck, there's too many people. Nobody gives a shit about that stuff. And plus, you know, it's, it's a land of high fashion anyway, so if anything, they may think, oh, that must be fashionable wherever that foreigner's at, so okay. <laughs> um, so it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, just looking forward to, uh, to finally living the life I want to live, you know? It's just, it's not without, you know, hard work, hustle, determination, and you know, all good things will come. You just gotta work for them. And, you know, do the work, get the money, fill out the paperwork, and uh, we're off and running. And, you know, I was even looking today at uh, ticket prices for airfare going, you know, from like Dayton to, you know, Narita or Haneda or whatever. Because sometimes you can get slightly different price between the two. I've heard, I've never been to Haneda before, airport. Um, I've always gone through Narita, but uh, you know, it's harder to leave Narita airport and get to Tokyo versus Haneda, from what I've been told. Um, but yeah, I've always gone through Narita and you had to take like the Narita Express to get to, you know, the Aminote line. And then from there, I'd, you know, be able to know my way back home <laughs> from there. Um, so, uh, you know, it'd be nice to try out Haneda, but again, it all depends on price. Like I said, you know, there might be some slight price difference between the two. And if anything, I'd be able to, you know, spend less if I'm able to, like, navigate easier out of the airport in Haneda versus Narita, where I have to take the, the Express. So, um, yeah really looking forward to it um, and for those who uh, don't know like what school I'm applying to overseas um, I'm thinking most likely starting off I want to go to Lakeland University um, it's you know it's just a two-year school um, but I do want to transfer out there first to uh, to get my feet wet and uh, you know get some credits and stuff under my belt and then from there, you know, eventually transfer over to Temple University. Um, just because I've heard that Temple is a little bit harder to get into than Lakeland. And, you know, I don't exactly have a whole lot of money to plunk down on application fees every semester on a, on a maybe. You know, I want to make sure that if I apply to a school, I want it to be like a, like a for sure thing. Um, but the one disadvantage is for Lakeland is that the application fee is pretty fucking expensive. It's like about 356 USD. So it's, you know, yon mon. So 40,000, uh, yeah, 40,000, uh, Japanese yen. Uh, sorry, spaced out there for a sec. But yeah. Um, it's pretty high versus Temple, which I think is like maybe 100, 150 USD, thereabouts. Um, and if you're already in the country, like, since I'll already be in the country, I can actually visit the campus and talk with people and, you know, it'll be a smoother transition for me transferring from school to school versus me applying overseas and having to get the student visa and all this other stuff, which I'll already have the student visa. They'll just have to... Uh, switch it over from Lakeland to Temple once I transfer. Uh, but that's not impossible to do. You know, my friend Jim, you may know him on uh, on the YouTubes as Kid Shoryuken. Uh, he's a vet fellow uh, vet as well. And, you know, he went to, uh, to Lakeland University and then transferred out to Temple where he's at now. So I know it's definitely possible to do. 
Um, and I think once I'm out there, I'll talk a bit more in depth with about about doing that. But you know, being in two radically different time zones, it's kind of hard to. Uh, anyway, it's kind of hard to, uh, to talk with one another sometimes. You know, so but yeah, man. Really looking forward to 2019. Um, putting myself in a good situation to succeed. Um, you know, just gonna apply. Actually, tomorrow, I'm gonna be going to a local school here in the area to talk with them about coming over to uh, take some classes and stuff uh, to kind of help raise my GPA and whatnot. And uh, yeah. You know, I think it's going to be, it's going to be good, you know, um, really looking forward to, uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> it's like far away. That was a bee coming in. Uh, but yeah, just really looking forward to it. Feeling like I'm finally making some progress in life. Cause I think, you know, when I get really frustrated with what's going on, it's just, I just feel like I'm not, not making any progress. You know, I'm not moving forward as a person whether it's, you know, through career, financial, uh, you know, just personal accomplishments. You know, I feel like when I'm not moving forward with that, that's when, you know, I start getting mad at things and just frustrated with life in general. But, you know, I think these are the right moves to make. Really looking forward to being back in Japan, uh, being more of a help to my current clientele, getting more clients, getting more work, you know, and being able to, to use that to better my skills, uh, even maybe using some of it in class as well, uh, depending on, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, just really looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, it's feeling good. So that's about all I want to say in this video. I know it's this is uh, kind of dragging a bit, but you know it's just just feeling good. Just kind of, and it, it's not that like giddy like kid like oh, I'm so happy, you know, kind of happiness. It's more of just kind of like a calm adult happy like you know you finally are on the cusp of achieving your goals, and uh, you know it's been a long time coming. Went through a lot of shit to get there, but. Uh, it's coming. Things are starting to fall into place, and uh, you know, you just gotta gotta set your mind on it, man. Because you know, this ain't my first attempt at getting out to Japan. You know, I've been wanting to come back for a while now, but I was always kind of turned away from it just based on the cost, my grades, this, that, you know, X, Y, Z reason, you know, stuff like that. So I was kind of been like, well, I'll try to make it as best I can here and then eventually get out there. And, you know, it's just a lot of talking myself out of it. But, you know, I just, I came to the conclusion that, you know what? I'm just not happy here where I'm at. You know, I try to make the best of it, try to get a better job. You know, even if I improve living situation, all that other stuff, it's just, it's not that deep down satisfaction that I get from you know studying abroad um, you know and it felt like while I was out there I was just on such a such a good journey of personal growth I was getting to know myself a lot more I was getting to learn what it was like to be in you know to really be an American being outside of the uh, the American bubble and all that you know I just I felt felt a sense of pride in what I did and stuff and you know, to try to be a good representative of the country where there's so many others who aren't doing that um, you know I want to show that there are good guys out there you know and uh, aside from that you know I just like I said just want to be happy <laughs> and I feel like going back out to Japan will make me happy or at the very least put me in a position to get to that point. And, you know, the way I see it, you know, I'm not exactly missing out on anything leaving here because, 
you know, I just feel like this this ain't the uh, the environment for me to be in to succeed. You know, it's just kind of a sleepy rural town, not a whole lot going on. You know, it's just kind of a last stop for a lot of people. You know, they grow up here, have kids here, and they die here. And that's about it. You know. <laughs> Some of the kids may go off to college elsewhere in the area, you know, like BSU or University of Dayton or OSU or something like that. Um, so they may get their outside experience, but uh, a lot of them end up coming back here to have kids, get a job, and then just die. And, you know, this ain't the place for me to do that. So nothing against them or what they want to do is just. I, I know it's it's best for me in this same chief so anyway <laughs> it's kind of a long-winded way of me saying with all that said this is the end sign sign up for now thanking you guys for tuning in once again to these long ass live streams I'm getting a lot of positive feedback about them actually so I'm really glad you guys are liking them and I've been able to do them on a fairly consistent basis too because you know of other stuff I don't really want to talk about but uh, you know I do you know have some time to uh, to put these out if anything so anyway guys thanks for tuning in as always uh, more stuff coming up um, in the in the future um, things like that so as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye you guys have no idea how long it took me to get that fucking thing. I just, I couldn't get the shit right. But anyway, hi, Andy here. And uh, today, once again, coming at you from the Macadonado here in Ohio. Sipping on the last little remnants of my big ass iced coffee. And uh, I'm in the passenger side this time because uh, I was doing some work on my uh, uh, Surface tablet computer thing um <laughs> it's not a tablet but whatever um so i was doing some work there and it's it's hard for me to sit the tablet on on my lap when there's a big ass steering wheel in my way so uh whenever i'm doing work on the laptop tablet whatever um i just sit on the passenger side and it's a little weird because like there's nobody just gonna randomly hop in and drive me away <laughs> it's all it's all me but uh yeah so today I got work later on, so I'm not going to be on as, as long as I usually am. But we'll try to go as long as I can. Well, yeah, guys. Um, yesterday, I didn't make a video on YouTube because it was uh, a very bad day for me. Um, uh, I've been going through uh, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a rough patch, I guess you could say, with, with my folks. Um things of the house are incredibly tense right now and you know it's got me in just the state of just constant panic that I'm gonna get thrown out in the streets and I'm not gonna have any place to stay or be able to have a job or anything like that and so it's uh it's really affected me in a lot of ways you know for one I don't have internet at the house anymore uh, for, you know, well, it's <laughs> a little too difficult to get into right now, but, uh, you know, they cut off, they cut off my internet for the time being. Um, there's just some stuff going on with, uh, with that. So they just want to make sure it's not me. It's fucking shit up, I guess. So they just took me out of the equation for a little bit to figure out what's going on. But I don't know. Again, situations too long and dumb to really go through, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and hopefully it'll just blow over soon because uh, fucking having issues with Premiere on my computer. So it's hard for me to edit video. Well, it's impossible for me to edit videos now on on my main computer. So I have to attempt to do it on my Surface tablet, which isn't the best at doing that because I can't fucking update my uh i can't update premiere on my computer anymore because it's all done through the cloud and like everybody's online man it's fucking annoying so 
hopefully get internet privileges back again soon and I can carry on smartly with my fucking business, you know. Fucking pissing me off. But yeah, so that that's basically why I didn't uh put up a video yesterday. I was just in a really really bad headspace and you know, probably for the best that I didn't post anything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, hard saying what I want to talk about in this video, because <laughs> like I said, you know, yesterday I'm just kind of coming off, off the heels of just a really bad fucking day and I got to go into work and be all like, hi, I'm happy to be here. I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Oh my gosh. You know, all that bullshit. So, uh, Yeah. That's just kind of how my life's going right now. Um, I've been focusing a lot more on like kind of hippy dippy stuff, you know, like med meditation and having a, a clear headspace. And I've also got the, the headspace app as well, so <laughs> no pun intended. But uh, yeah, I've just been focusing on cultivating the best me that I can. And, uh, doing good things as far as that goes um yesterday i did apply to unoh finally um just put in my details and everything so oh <laughs> it's funny that i say that there's this dude walking around with a fucking unoh uh hoodie on <laughs> it's kind of funny how life works uh i did not time that i swear to god i did not time that <clears throat> but in any event you know Deep Divas. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Infinite Waters, and uh, I have YouTube Premium, so I've been downloading some of his videos to watch while I'm at the house, just kind of in more of a meditative uh, feeling, you know. And say what you will about him, I've heard, you know, he's kind of done some kind of shady business stuff, but, uh, you know, that aside... Um, he just seems like a really nice guy and if anything, you know, even if it is a facade, it's something that helps, you know, helps me calm down. So, you know, is it really a facade? I don't know. <laughs> it's, is it, is it a facade if the feelings that the fakeness gives are real? It's hard saying. But in any event, I know this is kind of a rando-ass uh, video, vlog, whatever. You know, I've been doing so many of these these lately. You know, it's I'm, I'm almost a daily vlogger at this point. <laughs> Except without all the cool B-roll transitions. You know, not that there's a lot of material for me to use out here anyway. But um, I do like doing these live streams because it kind of gives me... The ability to put stuff up without the pressure of editing it and all this other stuff. You know. Ah, my hair still smells good from the... Uh, uh, I took a, a nice hot bath because that usually helps helps calm me down. And I was just in a, a really bad... Really bad mood yesterday, like I said. But we're not getting back into that. But it's, it's helped kind of... Give me a little bit of peace of mind, if anything. And, uh, yeah. You know, the sky's clear. The day's clear. I'm going to work, so I won't have to deal with his bullshit um, during the day. Um, you know, just kind of how it is. But, uh, like I said, this is kind of random and, you know kind of all over the place but uh yeah like i said applied to unoh um yesterday put in application fee all that other stuff so hopefully we'll hear back from them in a couple weeks with either the yay or the nay should be a yay but uh i'm not getting my hopes up <laughs> um because you never know but you know if there's anything that that yesterday taught me it's that i should be more aggressively chasing my dreams because you know it's just trying to go back to old habits and old places and doing this whole like getting back to my roots whatever the fuck that means you know that whole thing is uh you know it's nice every once in a while but you know it's like you know 
living in the past is kind of like uh, living in Hawaii or something like that. You know, it's a nice place to live or a nice place to, to visit, but you don't want to live there. And no offense to people living in Hawaii. I'm sure the ones who do fucking love it out there. But for me, I'd get like island fever really bad. You know, I'd want to eventually get out of there because there's only like so much stuff to do. Um, but anyway, that's just me. So, <laughs> and I've lost my entire Hawaiian audience. Shucks. But, you know, point being is, you know, we can't live in the past. We can't dwell on past mistakes. We can't keep going back to past behaviors to see if they still serve us. Um, we need to continue to forge forward and continue to blaze our own path and not, not be beholden to other standards that people put forward for us um because ultimately it, it's our life it's not there they can give you advice and stuff on what's worked for them and it may work for you but that's not always the case and even if you do use their advice you may not use it exactly how they want you to use it so you just have to practice a lot more self-awareness and be more mindful Okay, and we're back. <laughs> the thing kind of like, the, you know, kind of lagged out there for a sec. But anyway, like I was saying, you know, we just have to be more self-aware and figure out what we really want as individuals versus trying to live up to expectations that others may have for us. And that's ultimately the lesson that I'm, you know, I'm learning along the way. And I just need to be more aggressive about fighting for my dreams versus just kind of passively doing things um, so if there's anything that that moment yesterday taught me was I have to do that and to get out of this town because you know it's just it's not right for me you know not long term it's not you know again it's a nice place to visit you know it's good seeing the folks every once in a while but living here not so much. Um, it's just, for a lot of people, it's just kind of a dead end. You know, this is the end all be all of their entire life. And, uh, you know, for me, I have way more to do in this life than just sit around and wait to die while I'm paying bills and stuff. You know, there's a lot more out there to explore and to see and people to meet and things to do and stuff like that. I don't want to be trying to fulfill other people's expectations you know living a life I don't want to fucking live and I think that's you know been a lot of my problem over the years is that I've been trying to to live a life I want to live while at the same time trying to fulfill other people's expectations of me and that clash is where I feel a lot of a lot of my personal issues lie is you know at what point do I just say fuck them and just go and do my thing live my life <laughs> as the song goes um, and you know for me I just have to put myself in a position to win and that's ultimately the key to my success is putting myself in a position to win and what does that mean, or what that means rather, is uh, <laughs> I did that thing my old captain used to do. So what does that mean for you, right? Well, what this means is, <laughs> oh, Jesus, getting some Navy flashbacks. But anyway, um, so what this means, Shemate, <laughs> is uh, that I have to pursue going to Japan a bit more aggressively. And I've been talking, like I've been saying, I've been talking with uh, the people over at Lakeland University out in Tokyo. And um, I already have an in with one of their alumni, um, Jim from the Kid Shore You Can channel. He's a great guy. Again, can't say enough good things about him. <laughs> you know, he does YouTube videos. So if you check out his channel, Kid Shore You Can. Um, He's got a lot of good stuff on like retro video games and like Japan exclusive games. And he also talks a lot about, uh, you know, just like Japan stuff. Like, how did he get out to Japan? And, 
all this other stuff. And he's also a, a fellow veteran. Uh, I think he was in the Air Force as a corpsman or medic, whatever. Um, so, you know, he's got a lot of good knowledge as far as using the GI Bill and stuff like that. And I, I really want to do some videos with him, you know, talking about stuff like that. Because I feel like it, it's a topic that's not really talked about a lot is, you know, using the GI Bill to study abroad. Not just study abroad, but study abroad in Japan, Chris. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it would be great, you know, because, you know, you hear about all these different ways to get out to Japan and, you know, going to study abroad, that's one way. You know, a lot of people, when they want to go out to Japan, they want to get the work visa and, you know, they have the four-year bachelor's degree and then they just apply to a job and then they get out there. Others, they do like the student exchange, you know, whether it's like through their own school. You know, some people have gone even through their high school to do a student exchange. I know there's an old school YouTuber, Akita Tom. Oh, that's a name. That's a blast from the past. Um, Akita Tom. Back when he was in high school, his, uh, his high school, I believe he was from uh, Australia, I think. I don't know. It's been fucking years. But... His high school had an exchange program with a Japanese high school, and so he went to high school in Japan as a foreigner. <laughs> so he did a lot of YouTube videos talking about his experience then, and I definitely recommend his channel as well. Um, if you guys want to see like what going to a Japanese high school is like for a foreigner, it's not again, it's not something that's widely talked about because it's not really something that's done all too often. Uh, it's usually in college, but. Um, you know, with college, they have the study abroad programs, which are usually for like maybe a semester or two. And then they go back to their home university and then just kind of go on from life or go on through life from there. Um, <coughs> but for me, you know, with this, with the GI Bill, it's, it's kind of specific in some things, you know, and that I can't do a study abroad program unless it's specifically required by my major so I can't just like take a semester and go to Japan you know under the normal provisions of a study abroad so I have to look at other ways to do that so other ways would be to just attend a foreign university instead of through a study abroad exchange program or whatever and you know I could go to some Japanese universities out there but the BAH and everything is, and just the amount of money that the GI Bill is going to provide to those foreign universities widely varies. And not a lot of them are uh, really knowledgeable about the GI Bill or veterans benefits or any other stuff. So if I ran into any VA issues or something like that, I wouldn't really have anybody to talk to to help me out, uh, especially not in a foreign country. God, no. I probably have to go to the consulate or something. And even then, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, that's where, that's one of the reasons why I'm applying to, to Lakeland, you know, versus the Japanese universities, just because, you know, if something happens with the GI Bill or whatever, they can kind of help me out. And it's just, you know, easier to, to get through, you know, going to a, an English speaking university. And don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't want to learn Japanese, you know, I do, but I just want to do it on my own time, rather than uh, be forced to learn it. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that don't agree with that sentiment, you know, be like, all Japan all the time, Brr. And you know, again, if it works for you, fucking fantastic. And again, who's to say that I can't learn Japanese outside of school? You know, it'll, if anything, it'll give me motivation to learn Japanese so I can interact with people outside of class. Even people in class, because there are some Japanese people that do go to Lake and Lakeland University and Temple and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, getting back to, uh, to Lakeland, they have this thing where it's called the Mentor Scholarship or the Mentorship Scholarship. I don't know if I can know. In any event, um, it's, it's basically like a, a referral program. So if you can get an alumni from Lakeland to recommend you to Lakeland or say that, yeah, this person said Lakeland was really cool and I want to apply. 
And if you get accepted, then they waive the uh, the application fee for you, and they give the alumni uh, fifty thousand yen. So it's about probably four hundred fifty to five hundred dollars USD, depending on exchange rate at the time of this recording. Uh, but still, that's that's fucking awesome. You know, an extra four hundred fifty bucks. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, I can go for some bills. Get. Uh, Get a fat stack of chew high, I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, it just seems like a win-win, you, you know, even for me, like plunking down nearly $400 on an application fee or for an application fee is really fucking daunting. And that's the main reason I'm not applying to Lakeland right now is because, well, I, I really don't have the money for it. Um, but I did apply to UNOH um, if I do get accepted, which I should, but you never know, shit happens. But if I do get accepted, then, you know, once I receive an exception letter or whatever from UNOH, you know, sign up for classes and stuff like that, then I'll, uh, you know, start the process to apply to Lakeland because, um, while I did miss the deadline for the, uh, like the spring semester or winter semester, however they, they phrase it, I did miss the deadline for like starting in January of next year over at Lakeland, which I did expect. I, I didn't expect to start that fucking early. Um, you know, and it's probably for the best cause I need time to save up and stuff like that. But, uh, I still am within the deadline for, uh, applying for the summer semester, which that doesn't start until uh, April, if, if I remember right. It's like latish April is when that starts. So uh, the plan moving forward is to apply to Lakeland um, while I'm in class at UNOH. And uh, if I get accepted, I'll just, you know, transfer over there from UNOH. If I don't get accepted, then I'll just uh, try again next semester and, you know, just, just keep going from there. Because, you know, the main thing I'm worried about in getting accepted over there is my grades. Because I did have some pretty bad grades last time I was, uh, I was in school. And, you know, we've already gone through, gone through this before. You know, it was mostly due to... Uh, anxiety issues, depression, a lot of shit that I was dealing with in transitioning over from being in the military to being a civilian again. That whole rigmarole stuff uh, is what I was dealing with. And, uh, you know, that affected my grades. And I was also, you know, working on making freelance video editing, you know, more than just a side hustle. I was making, you know, working to make it like my main job, basically. You know, so I wouldn't have to work at McDonald's. I could just do the, the video editing, go to school and all that stuff. But, you know, that ended up taking up a lot of my time. And, you know, again, I was just very early in starting out my business. So made some mistakes, took a little too much time making some videos. And, you know, it is what it is. It's just all, it's all part of the journey. You know, you just gotta, just gotta work through the mistakes and just get better, get faster, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, the plan moving forward as far as getting back to Japan. Now, as far as saving up for all that, um, you know, the main thing is once I sell my car, I should have enough, you know, to cover a plane ticket as well as a little bit of extra money before the GI Bill kicks in. Um, not a whole lot, but uh, should be you know, at least enough for the month uh, if I budget correctly. Uh, but uh, yeah, really looking forward to that and uh, getting the ball rolling as far as classes and stuff like that goes. Um, I'm just trying to hang in there as far as you know, home life and things like that go. Um, I know ultimately everything is temporary, and this too shall pass, but it's, <laughs> sometimes it's passing like a kidney stone, you know, it's just very painful and it feels like it's never going to end. Um, so if I do put out some kind of dramatic 
tweets or posts or whatever. I apologize for that. It's just, you know, sometimes that shit can really get to me and it's it's hard to just like keep it to myself, you know? And uh, just gotta get it out there. So that's, that is the plan. Hopefully, um, if all works out and I'm able to save up, you know, more money versus, you know, what I'll be able to get off of selling this car, then, uh, you know, I can, uh, you know, maybe even come to Japan earlier, you know, uh, depending on how things work out, you know, because with a, with a student visa, once I've been approved for it, I can arrive, um, well, no earlier than 30 days from when... Oh, there we're back. Okay. So, like I said, uh, if we maxed it out, um, I could arrive, like, as early as, like, late March. So, you know, I might even be there in time for the fucking the YouTube Hanami party, depending on when, uh, you know, that all starts. Because it usually starts between, like, late March, early April... So, it all depends. But there should be plenty of fucking cherry blossoms around. Should be, anyway. By the time I get there, anyway. Um, if I don't get there too late. So, but in any event, you know, even if that doesn't happen, at the end of the day, I'll still be in Japan. So, really looking forward to it. And definitely going to keep you guys updated as far as um, where that goes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, moving, uh, moving forward and up in the world. So, in any event, I gotta get going. Gotta get ready for work here soon. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Signing for now. Thanking you for uh, tuning into this live stream and watching my other stuff. And I've really been uh, really appreciative for you guys for subscribing to this channel, watching my stuff. I know there's some haters out there who's not liking the, the archival content. I already kind of went through this. Um, in the, I think I think it might have been the last video or maybe a video before. Um, but, you know, I'm just putting up those archival videos to give you guys context for, like, how long I've been doing YouTube. And it's all to give you context of the progression of my videos, you know. I'm not saying these videos are fucking amazing because it's just live streams. It's whatever. <laughs> I'm sitting in my car in front of a fucking McDonald's. But, you know, once I get back out to Japan, things are going to change. I'm going to be able to put out just tons of new, fresh content. Be able to make uh, the next season of Andy Japandi uh, the best. Um, again, I don't know if I want to divide the seasons up into years. I, I do actually like that idea. Uh, so, instead of it being Andy Japandi Season 2, it'll most likely be Andy Japandi Season 4. So, once we once we divvy out the details and get the videos uploaded on this channel and stuff, which that's, that's going to be a while. <laughs> but I might end up expediting the process uh, just for the Andy Japandi uh, videos. But again... We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, as always, we'll see you next time. Get to you later, guys. Bye. Chugging on that uh, that iced coffee. But I do want to say, for those of you worried about my, uh, my health, having all this damn McDonald's, um, I am actually eating a little bit healthier, believe it or not. So I know I'm getting the fucking ginormo iced coffee and all this other stuff so not so much there but i have been eating some fruit you know for breakfast out here because i do come kind of early so i just come out here get a big ass thing of iced coffee and i'm also chomping down on some pineapple so that's always nice and it still helps me feel full and makes me feel like i'm having a, a healthy start to the day if anything so feeling a little better baby um, breathing in that good ass prana. <laughs> Ooh. I've been watching a lot of, uh, infinite waters lately. You know, I don't know how you guys feel about him. He's a little hippy dippy sometimes. Uh, but it's always good for me. It helps kind of motivate me and give me a little bit of, uh, a little bit of calmness whenever I listen to his videos. 
you know sometimes that helps you know when i'm meditating or you know just doing breathing exercises and stuff it really it really does help to uh to do that sort of thing um but yeah just kind of sitting here sipping iced coffee and uh i want to talk to you guys about um vlog 300 which is coming up very soon just uh just three more vlogs three more vlogs before we get to vlog 300 and i've been thinking of different <clears throat> different things that we could do now i remember back in for uh for vlog 200 we uh we did a q a so i'm thinking since it's been literally 100 vlogs since then and that was back when I was still in Japan, baby. Um, that was that was even before I got my apartment in Japan, actually, if I remember. Yeah, that was before I got my apartment in Japan because I remember filming that at the MWR in Yokosuka. And they had this little um, kind of secluded sitting area, you know, separated by the little uh, fancy uh, separator things. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> separators i guess i don't freaking know but uh separate from all that so that way i could still vlog at a normal volume i can't be all like wacky and youtubery doing that sort of thing but uh yeah i can still talk and do q a and stuff like that without disturbing too many people you know if anything they think i was like talking to somebody or whatever um so I kept the social anxiety a bit low uh but yeah man freaking I think it's I think it's high time for a Q and A, and maybe a bit of introspective as far as you know, making 300 vlogs. Um, obviously, I've made like you know well over a thousand videos overall, but uh, as far as actual dedicated vlogs, yeah, I've going on 300 now. So that's pretty good. Pretty good indeed. You know between doing the monthly update stuff, uh, doing other vlogs, talking about different uh, subjects in my life, things like that. Um, we've covered covered a wide gamut of material over the years. You know, I remember, you know, I remember even just looking back at my very first vlog. You know, that was right when I got my uh my new sanyo zakti camera well, was then new actually it was used at the time too um i remember getting it off of ebay because i wanted something that was within my budget at the time and i wasn't making shit over at walmart uh, so i was looking up cameras and stuff and the popular cameras at the time for youtubing were the zakti series of cameras as well as the flip cams which neither of those are around anymore <laughs> which goes to show my age on uh, on the platform uh, but yeah none of those cameras are around anymore hell even sanyo the company that made the zach d isn't even around anymore they got bought out by panasonic so a lot of their camera models and stuff got absorbed into panasonic and i don't even think the zach d series is even around anymore <laughs> Maybe some of the technology that was used has been incorporated into Panasonic's cameras or something. I don't friggin' know. But, uh, yeah, they're not around anymore. The flip cams aren't around anymore. Um, despite the name, the reason it was called flip cam is because there's a little USB dongle on the side. You'd press and it would, like, flip open. Hence the name flip cam. And you just connected to your computer after you recorded stuff. Again, wasn't the best of cameras, but it was cheap, it was accessible, and, you know, for YouTube at the time, it was pretty good. So, kind of was what it was. But I wanted a flip-out screen, and again, despite the name, the flip cam didn't have a flip-out screen. It had a fixed screen on the back. So, you know, since I was doing a lot of these selfie-type videos, I wanted to make sure my head was in frame and all that kind of stuff. So... Went for the Sanyo Zakti, and also because Tokyo Kuni used a Zakti in his videos as well, but he had a more expensive model, so I went for more of the entry-level, cheapo budget version, you know, just to get me started, and then from there I'd upgrade equipment and stuff, and uh, my first HD camera was still a Sanyo Zakti, but it was the uh, the SH-1 which that was full HD, that was 1080p and everything, 
um, back when that was new. You know, I remember when HD first started. Uh, it's just some more Twitter stuff. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I remember when uh, HD first started on YouTube. That was such a mind-blowing thing. I remember first switching over from even just 480p to 720. That was such a drastic change. And, you know, going from 720 to 1080, you know, you could see a difference, but it wasn't as dramatic as 480 to 720. That was just like whoa, who turned the sharpener on? It's like you could see so much detail. And of course, now you look at it, and even 720 videos are kind of grainy and just kind of like, eh. <laughs> but that was technology back in the day, baby. And uh, yeah. So I've been doing a lot of thinking about, uh, you know, where I see these vlogs going and just, you know, how far I've come so far in, uh, in my journey in life and on YouTube as well. Cause you know, I've been doing the YouTube thing for a long friggin' time, long time. And, and I never did it with any intention of success or anything like that. I always, I always wanted it. You know, I thought it'd be nice to have, but really um, I never, looking back on it now, you know, I never put in the amount of work that was needed to actually make it happen, you know? I always thought I did, but you know, I was still in that old school YouTuber mentality of if you record it, they will come, which, you know, worked at first because, you know, YouTube was such a new platform and like anybody that was on making any form of content, you know, had some sort of an audience and just people watching. And granted, the audience was a lot smaller back then, but it, it felt a lot more engaging, I think, just because, again, it was such a new platform at the time. And, uh, you know, people didn't really know what YouTube was going to be, you know, like nobody really predicted that it would be this media juggernaut that's, you know, overtaken cable TV and other mainstream media, you know, like <laughs> people, kids, you know, nowadays are looking at being a YouTuber as a viable career option. You know, of course, then again, that's also competing with like astronaut and fireman and all this kind of other stuff. But, uh, you know, that was being a YouTuber wasn't even a thing that didn't even exist when I was in school, you know, high school or college. Well, my first round in college, anyway, um, this this didn't even exist as an option, you know, at best you had new grounds, but that was only for like the animation community and like the flash game community. Um, you didn't have vloggers or any of this other stuff that you got now. That stuff didn't even exist back then. Uh, but it was, it was an interesting time. You know, I wouldn't say it was an awesome time because, you know, looking back on it now, you know, the connections were pretty shitty and, you know, it, it's hard to look back on that because of how much we've seen progress on just the internet in general, not just YouTube. Um, we've seen different, and you know, looking back on those old videos and stuff is, uh, you know, it gives me the uh, the nostalgic gasm, and I always have love for the older videos, but. Uh, if anything, it also shows a lot of the flaws of the early YouTube system, you know, where people didn't edit videos as cleanly as they used to, you know. A lot of them, when they were first starting off, they would use stuff like uh, Windows Movie Maker <laughs> or uh, uh, what's that? Uh, uh, fuck. What's that uh, Apple Movie... I think it's called iMovie or some shit. It's not Final Cut, it's the free version. I think it's called iMovie. Whatever the case. Um, a lot of people would end up using that too. Um, or maybe just some random ass shit you'd get from like Best Buy or Walmart. <laughs> I've seen so many uh, video editing programs like that too. Of eh, Quality. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's something I was thinking about of, you know, how everybody's saying you know gear doesn't matter equipment doesn't matter um and also stuff you know what matters is that you want to make stuff and there's a certainly a nice sentiment to that you know it, it is important to 
you know, it, it is important to to overall just make stuff, but you should always make stuff with the goal of improving, whether it's improving uh, just the way you put stuff together, the the shots, the uh, the clarity of of sound, you know, just the overall presentation. And gear, gear and equipment does play a part in that, you know? It's not everything, but uh, it does play a part in that. And I think that you should progress to the higher end gear over time, you know? If you just stay in gear over time, you know? If you just stay, you know, like hell, if I just stayed with the same Sanyo Zacti from 2008, like nobody would be watching my videos at all because they would be in SD. And even if I had my hand held out really far, like it was not a wide angle lens at all. It was a very tight lens. So if like my arm is fully extended here, but, and it's, you know, I'm a fair distance away, but if it was on my San Zacti, like it would look like this <laughs> and I would still have my hand extended the same amount, you know? I mean, go back and look at some of those old videos. Like, I had my hand extended as far out as I could go, but my whole face would take up the frame and be like, hey, guys, it's the Andy Son here, and today uh, something awesome happened, and uh, we're going to, uh, to talk about that. You know, they, they, all, they all sound like that, and they all look like that. <laughs> you know, don't believe me, just watch. <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> excuse me, y'all got me started today. That old man Andy Sand started today. I'll tell you what, maybe that coffee's kicking in. I don't know. We already had breakfast. Can I get a hello there? Something like that. Anyway, yeah, just, uh, you know, life is uh, it's complicated. And uh, I've gone through a lot in this journey. And, um, you know, as I release more of these these older videos, I hope that it puts some perspective into how far I've come in this journey. And I know that, again, I know that not a lot of people like those videos. I see a lot of thumbs down when uh, when I upload those. And you know, I know that a lot of people are like, eh, you know, and just re-upload, that's dumb, whatever. Um, but you know, if anything, it's for my own perspective to show you know, on days like the other day when I was feeling really down about myself and my situation, you know, it helped put into perspective how far I've come, you know, online as well as in life. Um, and that's one of the neat things about doing YouTube long term like this. You know, you get to see a moment in time in your life and, you know, having done this as long as I have, it's really interesting to go back and see what I was doing back in 2008, 2009, even 2010, when I first joined the, the Navy, um, just to kind of see where my headspace was at that time, see um, what I looked like even, you know, because I got a little bit of the, you know, the neck fupa now, and it was kind of nice to see me with a you know, slim and trim neck. Didn't have to worry about the neck fupa. <laughs> and uh, we might be getting to that, you know, getting rid of that soon. Um, you know, once I got it to Japan. Because this shit, you know, dieting and shit is fucking hard in America. Especially where I'm at. You know, maybe in California or something it's a bit easier because there's a lot more health options and everything. But, you know, here in the Midwest where it's fucking meat and potatoes for everything. Or some form of meat and carb you know it's noodles or whatever you know obviously that stuff's good but it's not really good for you <laughs> um, if you eat it long term you know and on days where I'm thinking you know I'm I'm a little shaky and you know I'm feeling like you know, I should lose a little weight and stuff you know I look at some of these other people and I'm like well, I'm not quite as bad as that person and I know that's kind of bad to say you know it's kind of, it's really mean but it does give me a little bit of a self-esteem boost of, you know, well, at least I'm not in their situation. You know, as shitty as that sounds, whatever. It helps me out in some way. Um, but, 
you know, I even go back and look at some of my old pictures and old videos and stuff. And I remember during those times, I felt so fat and gross. And that was another thing, you know, I don't know if I talked about this of, you know, my time in the military. And this might be a separate video onto itself, but here you go, sneak preview <laughs> of a future Andy Talks Navy video, possibly. Um, you know, I felt, um, you know, I felt very, I was very self-conscious of, of my weight during my entire time that I was uh, in the Navy because everybody was always working out and getting buff and, you know, looking slim and trim and stuff. And, you know, I was never really interested in doing any of that. You know, if anything, I'd exercise or, you know, I'd go out for uh, bicycle rides. What the hell's that music? Anyway, <laughs> whatever the hell that was. Um, but I'd always, you know, do what I could to at least be active. And especially in a place like Japan where it's like super encouraged to be getting out and doing stuff. You know, it's like there's always something to do. And even if there's nothing to do, you could always just like walk around. You know, I could always get on my bike and, you know, just walk around the neighborhood or, or not walk if I was on my bike, but like bicycle around my neighborhood um could even walk even but uh, i prefer bike because it's it's just easier easier on the knees walking kind of hurts that shit after a while but you know it's just uh it's a lot more encouraged to uh to be walking or bicycling around in japan versus in america where you know it's it's kind of hard now in some places you know they got like bike lanes and stuff like that and it's a bit easier uh, especially in cities where there's, you know, the areas are a bit denser. So you can go from place to place without having to, like, bicycle 10 miles or whatever um, in between. But, you know, living out in the, in the Midwest, everything is really spread out. So it's a lot easier to get by in a car. In a lot of, a lot of cases, it's the only way to really get around, you know, especially out here in the boonies, you know. Fucking, uh, yeah. So that was one thing that helped, uh, keep the poundage down when, uh, I was out and about, you know, just, uh, go out and bicycle, you know, several kilometers. Um, and I'm even watching, uh, Chris Broad from Abroad in Japan do his, uh, what do you say, like 2,000 kilometer cycle from, uh, Tohoku, uh, someplace in Tohoku, I forget that's like northern Japan, all the way down to Kagoshima, which is the southern, aside from Okinawa, it's the southernmost part of the main islands of Japan. So, uh, southernmost part of uh, Kyushu, I believe, which is the southernmost isle, southernmost of the main islands of Japan. So, sorry, that was kind of <laughs> a little stilted there. But yeah, you know, Watching his uh, his journey that there, you know, it's giving me the the itch to do something similar when I get out there. Maybe not to that extent. Uh, obviously, I'll have to get myself in shape for something like that, or even something close to that. But you know, just cycling around town or <clears throat> going from place to place by bicycle, you know, um, and it's definitely feasible to do, you know, especially out there. Um, you know, you just got to plan out the route and uh, get yourself in shape. And, you know, I can't wait to do that. You know, get the legs back in working order. Get this, uh, get this a little bit smaller. Um, I've been feeling a little bit, you know, I feel like I have been losing a little bit of weight. Despite all this eating McDonald's bullcrap. <laughs> um, I don't know if I am actually losing weight, but I do feel like it, you know. I don't feel as bogged down with crap, so that's good. Um, but yeah, man, friggin', you know, just getting excited for the future. Um, you know, uh, this is a very random vlog. I'm sorry. Uh, like 21 minutes in, it's kind of a random vlog. I'm starting to get hungry, so might have to might have to leave soon. 
grab some food because I, I do got to go back because I got to work here soon anyway. So is what it is. But uh, yeah. Um, what was I? What was I talking about? Sorry, <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but <laughs> like I said, random blog, Sunflare. But yeah. Um, oh yeah. Updates for UNOH. Sorry, Jesus, that took me a hot minute. Um, but yeah, updates for UNOH. Um, got some emails back from them. Uh, they haven't given me an acceptance letter or anything like that just yet. But I have gotten some email correspondence through their admissions department and through the VA department for uh, different forms and stuff that you know I need to fill out should I be accepted to to UNOH, which I should be. I don't see why not, but uh, you never know. Shit happens. <laughs> so once I get the acceptance letter to UNOH, then I'll start filling out these forms and getting all that set up and sign up for classes and you know all this other stuff um i might even go there this friday um see what's going on but i am really liking the uh the quick response that they've given me you know because i've only applied to unoh like this week it was on monday yeah it was monday this week so it's only been like what two days yeah like two days and i've already gotten two emails from the uh the admissions department well one from the admissions department the other from the va department there um just got that one today so i'm really liking the quick response time um even though they're largely scripted emails but still you know it shows that they're kind of on it when it comes to that sort of thing and you know looking forward to starting up class classes with them next year uh 2019 you know, like I said, um, 2019, I have a really good feeling about it. You know, I'm keeping very positive, which is good, especially because, you know, you guys know historically, uh, the fall time, fall and winter time is not a not a good time for my mental health. You know, I get a little bit shaky, baby. <laughs> so, you know, if I come out in vlogs and stuff where I'm, you know, not my usual happy-go-lucky self, um, just uh, I apologize in advance because <laughs> that does happen. But so far, so good. I've been uh, really making a, a conscious effort to, you know, keep my mental health as a, as a high priority and to notice changes in my mood and all that kind of stuff. So I'm taking extra precaution, you know. I think ultimately... A good sleep schedule has helped me out the most. You know, there's other little things that I do, but ultimately, if I only had to do one thing to help my mental health, it would be a good, consistent sleep schedule. I cannot tell you how much this has positively affected my mood overall. Like, you know, for me, because uh, sunlight plays a big part in my overall mental state. Uh, it's just kind of how I am. It may be different for other people, but for me, <clears throat> sunlight plays a big part in that. So I've been focusing on waking up uh, with the sun or, or just uh, to uh, get more sunlight hours, daylight hours, um, versus like staying up really late like I used to. You know, like, uh, you know, I think overall, once I start to uh, get going with, uh, with a lot of these things, you know, my goal is to wake up around probably eight o'clock because I don't want to get up, you know, when it's still dark outside because that's depressing. I've done that before. Um, but I want to get up around eight o'clock. I've been kind of slipping a bit lately, I've been waking up around like nine ish. <laughs> but, you know, I think maybe waking up around eight o'clock, you know, cause sunrise is usually around seven thirty ish around these parts. So, um, Waking up around 8 o'clock when the sun's been up for a little bit and uh, getting on with my day. Getting a good at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep a night. That has been essential for me. Um, it's been essential for my mental health. And it's allowed me to just work a lot more efficiently. You know, whereas creatively or at my job. You know, I'm just, I feel like, you know... I feel like I'm not running on empty or anything like that. I feel like I'm actually 
plunking away and that I'm a lot more in the moment when, you know, I get a full night's sleep. And even last night, like I went to bed around midnight-ish, you know, maybe 12, 12.30. And, you know, felt great. Got up around 9, <clears throat> maybe a little before 9 actually. And uh, actually it was 8.30, my bad. <laughs> But still, you know, went to bed around midnight, got up at 8.30, feel great, you know. Got myself some iced coffee, had some pineapple slices, um, feel great, you know. And uh, we're getting this internet connectivity issue settled very soon, so you're going to be seeing some more edited videos, not just random live streams from McDonald's like you've been seeing for a while. Although you guys have been enjoying those, and I do appreciate the uh, the feedback that I've been getting from, from these live streams. If anything, it gets me out of the house. So <laughs> that's a good thing, you know. I can't always be cramped in my room like all the friggin' time. So, you know, gets me out of the house. Give me, uh, give me some sunlight. Not exactly in the heart of nature, but, uh, you know, <laughs> gets me out of the house, which is always nice. And on these nice sunny days, you know, breathing the good, the good ass piranha, baby. <laughs> and stuff like that. So, with that all said, I should probably get going here shortly. Because I got to get, get lunch going and uh, get ready for work soon stuff like that um but yeah wrapping up this live stream here um just let me know what you guys would like to see in vlog 300 um i'm gonna be doing a q a for that one for sure um so be sure to ask me some questions down below in the booby boops to um to be answered in vlog 300 um can be about, about pretty much anything as long as it's you know, relative to, to me and my interests and stuff like that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Ask me anything. Whatever. And uh, I'll do my best to uh, to put those questions on the the 300th vlog. Um, especially, I'm especially looking forward to seeing what, uh, what some of you new guys want to know. Because, like I said, I haven't really done a Q&A since vlog 200. And that was back in 2020. 13 actually so it was like about like five years ago since i last did a q a so yeah just be sure to leave me some questions down below in the boopy boops and for vlog 300 we'll do a q a section and then we'll do some other stuff beforehand just you know as an introspective i guess i don't know <laughs> whatever the case may be so anyway guys with all that said this is the andy son Signed for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right. And we're live, pal. <laughs> and uh, if anything, these live streams have been keeping my creativity up as far as thumbnail poses. I've been trying something new every time. I'm trying, anyway. But anyway, hi. Andy here. And uh, I don't have a whole lot of time today because I got to get ready for work here shortly, get some lunch, and. Uh, head on out but here we are once again at the Mapadonado McDonald's here in Ohio and uh, yeah man things are uh, things are looking pretty good moving forward um, we did hit a rough patch earlier this week but uh, you know looking to get past it shortly um, been having some problems with uh, Adobe Premiere uh, my other Adobe Creative Cloud apps work fine, but uh, Premiere crashed a while back and I haven't been able to really use it since. And uh, as you guys know, I'm a freelance video editor and when my main video editing software goes down, that's a bit of a problem. Um, especially since I can't connect to internet on uh, my main workstation computer at the moment. Um, that's a bit of a problem. So I've been looking for, uh, for some workarounds and uh, I think I got a good solution going. I downloaded, because uh, Adobe does have uh, some solutions in case you're having problems um, with uh, getting the, the apps and stuff, especially if you have to like download them offline or something like that. Um, I haven't tried it yet, so if it works, I'll do a tutorial of it. If not, then I'll 
you know, <laughs> try to find some other workaround. But the main thing is I wanted to download the new version of Premiere because uh, the whole Creative Cloud suite just got an upgrade uh, this week, actually, I think. Yeah, this week. Um, to the uh, the 2019 Creative Cloud Suite. So downloaded the uh, the updates for all my stuff that I use and uh, gonna be implementing that shortly. And it's kind of good that I've held off on uh, on uh, tutorials and stuff until now because now I can talk about the new Creative Cloud Suite and that's hopefully gonna bring in some traffic and stuff. So looking forward to that. Um, but speaking of which, uh, the... The whole point of this of this video, what I talked about in the in the title, which I guess we'll get to here in a sec, because I got one more thing to talk about. Um, should have completely blank. There was like one thing I needed to talk about before I get into. That. Oh yeah, um, like I said, uh, we'll be trying to uh, update the uh, the Adobe apps and stuff on the computer that doesn't have internet at the moment, but we're looking to resolve that very soon the whole internet issue yeah, it's kind of funny that i am i guess now a daily vlogger and i didn't think i would be but you know here we are it's a funny world <sighs> but yeah um seriously there was like one thing i i was going to tell you guys that i forgot but anyway i'll probably remember it as we're getting into the main topic of this video and i'll be like oh yeah it's that thing <laughs> you know how these is you know we're alive pal so in any event if you guys read the title... Oh, shit. Now I remember. <laughs> Before I even got into it. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. This is why I edit my vlogs. Anyway, it is for vlog 300, which is coming up very soon, actually. Um, with doing these live streams and stuff on a consistent basis. Um, I've been getting closer and closer to that number. And I asked you guys uh, here on YouTube as well as on Instagram, because uh, I'm going to be doing a Q&A section for vlog 300. You know, so hopefully I can some a, a some cues for y'all that you might have. Because last time I did a Q and A was vlog 200, and a lot of things have changed since then. You know, what, first off, I'm not in Japan at the moment, but I'm going to be back soon. Um, and I filmed that in the uh, the Akoska MWR. This was even before I got my apartment in Japan, so that was a lot. <laughs> that was a big change for me. Um, but yeah, hoping to do the Q&A section. So if you guys got any cues that you need aid from me, uh, be sure to leave me a little something something down in the comments down below in the booby de boops or uh, send me something on Twitter, Instagram, whatever the case. Um, just look for the Andy San, T-H-E, A-N-D-Y-S-A-N, and you're bound to find me on pretty much any social media that I'm a part of. So, you know, like I said, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you know. I even have a Facebook page, too, so the Andy Son official for that. Um, but, yeah. Um, anyway, for real this time, <laughs> getting back to the, uh, the main topic of this video, which is demonetization isn't the end. So, I was looking through my analytics today for my channels, because I do that periodically just to kind of see how things are going, what videos are connecting with people which aren't from an analytical standpoint, you know. Um, and I've noticed on my uh, main editing channel that the numbers are actually going up, even though I got demonetized, because there's a, there's a little theory going around that if your channel is demonetized or just simply doesn't have monetization enabled, then you're not gonna get as many views as a monetized channel. And just looking through my numbers, and again, could be just my numbers, I don't know. But looking through my numbers, that's not the case at all, you know? And, you know, there's a lot of little things going, or not going for my channel, rather, that would, you know, in theory, according to what a lot of these YouTube guru type people are saying, you know, because I'm almost in a lot of ways doing the exact opposite of what they're saying. You know, a lot of them are like, create good quality content and do it daily on a consistent level and you know interact with the community yeah. <laughs> well I mean I'm doing that here on this channel but not so much on my editing channel um, but I mean if somebody leaves a comment I always comment back for the most part um, hey what up James Just Vlogs how you doing so 
Uh, but looking at my numbers, you know, my views are up. Uh, watch time is a, a tad lower, but views are up. Subscribers are up, surprisingly, even though YouTube recently did a culling of a lot of subs. I think that was when their uh, their site was down. That might have been one of the reasons why it went down, is they're implementing new algorithm or some funky stuff that you're probably going to be hearing in the next couple days and weeks and whatnot. Oh, is that what that was? Oh, okay. That explains it. <laughs> I thought they were just down for maintenance because they were putting something up. Well, there goes my game theory. But hey, that's just a theory. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, uh, can YouTube bring peace to the Middle East? Find out at 11. <laughs> oh, well. If anything, you know, it's kind of, you know, a little bit of sweet revenge seeing their site get shut down unexpectedly when they've been kind of fucking over a lot of creators in a, in a way. But that's none of my business. <laughs> so, in any event, like I was saying, even with this whole demonetization thing happening on my other channel, um, I've been seeing my numbers go up in a big way. And I think it's just, you know, to submit to the content that I put out there, you know, the tutorials. Tutorials always do really good traffic on a consistent level. And... You know, I've made sure to really take care of the uh, the SEO side of the house when it comes to those, because a lot of people are looking on how to do stuff. So you just got to make it easy. You know, how to... Yeah, that would be something. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, that would suck. Um, you know, and it also is uh, kind of a test for a lot of uh, creators out there who... Uh, don't have a, uh, a solid uh, business plan or just like a, a backup plan because you know it's always the assumption that YouTube's going to be around forever just like MySpace was going to be around forever right even though it's still technically up but it's not culturally relevant anymore um, except in those like do you remember when you were on MySpace back in 2004 <laughs> it's like oh yeah I remember MySpace you know so aside from those remember when posts, uh, MySpace isn't really relevant anymore. So, you know, that's, I feel that's going to eventually happen to YouTube as well, especially with, you know, other uh, platforms kind of gunning for that spot. You know, a lot of, a lot of big businesses are looking to be a competitor to YouTube. You know, you got Twitch for gaming primarily, even though they're starting to branch out with the Twitch IRL stuff. So they're trying to become more than just a gaming platform. And Amazon, you know, I think Amazon bought them, didn't they? So, uh, you know, they have that level of funding. And then Amazon's doing its own uh, video service. That's more for the higher-end creators, the ones that have, like, captions for their videos and stuff like that. Uh, so there's that. And uh, you have, you know, Facebook video itself. You know, they're making a big push for video not only on their own platform, but also with Instagram, with IGTV, which I haven't really heard too much uh, recently about. Shot the Eagers might shot me out. Oh, that's dope. Right on. Um, yeah, shout out to Joseph Game. Oh, shit. I lost the chat. <laughs> but anyway, shout out to that guy. Um, but yeah, uh, point being is that you always have to have some sort of contingency plan you know and you have to build your skill set and i think building your skill set is oh 316 nice nice yeah <laughs> yeah this uh this channel's getting there but it's just my personal channel it's not my i won't even i don't even know what a main channel is anymore <laughs> as far as like how my content is because it's so split up um, I guess my edited channel is my main channel, quote-unquote, but, yeah, um, but yeah, you just gotta build up your skill set, and, uh, I think that's gonna help you carry over to the next platform or to the next state, you know, like, say, for instance, YouTube does get shut down just suddenly, out of nowhere, like, like you know, and uh, a lot of YouTubers obviously would be freaking out because, you know, they're going to lose all their ad money and they won't have a platform to put out content anymore, at least not at that level of distribution. Now, the smart ones will 
take their skills. You know, for me, for me, if YouTube shut down, um, I would just take my skills as a video editor, uh, you know, go back to school a bit more so I can hone in those skills, network, and hopefully get in with like a, a low, you know, like a like a lower level production company or something like that. Well, I think T Series has already passed PewDiePie in terms of subscribers, but they're uh, the thing is they're not like a a single person channel. It's like a, a network or something like that. It's like it's like saying YouTube Music or YouTube Movies is a channel. You know, it's but I guess their T Series is more of a channel than than those. But yeah. So I think, you know, the smart YouTubers, smart creators will leverage their skills. Oh, they're only a half million now? Oh, I thought they already passed them. Oh. Well, they're closing in, I guess. <laughs> but um, I think the smart YouTubers will leverage their skills and uh, can, can use those to go on to different platforms, you know? Like, you know, that even happened with MySpace, like I mentioned before, you know, I remember you know, hearing about the story of Charles Trippy, CTFXC, you know, back in the day, way before YouTube and stuff, like he was putting out videos in MySpace. And I guess that's where he got his little first surge in internet popularity. And then, you know, when I first heard about him, it was through this uh, internet uh, reality show called Who Wants to Be an in Internet Millionaire? hosted by Joelcom that like nobody has ever seen or knows of, I don't think. And here's this kid with like the friggin' like dyed pink hair and just kind of hippie-ish looking. This is back when Charles had longer hair. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of connected with him because a lot of the contestants that were on there, you know, they're supposedly like internet personalities, quote unquote, or they made money off the internet or some shit. But none of them really had anything content wise that was really worth my time. So I just I looked up everybody and Charles was the only one that had anything halfway decent, even at the time. So I was just like ended up following him, even though he ended up losing out in the series. You know, I just ended up following him and was like, ah, oh, cool. Ah, appreciate it <laughs> for the notifications and whatnot. Um yeah, I've been doing these streams pretty pretty consistently. Um, don't know how it's going to be when once it gets colder. It's going to be a bit harder to uh, to vlog in the car <laughs> when it's cold out. But right now, you know, you got the sun coming in. It's heating up the car nice and toasty. So I don't even have to have the car on right now, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, with demonetization and everything, it's not affecting my channel at all from a view standpoint or you know people finding my video standpoint um there was a i did lose about 100 subscribers recently because youtube like i said did a recent culling of subscribers which they do periodically so maybe it was like dead accounts or bots or something i don't fucking know but uh yeah um whatever the case you know i've been seeing a steady increase of subs as well so, you know, I think long term, you know, that little 100 sub dip ain't going to mean much of anything. Um, just got to keep on keeping on, man. And uh, really glad that Adobe recently updated their stuff because then I'm going to be able to, to do tutorials and everything. And it's going to be like all new and everything. So I'm kind of glad I waited this long to start doing tutorials. <laughs> um so that'll help with uh, with traffic moving forward, especially into 2019. Um, but yeah, oh, speaking of, of demonetization, uh, I should be able to reapply in about nine, what's today? Yeah, about nine days from now. On the 27th is when I'll be able to reapply for monetization. So I'm hoping that uh, I get the okay again and uh, able to just carry on smartly from there and uh make some tutorials and get some muns and stuff like that because like i wasn't really relying on on youtube ad money for income or anything but again it's a nice little bit of saving bit of money to throw into savings especially since i'm gonna be moving to japan soon so i'm gonna need every <laughs> every last penny that i can get you know 
<laughs> that plane ticket money ain't gonna or that plane ticket ain't gonna pay for itself you know so you know, it helps but I'm not super relying on it but in any event guys uh, nine days I'll be able to realization stats and everything are looking good they're also looking especially good for this channel as well um, but really really pleased with the uh, the amount of growth I've been seeing yeah good seeing you on here James hope to see you again soon catch you later um, but yeah I've been really pleased with the uh, the amount of growth in this channel and uh, you know I think these daily vlogs are really helping out and uh, look forward to seeing answering you guys' questions for vlog 300 which is coming up very soon like I said you know just a couple more videos <laughs> literally a couple more videos and oh, big ass truck and I'm hoping to make vlog 300 an actual edited video not just a random ass live stream that's the plan anyway um, but you know things happen <laughs> but uh, yeah um, things are going good and the Andy Talks Navy channel has been doing a little better not as not as well as the other two channels but you know it's kind of a side channel for me you know it's just a way for me to put out some Navy content when I can and I'm looking to uh, to build it up a little bit in the future but it's not like a super main priority or anything like that so you know kind of is what it is you know so but anyway, guys, I do got to get going. Uh, got to get ready for work here shortly. But I uh, just want to make this video, let you know that demonetization isn't the end for your channel. You just got to keep making good stuff. Or in my case, kind of stop for like a month or two <laughs> and just kind of ride on the success of your old videos and you know, whatever. But, you know, it's not the end. And uh, you just got to keep pushing forward making good stuff, learning new skills, most importantly. So if something like this were to happen, you can leverage those skills to help you get the money. And of course it had to friggin' disconnect as as I was signing off, but uh, you know how it is. But anyway, like I was saying, hopefully before we get disconnected again. So anyway, this is the Andy sign, sign for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in this live stream, watching my other stuff. Look forward to answering your questions for vlog 300. Keep them coming either here on the YouTubes, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. I'll gather them all up and we'll uh, do a little something something. But anyway, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Damn, I love how that thumbnail turned out. <laughs> it was just something I just thought of on the fly. I was like, I should look pensive in that thumbnail. But anyway, hi, Andy here. And we are at vlog 299, baby. That means there's only one more vlog. Actually, well, this is the one more vlog. Next vlog's gonna be vlog 300. So if you guys have been following me for a little bit, um, I've been vlogging for quite a while. Been doing almost daily vlogs, <laughs> live streams, whatever, from my car. Um, and quickly approaching vlog 300. Uh, it's gonna be a retrospective on just my time on YouTube, my time vlogging. And we're gonna answer some questions as well. So you only got a little bit more time before um, I go and answer your questions on, you know, about YouTube and things like that. So uh, if you got anything you want to ask me, be sure to leave a little something, something in the comments down below in the booby de boops, or uh, send me a message on Twitter, Insta. <laughs> I said Insta book. Jesus, fuck, I'm getting old. Instagram or my Facebook. Uh, just look up the Andy sign and I'm not hard man to find. So, in any event, there you go. Find me on Instabook. <laughs> Jesus. So, um, here we are once again at the McDonald's, McDonald's here in Ohio, the state. In the, well, it's afternoon now, so it was going to be morning. But in any event... Uh, but yeah, today I want to talk about something that uh, Jared Pullen uh, recently put out uh, talking about, there's like a post that he put out saying, uh, you are not a failure. Um, he posted a video on his, uh, on his YouTube page as well as, it was actually a clip from his, uh, his Daily Fro podcast, which you should definitely check out. It's something... 
that I can't believe I've haven't checked out before <laughs> so i'm not subscribed so we're good there but uh in that he talks about how you know if you're working towards something and you're not really seeing what you want to see out of it you know you're just kind of building it up that you know a lot of people might perceive you as being a failure because you're working on something and you're not really seeing anything come back to you in return but the reality is is that you know you're not a failure it's just not your time and i must have watched that video and you know listened to that short little podcast which he basically put up the entire clip on that video anyway i must have listened to that like 10 or 15 times yesterday it was just such a just such a wake-up call i guess just such a breath of fresh air and it's like it's something i really needed you know because it's something that I've been going through myself because of, you know, being on YouTube for as long as I have. You know, I've, I've been on the YouTube platform since 2006, which, you know, that's going on 13 years now. You know, if, uh, if I had a kid in 2006, which, you know, isn't all that unrealistic, you know, I would have been 20 going on 21. Um, you know, they'd be going to what, middle school now, I think, something like that. So that's just crazy to think about in terms like that, you know. But I've been on the YouTube platform since 2006. I've been making content on a fairly regular basis since 2008. So I've been making stuff for over a decade now. Consistently anyway. Fairly. <laughs> Little lapses here and there, but you know, for the most part. Um, and it's just got me thinking because I've been on the platform for so long. I've seen so many changes over the years you know i've seen people come and go on the platform you know i've seen big creators rise up and just as quickly fall because they lose relevancy or they get into some kind of trouble and it you know kills their audience and uh you know kind of is what it is and uh you know, it's just got me thinking like where do i see myself on the spectrum of success when it comes to my own journey on YouTube and you know to be honest it's like what Jared said you know I'm I'm not a failure I'm just it's just not my time yet but it's getting closer to being my time and you know the the awesome thing about having done this for so long is that when it is my time I have a huge back catalog of stuff that people can look at for better or worse <laughs> not the best content all the time but uh it'll at least give you uh some perspective on how long i've been on the youtube platform what kind of videos i used to do back in the day and just you know give you some context on who i am as a person how far i've come as a person and that's one of the awesome things about doing youtube for as long as i have is that i can go back and look at those old videos and yes yeah, a lot of them are, are pretty fucking cringy to look at you know my talking and speech is, is definitely different now versus then and you know my editing you know i shouldn't really say that on these live streams because there are, there is no editing here but uh you know my editing back then wasn't the best uh, i was just basically cutting out a lot of ums and ahs and you knows and stuff like that and you know but most importantly it was just to look back at where I was at that time, you know, go and look at some of the videos I made uh, when I was first starting out, you know, the first couple of vlogs I put out, you know, the first like three vlogs were completely unedited because I didn't have editing software at the time. And this is something I'm gonna get into in vlog 300 as well, which gives more of a retrospect to my channel. But just to give you guys an idea of, you know, how far I've come so far is that you know, my original channel at its peak was around 1,500, closing in on 1,600 subscribers before I left Japan. Then it started going downhill, and then, you know, I eventually migrated to what is now my editing channel and uh, shifted everything over to that channel. And then earlier this, you know, a couple months ago, decided to make that strictly my editing channel 
and then have this as my uh, personal life channel. And, um, you know, I, th I think I'm, you know, really satisfied with the, uh, with the changeover, you know, having everything being separate because, you know, having everything together for so long, it created a, uh, a clash of audiences, you know, cause there'd be people that would tune in just to see my editing stuff, or there'd be people that would tune in just to see, you know, what I was up to, or just to see my Navy videos, or just to see videos of me doing Japan stuff in Japan. And, you know, when I was, you know, not able to provide that sort of content or providing different types of content, they'd be like, this is what I subscribed for. And they'd unsubscribe or just not watch the videos or whatever. And, uh, you know, I've held on to that notion of having just like a one stop shop channel for so long, but really having separate channels for separate types of content, you know, I feel is definitely the best strategy, at least for now. And again, that could change with YouTube algorithms and things like that. But uh, at least from a creative standpoint, it's good to compartmentalize uh, the things that I want to do because I, I want to be more than just the Navy guy or the Japan vlogger guy or, you know, the video editor guy, you know, there's, there's other facets to me. And the beauty of a channel like this is that I can pretty much do whatever the fuck I want. You know, it's just, it's based on my own life and personal experience. So it's, uh, pretty much up for whatever you know it, it's not specifically about japan content it's not specifically about daily vlogs it's you know just a collection of my videos over the years as well as recent stuff too and it's easy to to make stuff for this channel that's why i've been posting more on this channel than all my other channels out a video without the pressure of you know taking the video back home putting it on the computer Cutting out all the ums, ahs, and you knows, and the just kind of roundabout ways, things that I talk about that uh, don't really go anywhere, to, so that way I can make a nice, finely cut, very concise type video. You know, I can just hang out here and talk with you guys, you know, about whatever. And, but getting back to the whole you're not a failure thing, um, I don't see myself as a failure, you know, I just see myself as working towards success you know not just on youtube but you know as a video editor as well so you know i don't limit my success to metrics that i see on youtube you know I, that's just false kpi which is key performance indicator learn that one from watching jade jade's videos um jade dharma damn it uh if i but anyway <laughs> I wish I knew how to pronounce her name. Uh, if I see it, I can pronounce it, but uh, I can't pronounce it off the top of my head. So sorry, Jade. But uh, she put out a video recently saying, you know, talking about what it really takes to be a YouTuber in this day and age. And, you know, a lot of it's caffeinated beverages. So I got the basic bitch ass iced coffee. This is doubly caffeinated versus regular coffee. And it's fucking delicious. So <laughs> there's that. And, uh,. You know, just getting out there and doing it, man. You don't have to worry about having the best gear or the best personality or whatever. You know, I always saw, you know, something like editing because I'm so into editing. I, I always see it as kind of the great equalizer, you know, because you can have a really shitty camera or you can have a really awesome camera, but none of that matters if you don't know how to edit because, you know, shitty camera making a shitty video still gonna be a shitty video but even if you have an awesome camera and you don't have, know how to edit it's still gonna be a shitty video so you know editing is the great equalizer so if you you know utilize your skills in video editing to make the most out of whatever situation you're in whether you have that three thousand dollar plus you know sony a7 III R whatever big ass high end Sony camera, or if you just got a little fucking toy camera that you 
dug out of your kid's uh, toy box for like 30 bucks. Um, gear, I mean, gear matters to a point, but to get started, you don't need the best of gear. You know, if you don't have the resources, you should learn to be resourceful. But eventually move forward towards better and better gear, which is what I was saying in an earlier live stream, you know. And, you know, for me, um, you know, I didn't start making money at all off of YouTube in any capacity or even just video making in general until I was in my 30s, you know, and I did a lot of my YouTube stuff in my 20s. You know, I'm 32 now, so I'm not too into my 30s, but, uh, you know, 32 going on 33, you know, what you gonna do? And, you know, I didn't see my first check from YouTube until, like I said, I was in my 30s. And, you know, I didn't start making money off of doing, you know, freelance video editing. Like, I didn't start doing that until, you know, I was already out of the Navy and, you know, not just originally started off as helping a friend out, you know, helping out my friend Sam. You may know him online as TKO Sam. Um, I was helping him out because his hard drive had crashed and he was getting his channel going again and wanted to put out daily content. And because his hard drive crashed, he wouldn't be able to do that anymore. So to help him while he was getting that all fixed up. And he really liked, you know, not having to sit down and edit stuff, you know, it gave him more time to make videos, which is, you know, what he likes to do more. He doesn't like to sit around and edit and stuff, you know, he'd rather be out there, you know, doing stuff. And uh, so he just kind of offloaded that to me, you know, I started making some money from it. And then he referred me to a couple other people who are looking for editors. You know, they're my current client base now. And, you know, I've grown this little side hustle into basically a solid secondary income. You know, like because of the video editing stuff that I do, I don't have to work, you know, full time at a job. And I'd prefer not to actually because, you know, editing does take time. You know, whether it's actually just putting the thing together, rendering. And granted, I do have a pretty awesome computer that can handle that for the most part. And, uh, you know, but ultimately it does take time. And I'd much rather be putting together videos in my friggin' PJs than, you know, either working a fast food job or you know, slaving away at a factory or something like that. You know, to me, it's just, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more rewarding putting together a project. You know, there's times where it ain't all that fun. I'll be honest with you, you know, being a video editor can suck sometimes because you got to get projects out at a certain, you know, time frame, whether that's something established by the client or just something that you yourself established, which is the case for, for me, like, 90% of the time, you know, it's just, I want to get videos out to the client at, you know, a fast pace, you know, but I was going through some, some problems with Premiere Pro on my main editing computer recently, because, uh, you know, they did a whole big update and stuff, and uh, that was, you know, <laughs> a whole other issue in and of itself, and, you know, I couldn't access any of the old project files. Hey, what's up, James? But I couldn't access any of the old project files that I was working on. And, you know, I was having problems because the because Premiere wouldn't open up when I would open it up. So I had to, like, uninstall it. And then I tr tried to track down, like, an older version of Premiere that I could just, uh, you know, install. And that was having problems trying to trying to load up. And then it wasn't until yesterday, actually, that I was able to get it working again. And, uh, you know, when it finally started working, I was just so happy because I'd spent like literally the reason I didn't put out a video yesterday was because I literally spent all day at McDonald's on my fucking Surface tablet, which is in that bag right there, um, trying to put together 
uh, some revisions for Brian from the Ramen Adventures channel, his uh, his upcoming ramen school video. So, you know, sneak peek. <laughs> well, but, you know, I literally, I, I got there at like 9 o'clock in the morning, thereabouts, and I didn't leave until like 3 in the afternoon just trying to put together that video because the tablet, you know, which don't get me wrong, I love the Surface tablet. It's great for a lot of basic tasks. It's a perfect school laptop because it's lightweight. It's small enough to fit on a desk so you can take notes or, you know, surf Reddit. <laughs> um, but you can take notes. You can open up, like, Office and things like that. And, you know, just do, like, really basic stuff. You know, you can watch some videos and whatnot. Um, I mean, you can do, like, really basic stuff. But it's not really meant for high-end productivity stuff like video editing <laughs> it can do it like you can do like really simple video edits you know or just stuff that doesn't require a lot of processing power you know it can do it but you know you really got to work with it because it has to be like the only program on and you gotta you gotta be patient with it and you know sometimes even as patient as i am my own patience runs out so what time we got okay but, uh, yeah, um, so I spent like pretty much all day yesterday <laughs> working on that video. I finally got it done and I just went home to render it cause I didn't want to stay at McDonald's for another hour or two waiting for the damn thing to render, hoping the tablet wouldn't just burst into flames cause it was taking so much processing power from that laptop to render the video. And you know, took it home, had it render, and then that's when I got Premiere working on my main machine again. So I would give another project while that was rendering because I was just so fucking happy that I got Premiere to work on my main computer again that I was just like, I got to put out another video <laughs> for Brian. Uh, so that one's going to be coming out soon as well. So yeah, it's just, it's weird because I've been going through a lot of, a lot of shit recently. You know, like I said earlier this week, you know, things haven't been going so well at home. Um, that's starting to kind of blow over a little bit. Um, you know, fingers crossed anyway. Uh, but, you know, I think that putting together videos, not just for myself, but for other people, is the one thing that's keeping me sane in this world. <laughs> um, it's the one thing I can find some joy and some happiness in. Um, and not just making my clients happy, but also making their audience happy as well. You know, because I go and I read the comments in the videos that I put together once they are up on YouTube. And, you know, none of, not a lot of them, if any, say like, man, great editing. You know, who's that Andy Sand guy? I want to hire him. But, you know, so I don't really pay attention to like that kind of direct comments but it's mostly just like oh man great video or wow that's an awesome shot or something like that you know because i do have to put together that those sorts of things and uh yeah freaking it's an awesome feeling seeing the positive response from those videos you know and to see like the progression that you know the channels i work with how far they've come from an editing perspective and just, you know, from an audience perspective, um, seeing how much I've, you know, been able to help them out, you know, it just, it gives me the, the warm and fuzzies on the inside, knowing that my work is helping other people, not just clients, but also their audience, you know, if anything, help them escape from the dredges of their lives for even just a couple minutes or just, you know, see a part of the world that they never would get the chance to see because of whatever their circumstance is. So that gives me the, the warm and fuzzies. It also gives me my own little, little, you know, Japan fix. Cause you know, I'm such a junkie for that shit. <laughs> and I love, love Japan. That's why I want to come back. Um, and you know, as long as I'm able to work on videos, whether it's for myself or for other people, um, to me, I'm not a failure. You know, 32, what you gonna do? 
and you know a lot of what I've done you know to actually make money any semblance of money you know doing what I love to do that didn't get started until my 30s you know I spent pretty much the entirety of my 20s if you think about it because I started on YouTube when I was 20 and you know started making content regularly around 21 22 ish you know but I spent pretty much all of my 20s making stuff on YouTube which you know looking back on it wasn't really all that good but I wouldn't have gotten to this level had I not made those videos <laughs> so again giving context for why those videos are being re-uploaded and stuff and whatever you know if anything it's to appease the YouTube algorithm saying hey he uploads daily <laughs> so you know and it gives you guys something to watch in case I miss a live stream or whatever but in any event I gotta get going gotta get some food you gotta do stuff today so with that said guys vlog three 300 and up so be sure to leave some questions down below in the booby de boops or in your social media of choice you know youtube well i guess technically youtube but you know instagram uh twitter facebook page that sort of thing um just let me know what, what you want to do a in the q a so with that said this is the andy san sign for now and as always we'll see you next time Catch you there, guys. Bye. See you at vlog 300. <laughs> Bye. All righty. And we're live once again. Sorry about that. Just decided to uh, to redo the video because I didn't really like how I was stuttering and stammering and stuff at first. So, anyway. Hi. Andy here. And welcome back once again at the Mecca de Nabo in, uh, in Ohio. So, yeah. I decided to just make it a live stream just because... Uh, you know, I, you know, I didn't really have, you know, not not necessarily that I don't have the time, but it's just, you know, home life's not really doing so well at the moment. So I didn't want to sit down and edit something and then come out here and upload it and whatever. Um, plenty of time for uh, that sort of thing later, um, which, yeah, some huge announcements on the horizon. Um, but we'll get into that in a separate video because I don't want to bog this video down with that announcement. <laughs> um, so, yeah, today is vlog 300. And it's crazy to see, like, how far I've come on the YouTube platform in the time that I've been on it. You know, I've been, you know, on the YouTube platform since 2006, been making content since 2008 on a consistent basis. You know, in fact, it was... You know, just last month that I celebrated, you know, 10 years of actively making content, you know, with my own uh, camera equipment and stuff. Because uh, from, you know, 2006, 2007, um, it was basically just uploading either stuff my friends did or borrowing their equipment or whatever. You know, I didn't have my own equipment until 2008. That's when I got my very first camera. Um, and now I know I mentioned in earlier uh vlog live streams and stuff that uh we'd be doing a QA section but didn't really get a whole lot of cues to a so we're gonna have to uh trim that down a bit <laughs> so we'll pretty much just go over um what i see that's different from like vlog one versus vlog 300 now and there's a lot of things man like when i first started making vlogs on youtube you know, it was just such a new concept at the time. You know, and YouTube itself was a new concept at the time. You know, it had only started, what, two, three years after, you know, I started to make my own stuff. So it was a very new platform. And not a lot of people really knew what to make of it beyond just uploading just random ass clips of Family Guy and whatever the fuck else, you know. There wasn't, you know, the community was still fairly early at the time and people were just figuring it out and mostly just uploading either that stuff or just random home movies or skits or whatever else, you know, it was still in the beginning phases. Um, so, you know, when I first started doing it, I did it because I was inspired by a lot of those early J-vloggers, you know, vlogging in Japan. 
I just really loved uh, seeing a country that was vastly different from my own here in America. And, you know, just connecting with the people behind the camera as well. I think that was, you know, the really important thing that's stuck with me all this time. And it's the reason I still continue to do YouTube, even after all this time, is the connection that I have with other creators, as well as you guys watching this right now. And it's the thing that's kept me going this time. And uh, at this point, um, I did to say that legacy also plays a big part in my motivation to to keep going on YouTube, you know, because I've been doing it for so long. If anything, it's a way for me to keep track of where I'm at in this present moment in time. And, you know, to look back on this in a in a year or two or whatever and be like, man, he, he looked so weird back then. I can't believe he was stressing over that situation back then because it's not really going to mean much anything in two or three years anyway. So, and, uh, you know, even for more, you know, even for like a darker reason, you know, like when I eventually die, you know, there's going to be an archive of stuff that's out there that people can look at and see, oh, that's that's what he did, you know, for better or worse. <laughs> it's not all glamorous, folks, but, uh, you know, it's a way for me to just kind of establish my legacy. And it's, you know, going to be crazy to, to think that in couple decades from now i'll be able to look back on these videos even though they'll be all grainy and pixelated and gross because the resolution will be so ungodly high by then that a simple 1080p or 720 or whatever this is you know it's going to be too grainy and gross looking you know it's like looking at old you know 240p videos now it's just like man how was i able to even decipher what a lot of those things were because i was looking at an old tokyo kuni video actually um it's an old video of him and uh, his friend ken going out and uh doing like a, a comedy tour in osaka it was an old ass video from like 07 or something like that and you know, it was kind of hard for me to decipher what was all going on because it was so pixelated, you know, versus how it was back then. You know, it's just like, man, how did we, how do we get to this point where it's hard to even decipher what's all going on? But, uh, you know, it's just uh, the progress of, of the platform. And, you know, for me, vlog one, you know, it was very important because it was the beginning of this whole thing that I'm a part of, you know, part of YouTube. And, you know, I'm doing the freelance video editing thanks to me being part of YouTube and connecting with other creators. And, you know, when I moved back to the States, they needed help putting together their videos. So uh, I was happy to oblige. And I wouldn't have been able to get those kinds of opportunities had I not gotten on the YouTube platform. So definitely got to, uh, you know, I don't know, say thanks to, to that, I guess. Um, but anyway, vlog one, vlog one uh, was where it all started. You know, I had just gotten a Zacti camera off of eBay. It was used. The tripod mount was stripped, so I couldn't, like, get a tripod and stand it up and do like fixed vlogs i had to have the camera in my hands pretty much the whole time and find clever workarounds to make it like stand up because it was the pistol grip style it wasn't like a traditional camera which had a flat surface so you couldn't just like lay it down without it looking all like cockeyed like that so i had to get creative with it and uh you know it it got me got me started on this platform you know for better or worse and, you know, it's always interesting to go back and look at those old videos and just be like, man, I remember recording at that place and doing that thing and, you know, seeing those people and stuff like that. You know, and it just seems like yesterday that I was picking up a camera for the first time and, you know, putting together my first vlog, which wasn't even edited. It was just, it was all one take. And... You know, I didn't start editing vlogs until vlog four when I finally got Sony Vegas. That's when I started cutting out a lot of stuff and doing location spots and all this other 
sorts of fun trickery and whatnot. Got me all started on uh, on editing, if anything. So, you know, it's uh, we've definitely come a long way since vlog one, and you know, even even vlog two hundred, which is just a hundred vlogs ago, doesn't seem like much, but you know, that was about what five years ago or so, and you know, it it was a crazy time in my life. What do you got? Interested in Japan. The first place for me is Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. Oh, actually, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, here, let me open up chat here. So, yeah, yeah, MXT87 had a great question here. Um, he's wondering what got me interested in Japan in the first place. For him, it was uh, Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon in the 90s, 2000s. So, um, hold on. It's hard for me to... Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. Um, I'd already talked about this before, but, you know, to answer your question, what got me interested in Japan uh, to begin with was my cousins, actually. They were a military family, and uh, my one cousin got orders out to Yokosuka, Japan. You might have heard of it if you follow my videos. <laughs> Back in the early to mid-90s. And, you know, this is way before the internet or anything like that. So it's not like now where you can look up live streams of people walking around Japan trying sushi and all this other crap. You know, the only things I knew about Japan were stuff that I found in, like, encyclopedias, books, things like that. You know, there wasn't any other resource that I could utilize learning about stuff in Japan, you know and uh just stuff that was on tv but for me that didn't come until a little later um you know a lot of stuff that got me interested in japan was the fact that my cousins were over there and i was really close with them when when we were kids and you know they would send me stuff back from japan you know like chopsticks bowls cups they sent me uh like all the different coins that Japan has and they'd say, you know, this is 50 yen, it's worth 50 cents in America and stuff like that. And I'm just saying it's so cool because it's so, so different, you know, like American money and so different from the Western, and, uh, you know, later on in the, the later 90s, you know, that's when the, the anime boom started up and, you know, my friends, you know, were into that as well. And, uh, you know, I ended up watching more and more anime, and uh, that's how I really started getting into Japan. And you know, again around the mid two thousand, yeah, around the mid two thousands is when I started doing YouTube. And even before I started making my own videos, I was watching guys like Tokyo Kuni and Roger Swan, and uh, you know, friggin' Busan Kevin, and. Uh, Friggin' My Argonauts, the Japan Channel DCOM, um, all these different. Um, some of them are still around from back then, you know. But, you know, I watched those early videos and, be, and was just thinking, like, man, I wish I could be there because they just seemed like people that I could go to high school with or that I could just, like, hang out with, you know. Not all of them, because, you know, some of them were a bit older than me. But uh, there's a lot of them that were around the same age. And it's just like, man, you know, again, I could go to high school with these people. You know, like, why can't I go to Japan? But uh, it was very cost prohibitive. And I just wanted to get my bachelor's degree so I could get a work visa and get out there. And, I mean, that's been my goal for a long ass time you know it's it's basically the main reason why i even bother with college to, to be 100 percent honest with you guys you know obviously having a degree is nice you know because here in the states you know it can supposedly help you get a job you know at least it's how it was at first but now now eh, not so much but uh you know for me at this point you know, I wanted to get the degree so I could get a work visa and, you know, live out in Japan. And if I decided to move back to the States, at least, you know, hey, I'd have a degree so 
I'd be able to apply for a halfway decent job and not work at McDonald's all the time. Any chance to give me a shout out in the video? Oh yeah, shout out to Ruben Martin Vlogs, I guess. I didn't do any of that. I want to have to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, and that's another thing, man. Because, uh, you know, as far as figuring out what you want to talk about, because it varies from person to person. You know, for me, I really enjoyed the, uh, the you know, Japan vlogging and stuff like that. And I wanted to sort of get myself used to that style uh, where I was in my hometown. So that way, by the time I do get out to Japan, you know, I'd be ready to go. <laughs> Little did I know. Um, but, you know, that's what initially got me into it in the first place. And just being able to interact with, uh, with people that, you know, also do videos was another reason why I kept on going at it. And, uh, you know, it's what's kept me going this whole time. And, you know, I'm looking forward to coming back to Japan. Uh, we're looking at next year is the projected date. But, uh, you know, I've been in talks with uh, several schools in the Tokyo area, seeing, you know, what my options are and just looking at different things. And, uh, you know, we're going to be setting into motion some stuff very soon. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it for spring semester, so I won't be able to see, like, all the cherry blossoms and all that kind of crap. Um, well, maybe like the last little bits of it by the time I get out there. If I get out there when I am expected to. Yeah, right on, dude. Switching to business since my current job is for free magician. Yeah, for sure, you know. Um, and, you know, for me, like, teaching English isn't, like, my life's goal. But I think, if anything, it'll be something interesting to to put on a resume or even just, like, say, you know, I taught English to kids in a foreign country. You know, it's not something a lot of people, especially in the area where I live, can say they did, you know. And even though a lot of expats really look down on English teachers because it's just kind of an easy job for a lot of people out of university and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's not the best. But for me, it's just, yeah, for sure, it's a resume builder. And if anything, you know, it's a means to an end. You know, worst case scenario... It's allowing me to live in Japan, giving me some money, and let me do my Japan thing. Because a lot of people get wrapped up in their jobs, whether it's teaching English or other things. And they, you know, project their, you know, their, they feel like their self-value is based on their job. And, you know, a lot of them try to project their, you know, values onto the the job you know depending on you know whether Canada England something like that but you know, that's not how Japan works you know you can't just go and like, guide and smash and expect people to to kowtow to you and uh, let you do your thing you know you have to follow the system and you know do those things but to me at the end of the day if anything it's a means to an end. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, focus more on my creative endeavors and uh, just kind of go from there. And that's why I want to do freelance video editing a lot more because I feel like that's the, uh, the path for me at this, this time because uh, it'll, it'll give me, you know, the freedom to make stuff wherever I, wherever I am. You know, I don't have to be in Ohio to do it, you know, I could be in Japan or New York or LA or something, <laughs> or even just in the middle of BFE, as long as I got internet to upload the finished product and download the raw files, I'm good. So, and plus like doing the freelance video editing stuff, you know, it can get kind of Zen-like in a lot of ways, you know, cause you're in your own little environment working on stuff you don't have to worry about people yelling at you or whatever or like looking over your shoulder watching you work like a like a normal job would be and uh you know 
it's really nice and rewarding to just sit around in my PJs, sipping a coffee or whatever, you know, just chilled out, putting together some videos and, you know, keeping the things moving forward from there. So that's why I want to pursue that more. But, uh, you know, that's, you know, a bit more long term, I guess. So, you know, for now, I just want to you know, I really miss the country. I feel like, you know, my main opportunity there. And it's like, it's, you know, I want to go back, you know, experience more of Japan. Because even though I was stationed out there for two years, there's a lot more of Japan to explore than just Yokohama and Tokyo and all that kind of stuff, you know. It's just I want to get out there and, and do things. And also, you know, interact, you know, just meet up and collaborate with uh, with other creatives because there's a lot of, you know, creators based out in the Tokyo area. And, you know, I want to, you know, just talk shop or just have someone to talk to who can relate to this, you know, silly little thing that we do on the Internet. You know, and I think that's extremely healthy because a lot of times, you, t you know, being... A YouTuber can be very isolating, you know, because not a lot of people like really know what it is or, you know, aside from maybe just like a silly once in a while sort of thing, you know, it's just the whole question of, oh, how do you make money on YouTube? You know, that whole thing. Like I was watching a clip from 2016, so it wasn't that long ago, but I was watching a clip from 2016 where the Game Grumps are being interviewed by KTLA about, you know, doing the Let's Play stuff on YouTube. And it was just such, like, old media not getting this whole internet thing and, like, kind of portraying it as this, like, what are the kids into these days? You know, flipping around with the bib de bops and, you know, means big money. And it's just, ugh. I don't know, it just, it seemed so tone deaf, you know, that whole thing, and, uh, you know, they just didn't understand it. This was only, like, two years ago, so, um, but it seemed so tone deaf, but, you know, for me, it's, you know, it's more about creative expression, and, uh, you know, obviously having money to pay the bills, definitely helps and allows me to do this more yeah yeah for sure and you know again that was just back in 2016 so that wasn't that long ago um but they just were so out of touch with it and uh, you know being a youtuber is looked at as you know not exactly a viable career option but just like more of a possibility than it used to be before because like being a full-time youtuber wasn't a thing in the beginning you know only a select amount of creators could do that you know because they were hand-picked by youtube itself to be part of the original youtube partnership program which allowed them to get at money from ads and all that kind of stuff um and now it's widened which is fine because you know as, as the platform grows that sort of thing happens and, uh, yeah, so, you know, to me, YouTube is about connecting with people. And a lot of these shenanigans and stuff going on with the YouTube algorithm and all this other stuff, you know, don't get me wrong, that sort of thing does bother me from time to time. But ultimately, it's just connecting with people, really, you know, and just being able to express myself creatively so as long as i got a platform that i can do that you know even if youtube doesn't pay me you know now there's also more options to make money from doing youtube videos it's, it's not just adsense you know there's you know just having a patreon or a ko-fi or coffee or whatever you pronounce it and uh yeah, just so many more options out there now versus back then. 
and you know like i was saying even vlog 200 just 100 vlogs ago it was like almost five years ago now and you know, i remember doing that at the mwr in yukoska because i didn't even have my apartment yet there <laughs> at the time so i had to do all my stuff kind of on the fly from the mwr because it was the only place i could get solid internet at and yeah you know it's we've come a long way baby you know this whole live streaming thing wasn't even a thing until a couple years ago especially not mobile live streaming you know was, you could stream like from your desktop for a while but uh you know just doing this on my phone wasn't even a thing until a couple until fairly recently man i'm <laughs> the sun is coming in i'm sorry i'm trying to trying to get the skin tones looking all even and but it's like coming in in spots so it is what it is but yeah man we've definitely come a long way and i do enjoy doing what i do on the yet hubs and you know my goal is to get back out to japan network with some creatives and just you know make some stuff of my own too because uh, i have a lot of ideas for videos out there and people that i want to collaborate with you know to make some of those things happen and i feel like you know i could be more of service to my clients who are all out in that area anyway you know whether it's just me being a cameraman or whatever you know even just me being in the country you know i can talk with them more frequently about uh, a lot of projects and stuff that we're working on so i feel like you know if you want to play the game you got to go where the players are and there's a lot of players in tokyo so you know <laughs> it's one of the reasons why i want to go and uh you know just enjoy myself out there because you know i haven't really enjoyed being in a place since i was last out there in Japan you know it's just like being in the States I never really felt like I fit in and uh, you know I was always just worried about what other people were thinking and stuff like that versus you know Japan I don't have to worry about that sort of thing because you know the most they'll think about is ooh foreigner oh white guy <laughs> where from why come Japan you know all that stuff so yeah Log 300. Um, I wish I was a bit more energetic. I was debating on getting an iced coffee for this one, but it's already like nearly six o'clock, so I didn't want to be up all night, you know, because of all the caffeine from the iced coffee. So, in any event, um, some big, big news on the horizon. Um, hope, hoping to uh, make some new stuff very soon get some stuff in order and uh you know make the move out to japan next year so uh, make some moves very soon so anyway guys i think that about does it for this video sorry if it's all like kind of rambly and random <laughs> um just kind of is what it is but uh definitely look forward to doing more vlogs soon doing more tutorial videos once i get adobe all sorted out as far as like getting the new stuff you know that's a whole nother issue in and of itself <laughs> um but looking forward to getting some new stuff out and uh things like that and i definitely want to thank you guys for sticking with me for all these years and through all the different changes and everything like that um it definitely means the world to me and I, I do want to continue making youtube videos and being on this platform and interacting with you guys so in any event with that said this is the andy san sign for now and as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye Hey guys, Andy here, and today I'm here in my hometown of Salina, Ohio, and I just want to show you around, and uh, we're going to talk about some things here in a sec, but let's do this thing. <laughs> Thank you.
just remember guys, sometimes you gotta go through the shit to get to the good stuff. So yeah, I had to go back into the car because it was getting a little windy and I was getting a little cold and I didn't want like the wind to blow out the sound while I was talking about stuff because I got some major announcements to tell you guys. The major announcement is that I'm going to be moving to North Carolina to live with my brother. Uh, he's stationed out at Fort Bragg. Um, but he's got a place out in town. He's gonna need some help around the house. Willing to help my bro out, you know? <laughs> and spend some time with him because, you know, since he joined the military, and I know this from my own personal experience when I joined the Navy, you don't get as much time as you'd like with your family, you know, because you're out and about doing your thing. So to get any kind of time with him is a gift, you know? And you gotta treat it as such. And so I think this move has come at a pretty good time for me. My folks here in Ohio, things have been pretty tense between me and them for about a month or so now. And I feel like it's kind of a good time for us to kind of separate for a little bit, you know. And don't get me wrong, I love my folks. If anything, this is why I'm doing it. It's why I'm moving. But I do think we do need some time apart because, you know, it's like if you're together a little too long, then, you know, we start to clash. I also kind of came to a point in my life where I just wasn't really happy with myself and where I was going. Long story short, I went from coming back home to help out my parents build a business to being a 32 year old man living with his parents, uh, working at McDonald's. And that just wasn't the place I wanted to be. Now, again, I don't mind working in fast food retail or whatever to, you know, pay the bills as long as I have a higher goal in mind and I'm working on something bigger than that. Uh, but it just kind of got to a point where I was just at, you know, homeostasis, I guess. I was just like maintaining and I wasn't really happy. And the particular McDonald's I was working at um, is very high traffic. And, you know, it's not like I could ask for more hours because it's so high traffic, it really triggers my anxiety. And it gets to the point where I can't even function sometimes because the, the output is so much and there's so many people around me. And I think that's the main thing is that there's just too many people in close proximity to me. And that makes me feel very claustrophobic and I can't like do my job. Like I can't move without bumping into like five or six different people. And I've never experienced that at a McDonald's before. What I said about, about them wasn't said in a disparaging way. It's just saying that it just wasn't the right environment for me. And I just wasn't happy with my situation and I wanted to change it, you know? And that's, that's the thing, man. There's a lot of people out there who feel like they're in a situation that they can't change, that they can't do anything about where they're at or what they're doing or whatever. And I want to say, ultimately, only you can change your life, basically. And you have to take the initiative to do that. And I'm not saying it's going to be a smooth transition. In a lot of cases, it's not. You know, I only have like less than $600 in my bank account and I got to use that to make it from Ohio to North Carolina and somehow, you know, live off that until I can get a job, you know? So don't get me wrong, it's not all, you know, glamorous doing this. <laughs> you know, I don't want to spin it and say that it's the best thing in the world, even though in a lot of ways it feels like it, but it does come with its own set of problems and anxieties and just fears. So you just have to realize that, you know, nothing will last forever. And you have to be willing to recognize, practice self-awareness to know that I'm not in a situation where I want to be. And, you know, look for opportunities to change your situation, whether that's working more hours so you can save up to move to another apartment or looking for a better job so you have a better relationship at work or, you know, leaving to go to another town because you just need a change of scenery, you know? And for me, I decided to take the initiative. You know, I saw an opportunity and 
you know, I decided to pursue it. You know, it does present a good opportunity for me to spend time with him and to, you know, be around a more positive environment, which I think is what I need the most right now, because I feel like for a while I've just been surrounded by all this negativity and doubt and, you know, just this creeping low energy vibe, you know, trying to bring me down and... I've decided I don't need that in my life. You know, things are going really well with the freelance video editing and I want to build upon that. And I want to save up to move out back out to Japan to study abroad. And I want to pursue that more. And I feel like if I try doing it in this environment, it's not going to help me support it. And it's going to be more of an uphill climb to do that should I decide to stay here. So... You know, again, you know, living with my brother, I feel like, is the best uh, solution for me right now. And granted, I'm not going to live with him forever. This, is, this isn't like a permanent sort of move. It's just for a couple months to, you know, get a job, save up some money to help me move back to Japan. I can start applying to uh, colleges out there because the application fee is like really high. <laughs> So I need the money to save up to uh, to apply to those places. And, you know, if need be, boost my GPA. You know, go to classes and stuff out there to help do that. And help save up thanks to the, the GI Bill as well. So, you know, I just feel like this is the start of something big for me. And, you know, it's always good to help out family, um, even if it means leaving them for the time being. Um, you know, short, short term, I think there's going to be some hurt feelings between me and my folks. I know that they don't like that I'm leaving on such short notice, but, you know, I was talking with my mom and, you know, she totally understood it. I think long term, this is really going to help our relationship, you know, because I think right now the situation that's going on right now, things are really tense. I don't want that to ruin our relationship to the point where, like, I can't go home and see them on Christmas or whatever, you know? Like, I just want to make sure that long-term things are good. And if that means kind of parting ways for the time being, so be it, you know? I got them on Facebook. I can always call them, you know? So it's not like I'm dropping off the face of the earth here. And so by the time you see this video, I'm probably going to be in North Carolina um, because I'm going to be super busy packing and getting stuff ready, uh, that I'm not really going to have time to edit the video and release it proper. So, um, I'm really looking forward to hanging out with my bro and, uh, seeing the sights out in North Carolina, a lot of good places nearby. And, you know, if you're willing to take a couple hour drive, you know, you can see the ocean, you can see the mountains. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities to, uh, to make some good videos. And I think just the change in scenery, the change in environment is going to be phenomenal for me. And it's going to allow me to work towards my goals instead of trying my best to maintain homeostasis, maintain status quo. So it is nine o'clock in the morning right now, and uh, got done packing my trailer, saying goodbye to the fam, and uh, having a quick little breakfast here at uh, McDonald's, and did a little refuel as well for the for the car. Man, I'm shaking because it's so cold out right now. I'm definitely not gonna miss this cold. So yeah, lots of. Uh, Lots of feelings right now. I also said goodbye to uh, people I've been working with as well. You know, yesterday was my last day working, and uh, I don't know, that was kind of hard, to be honest, because uh, I didn't really think 
they liked me when I first uh, started there because, you know, I was a new guy and, you know, I, and I'm used to people, you know, trying to feel me out when I first uh, start a new job and that's normal. But this place, it was kind of hard for me to get a footing at first and they kept on calling me Andrew for like months, you know. <laughs> it took them forever to start calling me Andy and it, I even had it on my name tag, you know. And like the crew pretty much got it right away but it was always the manager was like hello Andrew how are you today like Andy <laughs> it's on my name tag and of course it didn't help that we got another Andrew in here and he preferred to be called Drew so they're like hello Andrew go ahead and take Andrew's spot please but uh, that's all irrelevant now he's the only Andrew left well Drew really but uh, it's good seeing them one last time saying goodbye you know, a little fruit yogurt parfait and a hash brown because, you know, I don't want to fill up the stomach too much. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm freaking shaking right now because <laughs> of the cold and, you know, just the, uh, I guess, the uh, the excitement, as it were, of uh, finally, finally doing this move. You know, I've had a lot of anxiety and worry about... You know, well, is everything going to fit in the U-Haul? You know, am I going to make it? Is everything going to be okay? But, uh, managed to get pretty much everything in the U-Haul. Like, I have hardly anything in the car at all except for my computer and a little book bag down there. And then this to wipe it off. <laughs> so, yeah, um, feeling good. So, we're going to go in here because it's a long-ass trip and it's only going to get longer. So... We'll see you in the next bit. All right, y'all. So I'm here in Jackson, Ohio. I don't know exactly where that's at, but uh, it is 12.30 in the afternoon. Just had some lunch, and I had three of some of the worst McDoubles I've ever had in my life. I think they're, in this part of town, they're using that, like, cook-to-order uh, for the reg meat. Because I noticed the consistency is very similar to the cooked order, uh, like hot off the grill uh, quarter meat, but it's thinner. But for some reason, it, it just don't turn out right. Like it's really dry or something. It's just, it don't taste right. And I was waiting forever for just three regular McDoubles. And then she come up there with the tray and I'm just like, hey, where's my iced coffee? Oh, it's a vanilla, right? And like, yeah. I'm thinking, okay, cool, she'll bring it right out, or maybe wait a little bit. But I waited like a good five minutes for that damn iced coffee to come out. Which, ugh, I had way too much iced coffee. Oh my god. I'm beginning to regret that decision. I mean, it's good for, to get me, keep me going with driving, especially on a low amount of sleep. But anyway, I gotta get gas. I just wanted to do this vlog in the McDonald's parking lot so I could uh, hurry up and get gas and then head out. So, uh, yeah, see you in the next little bit. All right, guys, so I just stopped for gas again here in West Virginia. I think we're near Mount Lookout, I believe. Um, I don't know exactly where I'm at. Uh, I'm just following the GPS, but I'm just filling up gas. Uh, got out to stretch for a little bit. Um, doing good, doing good. Be making it a little bit later than I had originally anticipated, but uh, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there, and it is now quarter till 4 p.m. And uh, you know, currently on my way to um, Fayetteville, North Carolina, stay with my bro. And uh, yeah, things are looking good. Seeing a lot of good mountains and stuff, um, things like that. So anyway, see y'all in the next bit. All right, just went and got gas here in Virginia. Um, just a couple hours away from uh, North Carolina or where I'm gonna be at. So uh, I'm just gonna power through it. I got a couple friggin' power bars, <laughs> water as my supper, just to kind of power through this so I can get there and then I can you know, get supper proper or, or whatever if I'm still hungry, I don't know. Anyway, let's keep moving. Oh, and by the way, it is nearly seven o'clock p.m. Hey guys, it's nearly 11 p.m. and uh, I decided to call it a night because I was starting to fall asleep. Even though I'm only about an hour and some change away, uh, <laughs> you know it's it's hard to uh, you know navigate 
things when, uh, when you're sleepy and you don't know where you're at. Uh, I apologize if I'm not making any sense right now. I'm just really tired. Like I said, I'm up in Siler City, North Carolina, at the Motor Lounge, and uh, I'm gonna call it a night. And then uh, we're gonna make the rest of the journey um, in the morning. So should be pretty quick. So uh, see you in the next bit. All right, guys, it is a little past eight in the morning the next day. Um, I decided to leave first thing, so I didn't record anything when I was at the hotel, or motel, rather. So I'm just on the road right now. I'm gonna finish up these last uh, couple miles, and uh, we're gonna be at home, our new home. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. So, yep, it's almost over. All right, guys, I just got out of the shower and uh, got my room all set up. Uh, it's the day after. Um, and uh, I spent all day yesterday, like, get unpacked, setting up the room and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't get a chance to record some stuff. And plus, I was already pretty, like, loopy from all the traveling and the erratic sleep schedule and stuff. So now that I got the room all set up, let's uh, show you around the digs. The next bit. So yeah, pardon the mess. I haven't made my bed yet, but uh, I've been using these little plastic storage totes to be like makeshift stands and whatnot. So this one's got my uh, nightstand stuff over there. Is my shoes, the hamper, all the essentials, you know. Then I got my TV all set up over here. Got the Blu-ray player over there all set up. And then uh, there is my new workstation. So uh, yeah. Really excited about that. Finally got my goal board back up yet again. So yeah, that about does it for my long move from Ohio out here to North Carolina. So lots of good things on the way. Definitely a new fresh start for me and uh, looking forward to it. So that said, this is the Andy San signing for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to my November 2018 update video for, you guessed it, November 2018. Woo! So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So let's get right into it. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is youtube -y stuff. So as you guys know, my editing channel, edited by the Andy San, was struck with demonetization a couple months ago due to duplicate content. Did I whole research rigmarole thing um, and had applied for monetization again at the end of October. So they say it usually takes about a month or so for them to review your channel and see if you're eligible for monetization again. So that's kind of you know, where, we're, where we stand as far as monetization goes, but I'm not gonna wait that long to start uploading videos again. Once we get internet in the house, then I'll be able to download the new version of the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, so then we can start rolling out more tutorials. So we should be getting internet in the house in a couple weeks or so. So once we get that, once I get the new version of the Creative Cloud Suite, we'll be able to start rolling on more tutorials. So. Stay tuned for that. Now, as far as this channel goes, the Andy Sana Life and Video, I'm really proud of the growth that we've made so far. You know, I've only had this channel for a couple months now, and I'm just really glad that it's gotten the support that it has. And it's been something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. I felt like, you know, in some ways I had to make the stuff that was getting a lot of the, the views and not make the stuff that I wanted to make just because, you know, I felt like it. So I feel that having this channel kind of be my little experimental personal life vlogging type channel um, gives me more of the creative freedom to express those things while still maintaining the type of content that you guys like as far as like editing tutorials, talking about the creative industry, things like that with my editing channel. And also with my Andy Talks Navy channel, having a dedicated platform for that as well. Something I've been thinking about for a while now is maybe just re-uploading all of my old videos in like a mass upload, similar to what I did with my 
you know, the Andy San channel. Um, because, you know, it's, it's nice to have those videos up. The reason that I'm so particular about the older videos is to give you guys context as to what I've done on YouTube, you know, to show that I've been on the platform for well over a decade now and to show the different experiences that I've had over the years that I've been on YouTube, you know, during my time in the Navy, during my time in Japan and in other countries as well, uh, just to show those videos and to give you guys context as to who I am. But one of the things I've noticed is that you guys aren't really liking that I'm uploading them on a daily basis. So I'm gonna put it out there in a poll. So it's gonna be up in the sidebar or in one of the little info card type things. Um, would you guys like me to do a mass upload of all my old videos? Or do you like the, uh, the continuous like one video a day sort of thing from me as far as like old videos and stuff like that goes? Um, let me know in the comments down below in the boopy boop as well. Thunder's rolling around. <laughs> this is the Thunder Show. And uh, we'll just kind of move on from there. But uh, looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say as far as that goes. Uh, moving on to Andy Talks Navy. Now currently, I don't have any plans for the channel. It's a channel that I really enjoy making content for. But at this time, I don't have any plans for it. Not to say that I won't ever make videos on that channel ever again. It's just, you know, plans might change. But right now, I don't have anything planned for it. But if a video comes out that I feel like I can add my two cents to and kind of give you guys some insight as to my own experience in the Navy and just in the military in general, then I'll be happy to do that. But right now, no real solid plans. But as I always say, plans change. So now that we've discussed all the youtube -y stuff, let's get into the big part of this video, the personal life stuff. Now, if you guys have seen my previous vlog, vlog 301, um, I have moved from Ohio out here to North Carolina to live with my brother. Now, I'm gonna be living with him for several months. Um, the plan is for me to work and to save up money so I can move back out to Japan. So how I plan on doing that is uh, obviously get a job, which I have now. So uh, within a couple days of arriving here, I managed to uh, get a job. So right now I'm just waiting on the start date and then just go from there. But it pays very well, it gets me a good amount of hours and I'm still able to work on my freelance video editing as well. So I'm really excited about that. Start saving up to move back out to Japan. As far as what I'll be doing once I'm out there, um, my plans are to go to school out in Japan. Now I'm gonna be applying to Lakeland University. They have a Japan campus out there. Um, I know that it is a two-year university, so I won't be staying there like during my entire time in Japan, because I will have to get the, uh, the four-year degree. So my plans right now are to apply to Lakeland and once I get accepted, save a bunch of money for the plane ticket, save a bunch of money for savings and stuff like that so that way I have some money. So, you know, if I need food or whatever, just something to tide me over until the GI Bill kicks in and then uh, just go to school and continue to do freelance video editing as well as other little side jobs and stuff like that. Um, typically what students do when they're out there is they do little uh, teaching English gigs on the side and that's pretty good money as well so that's something I really look forward to be doing. But I'm really looking forward to it man, you know. Um, once I get my uh, two year associates out in Lakeland, um, depending on how many credits I get from the other universities I've gone to, you know, I might have to come back to America to, uh, to finish out, get my bachelor's. Looking at it as it is, um, it's most likely that I'll just go out there for two years, get my associates, come back to America to finish out to get my bachelor's um, through vocational rehab, folk rehab. It's a little different than the GI Bill. Uh, there's a lot more legwork that you have to put into it. Uh, which is why I probably have to do it back in the States. Um, but it is possible to do it overseas. So again, it's something I have to really look into and talk with a VSO 
about. Depending on how much I get from freelance work and stuff like that, I might be able to stay out in Japan and finish out to get my bachelor's. But again, with Voc Rehab, it's not exactly like the GI Bill. Um, you do get a lot less as far as a living stipend goes. You get approximately half of what I'd get on the GI Bill as far as BH and stuff like that goes. So again, this is why the importance of having that freelance video editing work and savings and all this other sorts of stuff. And also living frugally, that's gonna play a big part into it as well. So that's why I'm gonna be working hard during these next couple months to save up for the stuff that I need so I won't have to go out and buy it later. <laughs> and also to kind of slim down my overall setup. So, but as far as why I want to go back to Japan, um, why I've been so determined to do so, I've been wanting to go back to Japan ever since I left. Like, to be honest, I never really wanted to leave Japan, you know, at least not long term. Maybe for like a couple months as soon as I got out of the military and then go back for school. But at the time, I didn't know that you could use the GI Bill overseas. I thought it had to be strictly American schools, and I didn't know about that until after I came back. But I am happy to be given the opportunity to come back to Japan, to make the videos that I want to make, to expand my network, to collaborate with people in the industry, and to, you know, move forward with things, you know? It's like, you know, I'm 32 at the time of this recording, so been a long time coming to uh, kind of get myself together and get serious about what I want to do in life you know my 20s are over <laughs> you know when I was out in Japan I was at my creative peak you know it just felt like there was no shortage of video ideas whether it was doing something kind of mundane like going to a park or going to a convenience store or just walking around my neighborhood even stuff like that you know is definitely for me video worthy as long as you put it in the right context and edit it and all this other sorts of stuff. So I'm really looking forward to doing, you know, new episodes of Andy Japandi. I guess it wouldn't technically be season two since I'll, I'll count like the years as seasons. So I guess it'll be like season four or something like that. I don't know. But however it shakes out, I'm really looking forward to making new episodes of Andy Japandi. Uh, those were my favorite videos to make, and I'm really looking forward to making them and making them way better than they were before. And, you know, just get myself back out to Japan, man, because I miss it so damn much. And I miss my friends out there. Can't wait to hang out with them again and uh, do cool things in Tokyo. Because before I was in Yokosuka and I had to, you know, take the train up there, which is about two hours or so, but I'll be right smack in the middle of Tokyo. So, <laughs> no waiting. <laughs> just get right into it so anyway guys with that said this is the andy san signing for now and as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye all right and we're recording hey gang andy here and today we're gonna be setting up my new desktop workstation just got a couple cheap things from walmart and we're gonna get things started but before we get that set up let's show you what it looks like right now all righty so this is what my current desktop uh, workstation looks like right now. Um, I just have those pillows set off to the side there. I usually sit on those while I'm working on stuff, but this stuff is really killing my back as far as how it is right now. So I decided to get some stuff and set up a workstation proper. So let's look at the new workstation stuff. So yeah, I got this uh, really cheap chair off of Walmart. I think it was like maybe 30, close to 40 bucks. And then I got this desk, which was like 20 bucks. So all together, pretty cheap setup, but I think it's gonna be good. So let's get it set up.
Yeah. Whew. Much better. But we ain't done yet. So apparently assembling this desk will have consequences. Yeah, really happy of how things turned out and just for less well, well under a hundred bucks didn't ask for more no but uh now that i got all set up i gotta clean up my mess over there so with that said guys this is andy son it's not for now as always see you next time catch you later guys bye all right i'm recording may gang andy here and welcome to my november 2018 update video do so yeah as always with these update videos i'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube stuff so let's just jump right into it and it's a little late right now where i'm recording so i'm gonna keep the voice down so anyway guys let's get on with the personal life updates first just because i got a lot of stuff to talk about as far as the youtube stuff goes so i want to get the other stuff done first so that said here we go and the first thing I want to talk about, like I said, personal life stuff. I'm still waiting on the callback from my IRL job. As you guys know, I did get hired by a company here in town. I'm not going to say the name. And I'm just waiting on the start date. So I called them up and they said that when my application was approved, they had already done an orientation cycle. So I'm basically just waiting for the next orientation cycle, which they said would be about another week or so. So I'm just kind of sitting back waiting for that. But I am keeping myself busy thanks to my freelance video editing clients. So that's how I've been able to keep myself afloat, paying the bills and uh, feed myself and uh, you know, getting my desk and chair that you saw in a recent vlog that I did. And in addition to my regulars, I'm also working once again with Sam. You may know him online as TKO Sam. I'm gonna be working on some TKO rants for him as well. Um, I reached out to him before I left for North Carolina and he said, you know, it's kind of funny because he was just working on some TKO rants. Uh, he had like a whole back catalog of stuff that he hadn't touched or anything. Um, but he just got done recording a whole bunch of TK rants and it was just kind of funny how that works. So yeah, we're going to be working together on TK rants once again, but thanks to the huge back catalog I've already worked on for him, you may not see those videos for a while just because we got to cycle through some of the other stuff that I already did. But new TK rants are going to be coming soon. Eventually, I guess. So I just want to let the, uh, the TKO Sam fam know that your boy is back and uh, we're going to be uh, making some vids. Yeah, buddy. So in addition to all that, I'm going to be saving up for my move out to Japan next year. I'm looking to start in the summer semester um, so I can get my visa and all that other stuff, get the ball rolling with that. So I'm looking at ideally going there around April-ish, you know, working on getting money for the plane ticket, getting money saved up uh, until the GI Bill kicks in, which they said usually at least a month at best, but since it's international, it may take a little bit longer. So just want to make sure I'm good as far as that goes. And I'm also going to be saving up to get some uh, some new stuff, like uh, most notably a new laptop, because as much as I love my desktop, it served me well these past three going on four years. Uh, it's a little big, kind of hard to fit in a backpack. 
you know, carrying it out to Japan. So decided to save up for a laptop uh, that'll serve as my main editing rig, and um, it's a lot easier to put in a backpack. <laughs> We'll just put it that way. So I'm gonna be selling, over these next couple months, I'm gonna be selling a lot of my other stuff, uh, not only to help fund, you know, going back to Japan, but just to help lighten the load so I don't have so much stuff to take with me out to Japan, because ideally, I just wanna take um, my laptop, you know, some cameras and stuff, other little electronics, and like clothes and shoes and stuff. You know, I just wanna keep it, very simple, don't want to take a whole lot of stuff. So, now that we've talked about the personal life stuff, let's go over youtube -y stuff. We'll just go over the quickies before we get to the big news, and it is big. Oh, watch time. <laughs> so, just for some quick stuff, um, Andy Talks Navy, don't really have any real plan plans for it right now, but again, plans can change. Um, as far as my edited channel, um, once we get internet in the house, uh, I'm going to download the new Adobe Creative Cloud suite and get that all updated. And once that's updated, then we're going to start pumping out some more uh, video editing tutorials. So stay tuned for that. And as far as my personal channel goes, we're going to be uploading the rest of the archive. Again, once we get internet in the house, I can start uploading the rest of the archive. And I'm also thinking about just kind of mass releasing the archive at some point. Um, I don't have a date or anything set as of yet, uh, but it is something I've been thinking about for a while. I know I kind of did the same thing with my other channel, but you know, I figure the reason I do the archive stuff is to give you guys context as far as what I'm about, how long I've been making videos, what kind of videos I used to make back in the day, but it kind of doesn't make sense that I'm uploading them on a consistent basis, you know, so I'd rather just have that catalog be there so you can watch the old videos if you like and then just start making new videos from that point on. Um, like I said, don't have a set date for it as of yet. Got to get the rest of the back catalog up there. Got to, up, you know, update, you know, thumbnail, tags, title, all that stuff. So it's a, it's a very big to do. So it's not going to be an overnight thing. I'll be sure to let you guys know as far as date for the mass upload. I want to give you guys plenty of time. So, But with that said, let's get on with the main reason you're here. The big news. And that is I'm going to be changing my online name, persona, presence, however you want to phrase it. Uh, basically. I'm not going to be calling myself the Andy San anymore. I uh, decided to change my name from the Andy San to Andy S. And the reason for that is, as much as I love the Andy San name, I mean, for God's sakes, I've had, I've used that name since 2005. You know, I've used it for a very long time. Uh, it's become, you know, a real big part of my life, and I love it. But I feel like in a lot of ways it's holding me back. So I feel like with the Andy San, it limited me as far as who my potential audience could be because a lot of people who don't know who I am and don't know what my videos are about, you know, they might expect, you know, like I said, Japan and anime and all that kind of stuff, which I, like I said, love that stuff, but that's, that's not all I'm about. So I want to change the name to have just more of a broader tone so I can talk about more things and I feel like you know I've been on the internet for a while now been on YouTube for like what 12 13 years now Jesus <laughs> I've been around for some time so I feel like you know a fresh coat of paint is long overdue for me and I'm really happy with the name change so Moving forward, um, as far as YouTube goes, there's not going to be too many changes. You know, it's just going to go from edited by the Andy San to edited by Andy S. And then this channel is going to go from the Andy San, a life and video to Andy S, a life and video. So those are the main changes you're going to see on YouTube. And then as far as like Twitter and Instagram and all their stuff, 
you can still search for my name, the Andy Son, but I'm just gonna put in like the display name and stuff like that, Andy S. Yeah, feel really good about the name change. Oh, one little piece of bonus, bonus YouTube stuff, which I'm really, really looking forward to. So if you made it this long in the video, you get the bonus. So I'm gonna be starting up a new video series here on this channel. It's gonna be called Andy Before Japandy, and it's gonna cover my journey back to Japan gonna get some insight into why I love Japan so much, why I decided to come back to Japan, get some backstory on my time over there. I got a lot of video ideas, I just need to kind of hash out some things and uh, we're gonna get started on that very soon. So be on the lookout for that. But that's all I got for uh, this, this update video. So with that said, this is not the Andy-san, this is Andy S. Sign up for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome to my December 2018 update video for, you guessed it, December 2018. Woo. So, yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, let's just jump right into it. And yes, I am rocking the old uh, webcam mic combo. Uh, I tried recording on my usual setup, but I've done so many freaking retakes of this vlog that my camera overheated. So, kind of is what it is. So, deal. But in any event, um, let's get into some youtube -y stuff. I don't really have a whole lot to talk about for this month um, other than the usual, um, I can't make videos because I'm too busy making videos. Brr. So yeah guys, I've um, been pretty busy working on freelance projects as well as uh, selling some stuff on eBay which we'll get into in the personal life section. Um, also been on the hunt for an IRL job so that's been taking a lot of my time away from making videos so kind of is what it is but uh, I do have some ideas for uh, video editing tutorials as well as uh, new episodes of Andy Before Japandi so be on the lookout for those coming soon. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about as far as YouTube stuff goes is where are my classic old videos at? And right now I'm working on a solution for those old videos. Um, it's not 100% ready yet, so I don't want to make a big announcement as far as that goes. So, but just know that I am working on a solution for it. And uh, once it's done, I'll make an announcement video for it so you guys will know. But it is coming soon. In any event, um, let's move on to the personal life stuff. Um, as you guys know, I've been really busy with freelance video editing projects, trying to find an IRL job, as well as selling stuff on eBay. So the reason for selling a lot of my stuff, in fact, most of my stuff on eBay is for several reasons. Um, one is to obviously save up money, uh, money that's gonna be used for living expenses as well as saving up to move back to Japan and also to um, minimize the amount of stuff that I have. Got a lot of my stuff on eBay right now. I've sold a lot of it already. Um, and I'm gonna continue to put more stuff up there, man. So feeling pretty good about it. I am getting rid of a lot of stuff that I've had for a while. And you know, some of it I haven't used in you know years. And others have been really useful to me over over these past couple of years, but uh, time for things to uh, to go, you know, out with the old and with the new, you know, put some money away to help save up for Japan, which is the ultimate goal, really. Like, is having the stuff that I have right now more important than going back out to Japan? Not really. <laughs> so, uh, but in addition to saving up for Japan, I'm also going to be saving up to make some replacements as well. So, the big, uh, big ticket item I'm going to be saving up for is a new laptop. So, yes, I am going to be going back to laptops. I love my desktop. I love the old chill box. It served me well these past couple years. But again, it's uh, big and it's really hard to. Uh, to carry in a backpack so uh, I just think it'd be much easier for me uh, moving wise especially since I'm going back out to Japan to uh, invest in a laptop now so got my eye on a couple different types of laptops um, for my needs you know once I got the money to save up buy one sell the old chill box sell my desktop custom-built PC that I made 
myself. <laughs> so in addition to that, let's get into uh, why I haven't really been making uh, a lot of videos as of late. In addition to all the stuff that I already talked about, um, it is the winter time, which you know isn't a good series of months for me uh, as far as depression and stuff like that goes. Um, been having some bouts with it here and there, especially with holidays and my birthday, which I celebrated this past Friday. I uh, turned 33, so that's fun, I guess. I don't know. Birthdays aren't really the same when you get older. Uh, but thankfully, as far as depression goes, uh, for this year, it hasn't been as bad as other years. Other years, it's just been terrible. You know, I've had whole months where I feel like a complete piece of shit and can't do anything. You know, this month I've had like little cycles, like some days I feel like that and then others I feel fine. Like today, I feel fine, you know? Made a commitment to myself to no longer have what I call zero days. And what a zero day is, is basically where you do like nothing to progress towards your goal. So for me, as long as I'm working towards my goal, um, I feel happy. You know, when I'm making some progress, towards my goal, I feel happy. So that's why, you know, editing a video for somebody or selling something on eBay, getting a paper done or whatever the case, it's all all little pieces to reaching that goal. And that's what ultimately makes me feel happy. Um, so enough boring emo frastical Andy, let's get into some happier stuff. Uh, the return to Japan. As you guys know, I'm gonna be returning to Japan next year to study abroad in Tokyo. And thankfully I still have the GI Bill, so I'm able to do that. But I do have to pay for my way there, as well as living expenses until it kicks in, which usually ideally is about a month after you started. So I have to have some money saved up for living expenses until GI Bill kicks in. And you know, I'm talking with my friends out there as far as living situation and things like that goes. And I think I got one lined up that uh, works out pretty well for me. The main thing that I'm saving up for now is the application fee, not only for the school, but also for the visa. So there's you know the combination visa and school application. So that's uh, for the school I'm going to be going to. It's going to be about 60,000 yen, so it translates to about $550 USD. Got to get that saved up, submit my application before the end of January. That's the, uh, the big deadline for that, uh, for the semester I want to go to. Once that's all submitted, once I hear back from them, you know, if I've been accepted or not, which I do have a good chance of being accepted, but there is always, there's always that chance. But once, you know, the application comes back and I've been accepted, then I can uh, move on to the next stage, which is saving up for uh, going out to Japan. But I don't have to wait for the acceptance to save up for that, because I am going to be devoting pretty much all my money and stuff, aside from living expenses, to saving up for Japan. Living in Japan has been one of my lifelong goals, and I'm glad that I realized that back in 2013, up to 2015 when I came back to the States. But since I've been back in the States, man, I just, I feel like I haven't really been myself. You know, like I felt like when I was out in Japan, I was like 100% myself. You know, I felt like I didn't have to worry about what other people thought of me. I, I didn't really feel as self-conscious as I do here in the States. You know, had I known about the GI Bill being applicable to overseas schools, um, I would have applied uh, to like temple or something, you know, you live and learn kind of is what it is, you know, just forgive yourself for the mistakes that you made in life and uh, learn from them. So I feel confident in my return to Japan. I just feel like, you know, right now there's just nothing for me here in America long term. And there's just like more stuff to do out there, you know, like, <laughs> you know, in, J in Tokyo, or just in Japan in general, it doesn't have to be Tokyo specifically, but I just felt like I was never really bored. It was all just kind of a matter of how much energy I had that day to be able to go out and do stuff, whether it's something as simple as just going out for a walk, going out for a bike ride, going on the train to a random stop, getting off and just walking around. So that said, guys, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>